Okay. No, eleven twenty-three on a ten ten. That was like. Oh, eleven twenty. Yeah. I, I, I saw ten twenty-three. Yeah. Sorry, mate. Um, so, this is a really interesting story for me and Pro ET in twenty twenty-three. Dave Rudd. Uh, Dave Rudd. I'm not giving anything away. Hasn't been a long way in eliminations. Had a few round wins. However. He's nearly at the top of the standings. He's standing second in the points. Because he always qualifies yeah. right at the top. Just goes to show how important qualifying points are uh, in racing. Uh, Simon Innes from just up the road in Rawns. Nine seventy for Dave Rudd. Good run off the trailer. Number five for the moment, Simon Innes, 11, 1073 out of 57. If you are tuned in or on the bank, um, again, welcome. If you haven't seen this kind of racing before, then um, I think probably the majority of you have, but just in case, um, the numbers that you see, or we call their dial-ins, are their predicted times. Those are the numbers you see on the scoreboard at the top end of the racetrack. They're going to try and get as close to those as possible without going too quick. So this is Darren Huxley with the Nissan. Uh, this is a, I think, a full tube chassis drift, like legal drift car. This one that Darren thought he'd come and have a go with on the quarter mile. Eleven point four zero. Wonder where he got the idea from, though, because there's no one in his family that does a lot in drag racing. Nah, no. Um, and uh, Ducky McClure with the Slugsess. Now, Susie McClure licensed yesterday with the iPad director. So, the idea being that they will go side by side in one of the uh, pairings so they can get the family vote. Uh, of is she licensed? Now? Yes, licensed is. yesterday. So, yeah. is she, she entered as well this weekend? I believe so. Uh, okay. I need to double check on that, but I'm sure that was part of the plan. That's just what you need on a scorching hot day. Yeah. Jeans and a disco jacket. Oh. <laughs> they were the whole team would try that jacket on last night walking around the pits. Who got the short straw then? Uh, him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and even Carl Goldsmith was wearing it last night. That's how bad it got. Well, Carl's down there. <laughs> yeah, he's down filming, there. yeah. Uh, we're talking about Dave Crowhurst out there with the Camaro. Dave's got a couple of race cars. One of them is uh, a very, very cool looking Beetle with a Subaru yeah. engine in it. And this one obviously is. Right. It's going so fast, the diving pen for a streaking <laughs> Oh, 006 off the line there for Alfie Ratten with Majuli. 907 at 930. Alfie goes number five. Dave slots in number 11 at the moment. The hits just keep on coming. So the bump spot record, we're going to mention this a few times, I think, for Pro ET is around a is around about four hundredths off is yeah. it something uh, like well, that and actually I think I should be able to find it is, I think it's on your address we'll double check it it's 0304 something like that as I say we, it could be an 02 something this weekend so Brett Featherston the man that took the big trophy in Pro ET in the UK last year won the championship at the last race of the season at the national finals He's in the Kestrel lane with the Nova. Ah, go on. Take it on Warren Watts. Warren had a good look at the centre line just before 60 foot. 914, 9.49 for Brett. Just over a hundredth of a second off. They're not too upset. That is the first of a number of qualifying sessions. So, Tom Watkins with Doris the Charger. What else would you call your car but Doris? Taking on Amy Watkins with that a bird, the Firebird in the Kestrel Lane. Amy, uh, let's have a quick look. Point standing wise. So, Lee Morris is in the lead. Dave Royce is second. Neil Watkins is in at three. Amy Watkins, four. Um, so Amy could do herself a big favour this weekend going deep into eliminations. They've got one more round after this, which is the national finals in two weeks' time. Is it two weeks? It's only two weeks. Yeah. 
How can we be wrapping up 23 already? Wide away club for Tom there. 004 off the line. No wheel stand. Amy starts off at number six with a 9.56 on a 9.52. Uh, and again, we mentioned points. Uh, it's whoever has the most points through a season of racing at all the events that wins the championship, obviously down through uh, the top ten. And um, you get qualifying points too, and you can actually accrue a lot of points in qualifying. So it's very, very it's vital to qualify well, i.e. get as close to your predicted time in qualifying as you can, and then do well on race day. So great to see Ryan Garrett back with the dart. Haven't seen that car for a while now. Uh, taking on Nick Muggeridge, 10.16 for Nick, with the little bike engine dragster. A85 for Ryan. Oh, Nick Muggeridge, number one. <laughs> Now that'd be good enough for about the number eight spot by the end of the day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not be funny. You, you are pretty much yeah. bang on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, all I can say at the moment is Nick Mugridge should be safely qualified with a 10-16 with a six. That's probably the best That's part. That's the only isn't way we it? can yeah. put that because it's going to be so tight this weekend. Right, how many cars we had? To, right, we've had 32 cars through now. And there's still the odd few left. Yeah, uh, another another 15. <laughs> They're not going to all make every qualifying no, session. I don't think, by the looks of it, I think we might be just about to wrap up Pro ET with the next two pairs. Um, right, next up then, uh, Ozzy Brown and Will Clark. 10.92 plays 9.88. Going to be Will up to the stripe first, looking for that 9.88, gets a 10 flat, goes in at number 15, and Ozzy breaks out, 10.89 on light two, goes number 31. Next up then, Grumpy's Dodge, Paul Marston, 9.2 dialing, and that's Marie Mills with the little 23 Ford Model T altered, dialing in 10.5. Yep. So Marie Mills and Paul Marston. 901 with an eight. Wow. Way too quick. Uh, 1060 for Marie, number 14 at the moment. That was actually the last pair, so a lot of people having to lay in this morning. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, we haven't seen uh, Pete Dodd. We haven't seen Warren Watts. They're both uh, still in the pits. I know they had a lot of tuning issues yesterday to sort out. Uh, and uh, the others will come through, but they're, they're just two that... Uh, I remember. Right, uh, two-seater, uh, this is Paul Brown, and the passenger, Alison Andrews. Alison looks after all the hygiene here at Santa Claus Raceway. Uh, lovely, lovely lady. It's her 60th birthday on Saturday, and uh, I've got to know Alison quite well over the years, and just one of the nicest people you'll ever meet, and just so much respect for what Alison and her team do at the track here. And uh, what a way to celebrate your 60th. I wanted to catch up with her this morning. I didn't. Uh, so I'll go and see her uh, after she's done this run. And uh, it's her first time ever down the track here at the pod. She's been here for years and years and years. And this is her first ever journey down the quarter mile. Yeah, it's quite amazing that, isn't it? But there's so many people that have been here yeah. for 
Well, well I did say to her, I'd take her down in the Camaro, but she's uh, obviously bypassed me, gone straight to the two-seater. <laughs> so enjoy this, Alison. She's probably screaming her head off now. She's now going, I want more, I want more. And here come the shoots. 799, 167 for Paul Brown and Alison Andrews. Brilliant. Right, we'll catch up with her a little bit later on. And uh, she'll be one with the um, big cheese eating grin. That's if, it. If you, if you want to spot her, <laughs> she won't be hard to me. Yeah. So the real Mrs. Brown's boys up next. And uh, go on, Colin. up next, Junior Dragster. Can we have you into the pairing lanes, please, Junior Dragster? So Pete Brown in there this weekend. I noticed. I didn't notice Rob. I did notice Rob gloating somewhat because he didn't have to wear a fire suit this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> you don't, it's not normally that way round, no, is it? Not at all. So these guys were, were they part of the Silverstone Festival? They were. They were absolute superstars there. Um, they are everywhere they go, but you know. But no, what they were doing and uh, the way they promoted themselves in the sport was just exemplary. Uh, they had their nostalgia fuel mask display. They even got a mannequin with an old fire suit on it. Uh, they were when they did their fire ups. They were taking people's mobile phones off them and then sit, you know, gave them to Pete who sat in the car and did blips and everything. So these people had memorable videos. Yeah, it was just absolutely phenomenal. Well, Terry Grant did the uh, drag racing world pretty much, I think. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they were. Yeah, that's pretty much exactly it. Right, the dial eight forty four get a thirty four. Oh, 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 oh. oh, an AC. If he had only dialed a seventy instead of a sixty nine, that would have been the money. But. Olympic slide goes to number one. I think it's the first pair. That's a nice run. Well, Ron Bartley doesn't like those tyres, so he wants to finish them off. There was a time where he was saving them, wasn't there? <laughs> That's right. Yeah, I, yeah I think it was last. Was it last year or the year before? A couple of years ago, mate. I think yeah. it was. Yeah, and he, he ordered them, and they didn't turn up That's in right. time for for when he needed them. Anyway, Ron Bartlett been running in the uh, heads up seven sixty class as well. Dipped into the been in the seven eighties, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah he's he around nitrous now. You see, he's uh, got addicted to it. He did. On that subject, and no, I'm not going to say it out loud, <laughs> those are probably two <laughs> words I shouldn't have said together in the same sentence, but uh, nitrous is a very addictive subject, especially if you're drag racers, because it makes you go fast. Yeah. That's exactly what we mean. The only trouble is he might have a bit of a problem seeing where he's going at the moment. Um, letting the smoke out the car. Taking on Mr. Lee Huxley, uh, fresh back from a trip down to Hockenheim. Very, very rare that the weather at Santa Fe in September for the finals is a lot warmer than the weather in Germany yeah. <laughs> for the Nitro Olympics, but uh, you know, we're not going to complain. So, Lee Huxley, 8.85826 for Ron, presumably without the nitrous oxide. Um, the, the air conditions are still fairly good at this time of the morning as the day wears on and it heats up. The engines aren't, there's not going to be so much oxygen about, so the engines aren't going to produce as much power as they are normally aspirated, meaning no power hazards. That is the flattest launch I've ever seen for Ron. Yeah, 001 for Lee, off the line. 8.33 and 8.94. That is the flattest, most tame launch I've ever seen yeah. for Ron, I think. Talking of flat and tame, here comes Jack Brewster. The last event of the year for Jack. Uh, not doing the uh, national finals there. Um, the engine's coming out after this weekend have a full refresh and everything because it's unbelievable it's been a couple of years since the car came back so I'm thinking right okay um, let, let's get the engine out let's get it all fixed and uh, refreshed and for next year so yeah their last last meeting of the year so the big question now is for the last event of the year are they going to turn it up as it seems to be it's, fingers yeah. crossed so let's Judging by the dial-in, no, but a 70, 770 is still not hanging about. Well, if they break out, they wouldn't care less at all. 
I think he went 719 or 720, I think, didn't he? Unfortunately, that ended on a, with a brush with the wall in the shutdown area and the chutes didn't deploy. He's yeah, been in the low sevens, definitely. Um, I don't think I've ever seen anybody do a burnout before. Um, Daniel Charles before. <laughs> that was, a, that was a one that caught me out, but... Uh, yeah, Daniel Jones, I think they were testing yesterday as well. I think, um, once again, thank you very much for the excellent notes yesterday from Mr. Simon Groves. Uh, sitting up here in his third side position. Bringing drag racing news to the rest of the world. All those that had to work, pick up kids from school and all the other stuff as well. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, but Daniel was out here testing. And Simon said as well that they test before almost every single event. Is that right? Yeah. That's some serious dedication. Uh, Points-wise in the championship too. Uh, in Super Pro. Where are they? Wow. Oh, I, I don't want to be rude, but only number 10. You'd ex they are actually Super Pro champs last year, weren't they? Yeah. Pretty sure that the uh, Charles and Hartley team are Super Pro champs and they're only number 10. Such has been the stiffness of the competition in 23. So, 740 for the drags to 7.70 for the uh, Baby Pro Mod in the Kestra Lane. <laughs> 742 for Daniel. Number two at the moment. Jack Brewster rolls it through with a 894, 125 the car. Made that characteristic move to the left again, off the line. The last few runs I've seen, it's been dead straight. Yeah. All right, Tom Atkinson. Second in the points, Jase. But uh, fair to say that uh, Alan Didwell is having a phenomenal season this year. Huge lead in the points. I'm not sure, actually, depending on how he goes this weekend, he could sew it up uh, before the national finals. How far? He's got, he's got over 1,000 points. No, uh, sorry. Almost 1,000 points. Yeah. yeah. Over 900 point lead. So, so uh, if he. If he if qualifies if well and goes rounds. And Tom doesn't go any further. Because if Tom goes a bit further, depending on the, how yeah. it shakes down at the national finals. But anyway, it's still incredible. It's a, a fantastic um, feat Alan has had this year. Anyway, uh, 8.44 Tom, 7.92 for Kieran Ashley with the turbocharged LSX Dragster. That must be a fun ride. Doesn't really leave the line that hard, but it's <laughs> through the stripe, it, yeah. it pours it on. That was a lot harder launch. Fly goodness me for Kieran. That really was. That's going to be a lot quicker than 792. Well, a bit quicker. Yeah, 786. Look at the 60 foot, 111. Yeah. Well, but he didn't run the speed this time. Yeah. Tom goes 843 on a 40. Kieran breaks out. That tells me they've changed the rear, right? Rear Something's rear changed, then. definitely. Yeah. Yep. yeah, yeah. It does not normally leave that hard at all. If that was coupled with the usual top end, mm. that would be <laughs> yeah. good yeah, half good a point. second quicker very, than that, very I think. Good point. Uh, anyway, so Tom goes in at number three. Kieran goes to number seven. So, Joe Kellett. Out there in the family dragster that's, um, well, Kellett's had a bit of an eventful couple of weeks, as have a lot of people. Um, yeah. But went to Germany. It looked like it was all going to go oh so horribly wrong over in Germany, but teamwork and literally everybody on the premises helping them out. And uh, Leah got it to the final. Yeah, then they'd ride home in the motor home instead of flying home as well, which was a bit of a... Yeah. Anyway, That's right. both on that these, subject. Both of these two made the finals at Hockenheim, because uh, you've got Mark Cousel, uh made it there in Super Pro ET, and of course... Leia, uh, driving the Dolly Daydream Dragster 
made it the final in comp. Eight ninety pays eight eighteen. Eight thirty five. Right. Oh, no, sorry, no. Oh, Could uh, we have anybody from Lee Huxley's crew, please? Can they go and retrieve Lee from the top end, please? Uh, Lee Huxley stuck at the top end. If uh, some of the crew can go and fetch him, please. Thanks very much indeed. So, 8.94 for that time for Joe Kelly. They put him in the number four spot at the moment. We're going to keep saying at the moment because they do have a number of qualifying sessions over the next days. I think that was probably one of the reasons a lot of teams didn't test yesterday because... Yeah. They knew they were going to get a whole bunch of runs. You know, normally if you if you think it might be a bit uh, short or off of what it usually is, um, yeah, try and get a few more runs in. But with five scheduled runs today, two tomorrow, two Saturday, eliminations as well, if you qualify. Uh, Colin Mill, Miller with the Flyer Pfeiffer, 7.60, which I presume is one kit of nitrous. Well, there is a clue to where Colin might be heading next year. Is that right? As well as yes, okay. I love the uh, I like the just married sign as well. Congratulations, <laughs> congratulations, <laughs> Lynn, for making an honest man of him. It's only taken a while. <laughs> uh, that was funny. <laughs> Against uh, Gallant with Jack. Well, wiggle at three thirty for Colin, and then eight forty at one sixty-two. Uh, eight nine four for Callum. On an 85, that'll be number seven. <laughs> oh, it was a very amusing chat with Colin and Lynn last night. Really, really funny. <laughs> How would that be? They hardly talk. So, two of our competitors from, I love the phrase overseas, it's uh, like a 22 mile stretch of the English Channel, <laughs> um, well, and it is for the man in the Kestrel Lane, that's Thomas Haas, uh, against Bjorn Romren Holmgren from Norway. I've never seen that car before, you, has it ever been there before? No, nope, never, I don't think. Unless it was in a previous guise, because I know a few 57 Chevy wagons have been here from Scandinavia before, but I'm not sure this one has. 8.86 for Bjorn in the Slick Tricks lane, 8.09 for Thomas Hass. It's a, it's a seriously cool looking car. Really, really cool looking car. So, I think this is Bjorn's first ever trip to Santa Pod with the car. Let's hope he has a fun time and brings friends. Thomas goes 8.19, tenth per second off. Bjorn goes 8.94, and he's currently number six. Uh, so Dave Russell, the van with no name. A72 for Dave. He dipped his toe into Supercharged Hurdles racing this summer as well. Yeah, that got him into Drag's Tail, didn't it? That's right, yeah. One hundred and fifty-three there for Dave. Slots him in at number eleven for the time being. Yeah, another call out uh, for Lee Huxley's crew. If you haven't heard that one already, head up to the top end to help him get back to the pits. Probably going for a dip in the pond to cool down. 
It is fun up there, isn't it? I told you it's good, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's cool. a totally different experience to anywhere else. It's quite calm and peaceful. You can hear everyone talk. Um, I've always thought that. It's great. Well, two from France for you. The custom gang racing team. So, Elodie Dubois. Is it Fabian? No, I beg your pardon. That's yeah. I think it's LED in the drag. So Fabian's well, Patrick's in the, the Patrick's Patrick. in the Supercom dragster. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, I'm sh pretty sure Fabian's in the. Well, the uh, names have come up on the screen in a second. Yeah, yeah. see, we're rubbish without a screen. Have you not noticed? We're hoping to improve to pathetic. <laughs> so that's we, can't, we can't see the dragster's race number. That's uh, it's oh, a, that is LED. Oh no, that's Fabian. No, it's Fabian in the dragster. There we go. I'm Patrick rubbish. in the car. There so we go. Where, so hang on, but LED rang the dragster earlier in the season. Yeah, but LED's, there's another dragster. Oh no, there's LED down there. That's of next course, to the car, yes. So. Sorry. <coughs> so anyway, the Dewar family. <laughs> Finally, side we got there. <laughs> side by side. Well, we knew who. We knew the name. We knew yeah. the surnames. Um, <clears throat> all the way from uh, the Rhone Alps in France. Beautiful place to be and live. 7.20 for Fabian, 7 flat for Patrick. Good looking run for the door car. 6.96 at 203 miles an hour. They don't look too upset with breaking out. Oh, both of them broke out. Fabian by... <laughs> Two thousand ten thousandths of a second. Two thousand, yeah. So your points leader in the clubhouse that is Super Pro ET. He's got two more events to stay at in front for his first ever national championship. He has been virtually unstoppable in 2023. How many events wins has he got? He's got. Oh, it's truth. I think he's got two event wins, one final and one semi-final yeah, so something far. Like something that. along he's those qualified lines. Well, yeah. You know, number one qualifier, and he's had. But it, it's just phenomenal. A phenomenal year. Yeah. Uh, he's going to be taking on Jack Williams. Now, tell me about this car, because you've watched his progress through the year in uh, in the 760 class. Yeah, um, the car literally appeared... For, I do know... The thing is that I can't remember it all. Uh, but oh, it's, sorry. It's, <laughs> no, I know. It's it's an engine out of one car, and it's a, obviously so it's another the, car. It's, it's when the engine out of Pell Norman's car. That's it. And they, they've merged together into this package here. Um, he went for the first time in the sevens, literally after the, the run after he licensed. And it was like the car was absolutely flying. Um, young lad. Pell drove this car at Door Slammers a yeah. few years ago as well, didn't he? He's going to be a threat in 760 next year. On rails, look at that. 69 and 74 for Jack. Yeah. Uh, Alan goes to number five off the trailer. Ah, that's a very good point. We don't have our Super Pro... We will have one. Yeah, we will get one. Because oh, that was sort of reminding me, yeah. yeah. Uh, there's normally a prize for off the trailer, uh, number one off the trailer anyway, in Super Pro. <laughs> Scott Hauser, Pete Walters. If you're thinking of getting junior dragster, this is where you could end up. Mm. Or indeed in top fuel, you never know. Um, the thing is, over the length of time you and I've been commentating, now, like fifteen years up here together, <laughs> with people, <I> know, <laughs> um, you know, we've watched a lot of these juniors when they raced in the juniors, mm -hmm. and they're now coming up. And there are so many of the juniors now racing in uh, the bigger classes. The number number of them have run in junior dragster, run in another class, and retired. Yeah, yeah. We've been here too long, mate. <laughs> we've been here too long. Um, Scott Hauser is number six in the points at the moment. It's going to be a big ask for anyone to catch yeah. uh, Alan Dibwell. Yeah. I'm not saying we're getting old, but I've asked for a lift to go into the tower to get us up and down the stairs. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, there's going to be a buy run this time for Scotty, unfortunately. I'm not sure what the problem is for the Pete. Let's see if that 737 is a good shout or if he misses it. 
It's all missed it by a couple of hundreds, actually. So Jeff will scratch his head and go, yeah, missed. But uh, Only just. good team. They will uh, get that pretty much bang on probably by the end of the day. On that subject, we were young when we started doing this. Well, okay. ish. 15 years, <laughs> this is. This is the end of the 15th years. year. Been good, hasn't it? In places. <laughs> Mainly when we're here. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's awesome. Yeah, we do, I'll tell you something we haven't done yet. It's said hello to everybody on the banking. Oh, good morning to you all over there. Hope you got your sun cream. Who's bunking off work today, yeah, anyone? Yeah, keep your hands off your bunk. Oh, most of them. No, I, I am. <laughs> definitely, I'm bunking off everything today. Anyway, you're going to get the sun, and then later on this afternoon, everybody on the grandstands are going to get the sun. Good morning to the grandstands. How are you all? Good to see you here. Now, you're all going to be here for the four days now, aren't you? You've got yeah. to be. You're not going to come just for today. You're going to be here for duration. And, of course, good morning to everybody tuned in online. Yeah, uh, watching the live feed, day yeah. one of four. If you're at work watching this and you're thinking of coming... And you're thinking of coming along, don't think about it. Nice. You can do it. Definitely do it. So, it's uh, Andy Thetford with the Black Pearl. Seven-second race car with a turbo Chevy in there, taking on Bob Doyle. Bob Dial's his traditional 8.99 number. I tell you what, it's not be funny. I reckon Andy's going to be adjusting that dial in even lower over the course of the event. I think 7.8 is quite wild for what uh, the potential of that car can do. Well, even though it's quite hot, the track is absolutely yeah. awesome. So as long as you've got your setup roughly in the right window, you'll be getting down the track on numerous occasions. No right. boost off no the boost start line. Right, no. <laughs> so, Bob, 899 the target, 970. No nitrous. Yeah. Well, at least Andy Tepper doesn't break out. Now, a couple of cars going at it here. Oh, my goodness me. What's that rolling away? Is that a blower pulley? Just picked up by the marshal. Uh, in the slick tricks lane, it's not a blower pulley because the car's still running. Um, that is Nick Good. Uh, Ian's going to show it to him. <laughs> yeah, he's just shown him the offending piece. Now, the car in the Kestrel Lane is one I've really been looking forward to seeing. Uh, if you squint, it's another one of those cars that is actually... Oh no, it's it's a the wheel. wheelie bar wheel. Is it? I think. Ah, well, that wouldn't be great. It'd dig a chunk out of the racetrack. Anyway, uh, the car in the Kestrel Lane, this is uh, Angel Romero from Spain with the Camaro. This is a full-on top sportsman car uh, built in the US. And girls race this all over. Bear in mind, he lives in Spain. He's raced at Tiep in Sweden. He raced at Cluster in France. He's raced at uh, Hockenheim in Germany. And, um, well, it's not to finish out the season because there is another race in Spain. I think I read correctly is that the Circuit of the Catalonia yeah. in, uh, in Spain in a couple of weeks' time, which will probably be their last event of the year. Uh, yeah, just confirm it was the wheelie bar wheel. Oh, was of, it? Uh, Nick's car. So I think they'll just bolt it back in and hopefully you'll still get the run. If they're allowed to run again. If they are. Um, the thing is, though, that yeah, with the wheelie bar, uh, this car does leave with the wheels up. And if there's no wheel on it... Yeah, it'd be turning, the, uh, <laughs> it'd be turning into a scale electrics groove, wouldn't it? The, uh, <laughs> the <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that might be Mr. Marshall saying, no. don't take grooves out of my racetrack. Yeah. Good looking run for Angel. 790, 176. Really good opening, strong good opening run. 
and I think one of our first ever competitors in mainstream drag racing from Spain. Well, Nick Good now gets a bird's eye view to watch his other car come round underneath the towel. Is Matt Peters at the wheel? So yeah, Matt Peters in the Slip Tricks Lane taking on Darren Perrett with the uh, the Wildcat, the Tiger Tina. Uh, Darren's another one of those guys, been running in the 760 Heads Up class. So they've run three events this year, Colin. Um, all looking good, mate. Yeah, uh, Brendan Clancy uh, was the champion, series champion. Yeah. Congratulations! Well, he to won him. two events. So. Yeah, uh, but what you saw was um, Brendan had a perfect ET, seven point six zero 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 at one of the events. Uh, Mark Turner hit a seven point six zero 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 at another event. So uh, to get two perfect ETs in the same class in the same year from an unexpected class, yeah. fair to say. Uh, it was outstanding. The racing has been awesome. Absolutely awesome. So many people stepped up. And the class is going to grow next year. Just watch it. It's, it's going to be phenomenal. Well, the, one of the reasons, um, one of the questions that people have a lot of the time is why 760? Now, the reason is, is that the chassis tags on a lot of these cars are the main driving force behind a lot of the indexes. And a lot of the cars out, there's a lot of cars out there that they're only tagged, which means they're only legally allowed to run down to 750. So they put the dial in at 7.0. 6-0 yep. so that there's enough of a buffer lots of shake for Darren Pett off the start line Matt Peters is long gone to oh, 763 with a 9 well even with all that tie shake as well Darren Pett still broke out 793 at 175 yeah they put the um, they put the chassis tag they put the dial in a tenth of a second away from chassis tag they did the same thing yeah. with top dragster in the US the dial in the minimum dial in is 610 um, the thing is, though, just while Nick does his burnout again. The thing is, though, with um, with both Top Dragster in the US, and I know that they do this with Pro Street in Sweden too. I'm not sure whether it's, it applies here. If you run quicker than 750, so anything starting with 74 or lower, you're going home. You're not even, you know, yeah. it's not slap on the wrist. It's you're off basically. All right, so Nick Good, part two. One of the weirder reasons for having a run aborted, I think I've ever seen. Yeah. So, a dial of 6.83 then. One second, 60 foot. Oh, he's your number one qualifier. Took it off his teammate. <laughs> so Nick Good, number one, and then his teammate, Matt Peters, number two. That was unbelievable. In qualifying. Um, and also, let's not forget, Matt Peters is third in the points chase for uh, Super Pro this year. Talking of unusual reasons while anyone was shut off in the start line, I don't know whether you saw the video from the other day from Norwalk. One of the funniest things I've seen for a long while. Um, bunch of geese on the start line. Really? While the cars were sitting there on the start line, uh, one of the start line crew chasing a goose around, <laughs> trying to grab hold of it. <laughs> Not quite as extreme <laughs> as that, but at the Green Light Nationals, yeah. we had to stop for another 10 minutes because uh, we had a hare that started at the start line. And, of course, he couldn't get off the track. He had to go to all the way down to the end of the track. Uh, can I we thought have... they could jump. <laughs> well, you, obviously, the wall was too high. Uh, street enough. Eliminator into the pairing lanes, please. Street Eliminator, can we have you into the lanes? There's a very famous picture of Don Prodome catching a hare. I think it's at Fremont in California. He's walking off the start line with a hare. He's holding it by his ears. <laughs> <laughs> so he managed to get hold of it and get, get it out of there. So Daniel Todd, junior dragster, round uh, number one in qualifying. Lucas Zool, junior dragster. Uh, Daniel Todd, Gray Smith, fantastic entry of cars. And none of these guys or girls are bunking off school today, honestly. No. Right, eighth mile for the juniors, and it's all on reaction times. And uh, don't be surprised to see the reaction time money go in this session. We shall see. Bray Smith, an 06 to kick things off. Uh, Daniel with a 0.15. 
Right, young Mr. Taylor. What's he got for us then? The Outlaw Dragster, 790 Aza J and A. Obviously, they don't have dial-ins in, they just have the uh, right, the cutter brakes. So, JMA is 790, JM is 890, and then JS, which is the stock versions, is 1190. Right, joined by Richard Wilcox. Uh, very good morning as well to uh, Emma Checkett and, uh, and Letty and Big Sis Chevy as well, listening in. Um, they're at school today after all of that. <laughs> oh, Mick's here. Yeah, they're sorry. Here. Oh, Mick is, yeah, yeah. but, but uh, obviously Emma's stayed home. Uh, anyway, yeah, see you later, Emma. Have a great day with the kids. Freddie Taylor, look at that light, though. 009. That'll do for the time being. But I'll tell you what, that won't be your number one qualifier. Uh, Jack goes 05. Oh, sorry, Jack is next. Uh, going alongside Daniel Weir. Now, Jack Taylor's uh, last year in the juniors. Right. Uh, so he's moving on next year. And then a uh, bit of a shuffle around in the Taylor team. Points at the moment be led by Liam McDonald with Luke Mugridge in the number two spot. Ada Cassisi, number three. O five 5 for Daniel, 0-8 for Jack. Nice openers. Uh, next up. It's Kai and Jake Cooper. Uh, another two that were at uh, the Silverstone Festival a couple of weeks ago. Representing uh, Lucas Hall's junior dragster there. That was a long weekend for those two youngsters where uh, they were literally only had, well, you know, we only had a, an hour per session, so we had two a two hour session of fire ups at uh, Silverstone. But the young lads were there, very eager. And a massive thanks to Kai and Jake. And of course, Mum Zoe. And uh, Fen was there as well. So, uh, great team effort then. Too keen there for Jake, puts a red on the tree, but Kai gets an 0 2 and he goes into the number two spot. Such a cool colour scheme on the uh, Mayhem Junior Dragster. Dad Nick looking on. So, Eva Davis. Going alongside Tom Peters. Gets away with a 0 6. That's going to put it into the number five spot for the time being. Tom a little bit late, but then got plenty of rounds to move on up that order. So, looking down there on the start line, look like, um, wow, Richard Deavy's lost loads of weight. How do you do that? Is that not Richard? My eyes are rubbish, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> I just saw a slender figure and I was trying to be nice. There we go. 
So, Harry Peters in the Kestrel Lane. Uh, Neve Devi. There's no dialing on the board, strangely. Yeah. One Neve. Oh, one eight. Harry. Number two for now. Yeah. Caitlin looks happy. I think we're oversubscribed for juniors as well, aren't we? Yeah, thirty-four of them. Goodness me. Um, Championship wise, leading the way at the moment is Liam McDonald from Ireland, uh, whose parents are going to get bitten by their dog when they get home, I think, because they've been away for <laughs> what, two months, aren't they? Something like that, I think. Like that, yeah. Well, I don't think they're probably not going home between now and the national finals, are they? Do you think? I'm not sure. Uh, probably yeah. find another race next weekend somewhere. Uh, right, Ted Sullivan, Ada Cassisi. Um, no real help for either of them, actually. Ada goes red. And Ted with a point three. So Liam's in the lead. Luke Muggridge, who's down there on the start line with his big brother. Uh, Luke is in at number two. Ada Cassisi's number three. And Kai Cooper's number four. But realistically, it's probably going to be a battle between the top three. Liam's got a little bit of a cushion at the moment, but uh, that can evaporate, well, that can evaporate in evaporate no time. Yeah. This weekend, uh, if. Into Luke qualified. qualifies well, <laughs> yeah. and Liam doesn't. Um, you know that could be a three hundred point difference. I'm not saying that uh, it will happen, but strange things do. So it is Luke Mugridge down there in Kestrel Lane, and Teddy Howe just down the road in Ruston. Strange not to see the juniors out first, actually. One nine into number three. It's a good start. Uh, Teddy with a point three three. Believe it or not, slots into number thirteen because it wasn't a red. Oh, there's been a few reds already. Yeah, three red lights so far. Right, Harley Corsell and Lara Bartlett. I think, if I remember right, this could be Harley's last season. Well, these two are eight and nine in the championship, and yeah, Harley looks way too big for well everything really. He's going to be start. He's going to start going, Dad, Dad, <laughs> <laughs> if he hasn't already. Yeah. That's Harley down there. No, Harley was doing that ten years ago. I think. Fair enough. Just <laughs> getting him ready. Imagine Lara going, Dad. Sorry? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a very good point. Yeah, both of these two are going to be going. <laughs> oh, 003 for Lara. That will be your new number one qualifier for now. Real nice 017 as well for Harley. He wasn't exactly hanging yeah. about. One and three. Number three. So, Eddie Mo Brown, the Little Mix Stig car. Uh, something new in the offing for Ellie as well for next season. And maybe the girl in the other lane as well, Jacqueline. I think a lot of these, um, a lot of the racers are getting to the end of their allotted time in junior dragsters, aren't they? Yeah, the clues will be when you see the for sale signs on the juniors uh, list meet or um, the national finals. You think, ah, oh, yeah, they're growing out. I think Ellie's car is for sale because yeah. Lee, Lee tried, her dad tried to sell it to me. <laughs> <laughs> the other event said you've got three kids you need one of these I'm not really sure <laughs> you're going to have to top up the excuse locker as to why they can't have one soon aren't you? <laughs> uh, point one three and an 07 for Ellie I'm not sure 
Yeah, it's rather drained at the moment. They kind of got. Like, they've already sussed the. No, they're just stunt drivers. Yeah. One, which was the main one. That, that lasted quite a while though. That was good. I love those days. You turn every time you turn around behind you, you see another trailer pull in. Yeah. And it's just the start. Just seen the uh, just uh, Magnus Peterson, the, oh, old, right, the old yeah. 51 boys, just pull it back in for their first time here in four years wow. as well. That's a long while, isn't it? So Ellie Moore and Mackenzie Love. Mackenzie was one of those that made the trip down to Germany. Bang on time for Mackenzie. Number two. Double O four only gets you number <laughs> two. Well, this is only first qualifying session as well, but brilliant job there, Mackenzie. Uh, the Miss Hyperactive Dragster goes in at number 19. Yeah, the funny thing is, especially with juniors, because they're so good, by the time you get to the last couple of qualifying sessions, hardly anyone moves, do yeah. they? Right, first of the red shores. That's right, both of the red shores, Damien and Harry. So Harry is in the coastal lane, Damien in the slick tricks lane. Let's see where these two end up. The way Chris is standing down there as well, that's my snowboarding stance, that is. It looks painful, but it's really quite good. <laughs> <laughs> looks like he's walking up a very steep hill, you know what I mean? Yes. Can we have Comp Eliminator into the pairing lanes, please? Comp Eliminator. That's Harry Redshaw with a 0-5 to kick his account off for this weekend. Problems with Damien yeah, there. Problems with Damien. Didn't really move when he hit the throttle. So that's going to put Harry in at number eight for the time being. We've got super gas around there. We've got street eliminator. Oh, street eliminator. It's just going to get better and better, isn't it? Uh, the returning Mark Todd with the GTO. And Finally. A rather quick Oldsmobile taking part. Oh. <laughs> It's going to be good. There's still a bunch of new cars just about there as well. And, well, it's broken cover now, so I can say it the Bentley as well. Yeah. Not the worst kept secret, but funny enough, people did get, but it was kept quite for quite a while. It did quite well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I saw, I saw, it, saw it on the ramps what, about a year and a half ago, I think it was, whenever it was, when they first got it. I thought, oh, right, so yeah, nobody knows about this yet. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of that that goes on. Yeah. Uh, so, Ethan Kubera from Spain. I think that's probably shared that trailer, hasn't it? With the uh, more than likely yeah. uh, in the Kestrel Lane uh, against Liam McDonald. Well, he goes red on that one. Well, big red, actually, for Liam. Excuse me, zero four. Uh, Ethan goes 18, Liam 23, but as I say, that's only Q1. Where are we up? Still the hits keep on coming. Where are we up to? 25 cars we've had so far. So there's at least 25 people that are being naughty and avoiding school today. Honestly, not. Okay, Max Taylor, this is Lictrix Lane. Yeah, so Max is moving into Jack's car next year. Right. Jack's moving up, and then I think this. Another Taylor going into that one. I can't remember what. <laughs> I can't remember now. So can but, check. But where's Jack going? Something else. Yes. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so 
And uh, Emmy Cromwell with Violet Hayes. Emmy just creeping forward, goes into pre stage. Yeah. There for Emmy, nicely done. I'll get a number six, five. Five. That was only just number five as well. Look yeah. at that. Um, yeah, the top eight, zero two is the worst light of anyone. Well, that's going to go, In that O2 is going to shift over there very quickly indeed. Probably next session to be yeah. So, Frankie Kent, everybody in the class, you have been warned, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Ably assisted by Mum Shelley, Luke Fulton down there on the start line two. So Frankie just turned eight, continuing the family tradition. Do you know there's everyone in the family this year that's been in a race car this year? Now, oh, of course, yes, because so Shelley's, cause Shelley's been, been, the been in the exactly. Yeah. Frankie's eight years old. I've got an eight-year-old too, and I know how good they are at taking instructions. <laughs> 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 He'll get it though. He'll get it. There we go. He's watched his big sister do it. He's watched his mum do it. He's watched his dad do it for a long while. That was well judged on the ET as well. So that's a wrap for Junior Dragster for Lucas Hawes in Q1. Supergas coming your way next. The Insult Club, as I like to call it. Exactly. <laughs> a bunch of professional Mickey takers pretending to be. See, there's another one. See, another trailer rolling in. There we go. That's David, that, isn't it? That's the one. Yep. So this is Mark White in the car this time. Dan's down there on the start line juices. Taking on Andy Dibley. Uh, 996. First of all, for Andy Dibley, 1040 for Jules. So, Dave Cherrick with the Dark Revenger taking on uh, Stu Doiney. Now, Stu Doiney in his first class back, first year back in this new car, to him anyway. I think it is a new car too. Number two in points within striking distance of another national championship. This car hasn't been as consistent as his old Vauxhall was yet. I'm sure Nothing is going to be as consistent as the old one. That was, <laughs> that was amazing. Phenomenal. He's consistent, yeah. as in killer on the tree. Yeah, but Stu is still two in the points. That's yes, what I mean. Yeah. Just... With a new car yeah. to him. No two. Uh, ten so Wayne Hiscock. Wayne also this year run every round of the uh, the championship in Super Gas with the uh, the Grey Chevelle down there in the Slick Tricks Lane. Does a fabulous job of coming off the throttle just at the right time and rolling over the finish line. 
to run that 990 number. Uh, taking on Tim Moore, who surprisingly wasn't the first one through the gate yesterday. Did you notice that? <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Tina was panicking, it was all going wrong. I'm just kidding, he's enthusiastic, it's a good thing. So Wayne will click it now, trickle over. Well, they both missed. Far off, 9.83 at only 102, compared to Tim's 10.05 at 142. Shows the difference between launching hard and clicking it early and uh, having a throttle stop. So is this really John Joel? It is, it? yep. Yes. How, but, I mean, <laughs> dearie me, he's retired more times than Kiss, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Probably more famous than Kiss, but there we go. Uh, and Mark Huckley. So how come he keeps being dragged back? Who, who keeps dragging him back then? Or is it him? I don't know. <laughs> or if Donna kicks him out of the house, what? I don't know. <laughs> it's a very regular occurrence now. Oh, triple O two off the line for Mark. That was almost the money. Oh, 92. Nice opening run for John Giles. Simon Ford's going, oh, damn, I wish I'd let him. Why did I let him have it? <laughs> right, the points leader then. It's the Morris boy, Stuart, behind the wheel. Colin out front. Sandy down there. Uh, going alongside Dave Fulton. Uh, was looking to run the roads to this weekend, but uh, uh, unable to play. So, oh, well, better get the Nova ready. So he's in this one. He's going to see how today goes. And if he's happy with the Nova, great. If not, he's going back home tonight to pick up the roadster. You're joking. No, the Pokey's 34. He'll go and pick really? up. Really? Yeah. <laughs> well, so the Nova better behave itself then. Yeah. So, Stu Morris is leading the championship. No numbers after they launched, nothing at all. So, yeah, time the system unfortunately crashed on that one. So those two will get those runs back. I would imagine if they wanted them. Frustrating, though, because they're two good-looking runs, actually. But we'll never know. Ah, right, so we have got Pete Dodd. Excellent. Um, in Supergas? Yeah. He, really? He, I, we were trying to guess where he was going to lift uh, to do this, and we were reckoning 700 to 750 foot. He's going to have to come off it. Well, this is an eight-second car. Uh, especially now with the new engine in there. Uh, he's got the engine that was in Gary Carr's gold Chevelle that went 886, and now it's a lighter car. Um, so did he break it? He broke, he broke, yeah, yeah. He broke the metamorphosis engine and uh, was scrabbling around trying to find one. Found one on Racing Junk, uh, but then somebody else pipped him to it, and he was getting... Anyway, the engine for Gary's car uh, came available, and uh, yeah, so Pete's, Pete's got it. Uh, this is the checkout pass. Oh, that wasn't really a launch, was it, for that no. car? 97 and a 1070 at 128. Unfortunate crew member down there, Mr. Bob Molden. Bob damaged uh, and Dakers as well, yeah. Another rather interesting interloper into Supergas, Vic Parsons. Uh, well, he, he just can't get enough racing in. That is purely it. If there's a race class, he's in it. Um, so, yeah, he's having a dabble it's in... A, uh, just in Supergas, not in... Um, I don't know if he's in Pro ET. I don't think he is. Unless he uh, decided to have a lion this morning. Maybe. Oh, you don't. Uh, taking on Pete Creswell. I'm so jealous when you do that, because I can't read. No, Vic is in Pro ET, just he in running round one. Ten twenty-four, ten thirteen. 13 uh, It looks like Vic clicked it a bit early as well. 110 is not what you'd normally expect. Yeah. Right, Paul Marston. He's really going to have to slow it down, considering he went 
in, oh. uh, <laughs> on his first run this morning. Uh, Paul's got a fair bit of experience, I would have said, over the years. Knows what he's doing. Fair bit. Yeah. This car's been around in Supergas for 30 plus years, I think, actually. 60, 138. Uh, hmm, maybe have to uh, adjust it a little bit more. Slowed it down well, just not quite enough. Now, that you see out there on the start line, they're not spraying it with water to cool it down. That is uh, glue. A track bite, if you will. Because the next class is the one of our two street tyre classes here this weekend on four wheels. Top Speed's Automotive Street Eliminator. Great entry of 14 cars this weekend. Like Colin said, a returning Mark Todd. Can't wait to see what Mark can do here this weekend. Mark uh, really did reign supreme in Street Eliminator for a long while with the GTO. Um, Fun enough, raced against the car that Andy Bonds got, but with uh, when it was previously owned uh, by Colin, if you remember. Yeah, Starship 56, I remember. That's you, the uh, one. Affectionately called it. So anyway, yeah, street tyres. Heads up racing, and he'll be doing a cruise on uh, Saturday night, I think. Uh, Graham Smith, uh, morning, Gray. Uh, big shout out to everybody in uh, Street Eliminator this weekend. Wishing everybody PB's galore. Simon Campbell's message in. Uh, very good morning to Simon. Uh, currently watching the home. Uh, they're working on the storm bike, getting ready for national finals. Obviously not here uh, this weekend, so Simon and the gang uh, sussed it out. So the hail boys. In thinking there is a new Merc on the way at some point. There is. Is yeah. that right? Yeah, it's over there. Oh, is it? Uh, and I always say this though, but really, really big up the hails because they're always here in Street Eliminator. Try their very, very best. Running in the tens more often than not. 1064 and 1072. So this is the weekend uh, these boys and girls can really turn it up if they want to because the track is going to be spectacular. Obviously, the weather being warmer uh, doesn't do a lot for horsepower. Um, this is the reason we have a concrete drag strip now for days like this and weekends like this. So Rob Carter with Percy the Passat. Debuted this car, was it the end, tail end of last year, or I think something like yeah. that, beginning of this year. Um, had a great time in Street Eliminator, and he's currently number three in the points as well. Taking on Tony Higgs, who's had an eventful 2023. Oh, look at Tony off the line, wow. Rob Carr's making a good stab at it though, till then. 814, 176, 919, 110. Uh, they were doing a lot of work on uh, Percy last night. But, yeah, Tony Higgs, uh, the speed, 176. We did have to uh, have a little stab of the throttle, though. Just looking at the numbers, 330 is identical for both of them. Eighth mile is pretty much identical for both of them. Rob Carter was really on one that time. Yeah. Really, I think it was his personal best, about an 8-2 or a 3. Yeah. Yeah, that was definitely in that area. Uh, another man desperately looking. Now's the time. Come on, Al. First ever seven-second run for the Howling Hauler with a Pro Charger on board. Let's see if he can get it done this weekend. In the Kestrel Lane, taking on Elliot Day with Plan B. Elliot went quite a way into the eights last time out. Uh, yeah, PBs. Um, 
You can always tell when Elliot's doing well, <laughs> when Dave leaps around off the start line. But uh, yeah, that, that car is moving on. Going to be a solo then for Elliot. Oh, just blazed the tyres a little bit there. Had to give the gas a couple of stabs. Well, after all that, everyone giving it a little bit too much of anything in this first Still qualifying session. Still goes 81, yeah. With a pedal. With a pedal. Actually, up until that last event, that would have been his quickest run, I think. Yeah. All right, Mark Todd. So good to see the GTO back. Affectionately known as the freight train, and the reason it's called the freight train is because he used to just blast past everybody in the last half of the racetrack. This thing was... Well, it's just relentless, wasn't it? Uh, over 200 miles an hour on numerous occasions. He's got two absolutely on-the-money street eliminator cars in his garage at home. Believe it or not, this is the slower of the two of them. But possibly the cooler. Now, this would be a nice tune-up run for Mark. More than a tune-up run by the looks of it. He's uh, back. <laughs> He's back. <laughs> 790179. Uh, welcome back, Mark Todd. Paul Houston just walking away saying, what a gear. I'd love a run like that. <laughs> <laughs> and he's looking non blast Right, Rob Slater. Good journey down for him yesterday. Uh, trouble free. He said uh, uh, the car was cool, but they were rather hot. As uh, you know, they drive it down from uh, Stoke-on-Trent. It's amazing, isn't it? And it's an eight-second car. Yeah. Right? So Rob Trude in the guy, they've just sat outside about, it was about quarter past 11. <laughs> just sat there, just chatting to people as they walked by. It was one of those brilliant evenings here at the pod last night. So the code red, 57 Chevy. I know Graham's tuning in, watching in. He's a uh, good buddy then, Rob. What's he got for us? Bumps it in. A little bit loose on the back end. But that's nice and straight at the strike. 86 164 nice that, opener that was really smooth and uneventful yeah. and it went that quick quite often the way though the quick runs are the uneventful ones okay up next is a car i've been really looking forward to see ah uh, yeah Victoria is, have you had a proper chat? You've got to have a proper chat, Victoria. Lovely lady, so passionate. The team are just immersed in this completely. Um, so the, the, this, is a, this is a brand new car, yep. to, the, to them at to least, them, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you've ran a yellow Corvette before, I did that. Street Weekend with that, but this is what it's been all about. They did have a plan uh, to basically sell up and move to the States and go track racing. That was their plan. But COVID hit. Okay. And it changed all their plans, and uh, they basically ended up with this car. And um, how do you basically? Yeah, you you, you, well, hang on, hang on. I go to the shops and end well, up with a yeah, cheese sandwich instead of a ham sandwich. I tried to give you a short you? story. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, uh, awesome car, absolutely awesome. The twin shoots on the back tend to give it away a little, don't they? Eight eighty one one six nine to open the account this weekend for Victoria. So come on, how do you actually sort of like end up with a car? I'm trying to remember where it came from, but that would be the first clue. Well, there's um, a drag radial sticker on the front from Milan Dragway. That might be a clue. But anyway, she ended up with a car. No, because obviously you've got um, Gray Smith. Yep. As well with the with the junior. junior. Um, Oh, no, it's all gone. When they turned up at... Um, oh, this is terrible. What meeting was it? Um, no, it was after Door Sanders. I hate to say uh, this. Is it, street, it wasn't after Street Weekend. John Price and Graham Beckwith had this problem yeah. after doing this job for too long. Mm. They couldn't remember perhaps, what they were talking I am about. Going to see now. Yes, we are. We're, we're, we're forgetting yeah. stuff, mate. It's not a good thing. 
but you need to go and see that car. It is just an absolute work of art. Beautiful car. Um, proper pit setup as well. Now, hang on, no, because it was the Bug Jam stage was here. It was the Mopar, so that's well, that's the event. I'm they did Street think. Eliminator tryouts, yeah, didn't they? That's, that's the what one. they did. That's what it is. Thank you. So, you saved me and you weren't even here for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I was kind of get. I was going to get to. I was trying to, to work where, the event. I thought, right, where the trailer was parked at a funny angle. That's because the stage was there. So, the, so yeah. what, what happened was, is this year at the Mopars, they had a class called Street Eliminator right, right. to try and try and get more people involved in the class. And that, yeah. that was, was, was Street Eliminator was the plan for that car anyway? And they just did that event, yes. you think? Yeah, basically, because obviously it, it is a totally street legal car. Uh, but yeah, thank you. Yes, it was um, Street Eliminator tryouts. It and looks quite uh, big and heavy, though. Uh, yeah, but it's fast and it's powerful, and, okay. and that's that's all you need. But uh, yeah, an old spiel, very unusual combination for that. But uh, yeah, still got the big turbos. Uh, can we have Super Cop and Pro ET into the parent lanes, please? Super Cop and Pro ET into the lanes, please. But um, we look, look, Victoria ran 881 with a three. <laughs> Literally, look at the difference between that and Elliot. Um, but uh, yeah, Victoria will be going very low A's this weekend. Possibly even quicker. So. One of the things we love about drag racing, I'm not sure if they're going to be running side by side. I think they might be. Yep, they are. So up next is Mark Sheridan and James Murray. Two completely different approaches to going street eliminator racing. James Murray's car looks like, I think it always did, let's put it that way. However, underneath he's chosen to, I think he's got a turbo LX in LS, there LS, yeah, you're right. LS, sorry, in there. Uh, whereas Mark Sheridan, is, is, uh, he's had that car for years, but it's now pretty much a ground-up car built by yeah. Robinson Race Cars. Been over 200 miles an hour on numerous occasions now. James, James Murray, Mark Sheridan is long gone in the Kestrel Lane to a 7.45, 204 miles an hour. There's the parachute just before the turn off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, both. Quickest runs. He's been over 200 numerous times. Yeah. And that, that, what the thing that totally missed there actually uh, was the debut of the new team shirts actually because they, oh. <laughs> they were very proud of that last night. But yeah, we finally get to see them. But as you say, yeah, James Murray, that was very unusual. James was chatting to me uh, a couple of meetings ago and uh, he said, oh, I've got a few things coming up for next year. I'm going to repaint the car. I said, why? It just looks... It looks great as it, it is. I yeah, said, yeah. leave it as it is. Do not touch it. So I think he m knocked down to me, but I think he's actually going to leave it now. I said, it's not going to make it any faster. I said, you know, it just, just it looks brilliant the way it is. Oh, I don't know. So, uh, I said, no, leave it. Leave it, leave it. So, this is the Cresta, which was a car in Street you know, Eliminator a number of years ago. Yeah, a referral to the name as well. Call me Al. Joe Stevens, who unfortunately, well, his car fell over, is the best way to put it, wasn't it? earlier on this year uh, Joe's a great lad and it was such a shame to see that real shame to see that happen Ten twenty-three, hundred and thirty. if you pop some bangs on the run there Right, we've got a little bit of track work to do in the Kestrel Lane, but while we do that, Andy Bond will take his shot at the number one qualifying spot. Andy put in, again, a bunch of runs yesterday in testing. He again, every opportunity to test, Andy's there. Um, it's he, amazing, he isn't it? He starts his mapping of the weekend, I think, on the test day. He gets all, all the uh, incremental runs in that he wants to get in testing. So he's like fully prepared. And, and that's how you win championships, and that's how you win events and races, by you know, getting all the data and everything that you need. Plus the fact that the data that they picked up yesterday should be pretty consistent for the, for the whole next, weekend. Yeah, exactly. The only thing that will change is layer, layers of rubber on the track. Yeah, the, track the only will thing that will change. Yeah, we get a bit more on it, but yeah. then they scrape it throughout the weekend anyway, yeah. so it does 
kind of reset it anyway. So Andy Bond, um, the quickest streetcar in the UK, but only just, only, literally only just. Mark Todd's been right there, although not with the car he's got this weekend. Sorry if I'm confusing anyone, yeah. but that's just the way it is. So low seven second, 200 miles now. Number one spot at the moment is Mark Sheridan with the 745. Well capable of knocking that off for now. And I think he's going to... Uh, I think he's going to take number one here. Yeah, you got it. 7.35, not quite as quick as I thought it was going to be. 202. <laughs> um, and not quite as fast as Mark Sheridan either, actually. But uh, off the trailer, number one qualifying spot. Well, that's two cars over 200 mile an hour already in Street Eliminator. Uh, that's session. 12 cars that, that the runs in. All right, two-seater dragster. Second run for them. Before we go into uh, comp, I think, isn't it? Uh, yep, spot on. The only reason I knew that, it, to be completely hand on heart honest, uh, qualifying it is because of the track prep order. Right, call out from Nick Mugridge here. Luke Mugridge lost his brakes on the run uh, in, uh, in Junior Dragster. Uh, the brake caliper nipple fell out. Uh, could be a nipple on the track. Uh, possibly some fluid, but that was all sorted out. So, uh, all good there. Right, so our two-seater dragster. Passenger for this one is Nathan Freak. 40th birthday present for tomorrow. Uh, now, rarely, <laughs> this is very rare, uh, they do have a couple of spaces in the two-seater dragster for today um, and Col for tomorrow. Colin, go. Rest of the weekend is <laughs> sold out. <laughs> uh, so if you're interested to go in the two-seater dragster today or tomorrow, go and see the team in the two-seater dragster trailer in the pits. So another high seven low... 170 mile an hour run, it's 8.03 on 167 on this one. So Nathan, a real good passenger right there. Well done to him. But yeah, a couple of spots available for today and tomorrow in the two-seater dragster. Pop around and see the team in the pits if you're interested and they'll talk you through it and uh, get you in the car. All right, Comp Eliminator, session number one. Big field in Comp Eliminator this weekend. I think it's 17 cars booked in. It's great to see. I know, um, I think we lost one. Um, but yeah, still 16. Uh, it's really good to see Dirk Pyler here as well again after, once again, a number of years, four or five years at least, I think, is his first trip over here from Germany with the supercharged Dart. Looking forward to seeing that car because it really is the bee's bits. So, Phil Norman and... Kev Jenkins, yeah. by the looks of it. Yeah, it was 17, but I believe uh, we haven't got Renny Irishman this weekend. Oh. Uh, damaged an engine over at uh, Hockenheim. It's a shame, actually, because ran it really good racer and uh, certainly uh, mixes it up a little bit in comp. Uh, the battle for the championship uh, in, the, in the UK series really a bun fight between the Williams Brothers teammates of Nick Williams and Spencer Tram. Um, both got rather sleepy heads on their shoulders this morning because they only landed <laughs> yesterday <laughs> afternoon, uh, having been at the US Nationals the previous weekend. Uh, but that same applies to Dan Williams as well, who's at number three in the points. So uh, yeah, it's going to be an interesting uh, well, day for Comp Eliminator for those boys. Uh, but well done to Dan uh, at a brilliant US Nationals out there. Uh, he was the quickest non-LS powered stocker out there. I didn't think there were any non-LS cars left in the world. Yeah, but there we go. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> but well done to Dan. Had a really good uh, time at the US Nationals. And uh, hatching a plan for next year, I think, is the uh, ongoing discussions over there.
you know, fair to say championship is between Nick and Spencer. Dan is third in the points, but uh, basically a thousand behind Nick. I'll tell you what, should we just play a couple of adverts and uh, once the track is finished, we will take it back in commentary here at day one of the European Finals. Okay, thank you ever so much indeed. Nitro Fim just put in that little gap for us there. As we now get ready for Comp Eliminator, session number one. First up then, the Fraudster. And going alongside one of the most beautiful race cars that uh, has debuted this year, Phil Norman with the uh, Brickfield Autos Beetle. Kev Jenkins, of course, with the Escort Mark 1, the Fraudster. Now, Kev's had some good moments this year, but he's also some really, well, naff ones, really, isn't it? It's just the car hasn't quite progressed as I think they want it to. He's had lots of breakage. They destroyed an engine. Uh, was it at the Door Slammers or the main event? I can't remember. Um, but, yeah, it didn't start too great. Phil Norman with that beautiful beetle. Oh, look at that for Kev Jenkins. Did I say problems? 117, 60 foot. That'll be a 778, 177 miles an hour. Back in the right direction, nicely done. Phil Norman starts out his day weekend with a 1375. All right, the mayor himself, Terry Newton. <laughs> The, uh, with the escort, and looks like Chris Todd, the Fiesta. Fortunately, not in matching outfit. He's put the town hall sign over his pit bay. I don't know if you've seen that. <laughs> <laughs> and why wouldn't what you? What a character Terry Newton is. He's brilliant. And he's love racing in Comp Eliminator as well. That's not the 60 foot he was looking for, though, I don't think. Well, it's certainly not the run Chris wanted, but Terry moving around his lane goes 9.13. 162 miles an hour. Uh, Chris with a Fiesta Roo. Um, yeah, problems on the run there, 17.69. But uh, nice one, Terry. Obviously, Luke Stevenson down on the line this session, so not going to be running the car. So the Dirty Doll, 55. Rob Small is down there. to boost. Matt Davison. Well, 
Matty on the hunt for a, an eight this weekend. Yeah, he's been getting real close. Rob Small has been out here uh, testing as well yesterday. I love that car. I love the look of it. Another one of those chassis tag issues. Rob's got, Rob had another 55 Chevy and he was getting very, very close to the 750 minimum and wanted to go quicker and faster. Hence the new car. Great looking run for Rob. Clicks it before the finish line and still goes 820, only 133. Problems from Manny Davidson, no, 1396. Yeah, one of the reasons that uh, a lot of the front wheel drive guys have got in with comp is they've decided that uh, they want to come and run at big events and they want to come run on a fully prep racetrack that's really, really good. Well, that was it for comp, that qualifying session, actually. A bunch of cars didn't make that run. Well, I told you the Williams boys would uh, take it a little bit easier today. And uh, I know that they're all here, uh, but uh, obviously needed to set everything up this morning. Right, Supercomp, Steve Field. Um, this will be the first car to go a mile under his index. <laughs> Unless he's trying this weekend, we'll see. Well, Steve taking the long way round to a 9.36, but uh, yeah, moving around his lane a fair bit. All right, Steve Hudson and Richard Tunstall up next. So, Rich Tunstall with the hood scoop. That's not Rich, is it? That's not because he's sent. Oh, no, beg your pardon. It is Rich. I did that before. It's because he looks like him. <laughs> uh, against Steve Hudson. Oh, wait, lights a pair. And 897 plays 906. So, Richard, slightly better on that one. Dubois team. This is uh, Clement going alongside Leah Callet. Yeah, if you didn't know, Leah had a very, 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 very fraught time in Germany. Put a perfectly working car in the trailer for the journey down uh, to Hockenheim. Got there, unloaded it, warming it up, and nothing no rear gears or anything like that so the transmission came in and out of the car how many how many times oh. five six whatever everybody that was possible was on it i'm not entirely sure how it got fixed or who fixed it but in the end it worked and in the end leah made it all the way to the final of supercom which was a terrific effort then they faced the problem of having their flight home cancelled
Fabian's car did not shift for a long time then. 886 and 961 for the front engine car. Yeah, what a headache it was for everybody coming home after uh, Hock and I. Uh, day fault again. So, round number two of Pro ET. All right, so day fault and currently number four. This is where we start shuffling the pack once again. And Marie Mill is currently 14. So, the thing is that if Dave, if if the Nova doesn't behave itself today, it will, we won't see it at all, will we? We won't see it in Pro ET or Super Gas, I guess. It's got no way of getting it here or there. Correct. My, my thoughts are he will stick to this, but we shall see. Guys, a 45 gets a 46. Four. Stays number four, though. No movement. Uh, Marie Mills stays. Uh, yeah, she stays put number 14. 1062 on that run. Well, I think that is that behaving. I think that's behaving. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think so. Laura Bainton and John Darrymple. I had a real good laugh with uh, John last night. He's had that car in that colour, what, two years? Right, about that, yeah. Yeah, OK. Yeah. Um, he'd only spotted it this weekend that the graphics guy spelt his name wrong <laughs> on, the, on the door window. <laughs> Left the L out of Darrymple. So it was Darry, Darry. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> Been on there two years and he'd only just spotted it. Good light though, 017. All about ET zone, 994. 10.43 breakout for Laura, no help. And uh, John, that's his uh, first score on the board at 994. All right. John Turner with the Greenfish Barracuda dialing in 9.30 this time. And Simon Innes, 10.67. So at the moment, we have had 37 cars qualify. Uh, we'll put 37 cars for qualifying runs in. We expect another 10 cars at some point. John Turner off the line, double O one. That was a fluke. And a 9.42. Moves John up from 28 to 16. Simon breaks out by two hundredths. So no help for him. Dan Fulton and Simon Fulton. Dan Darling in 10.12, he broke out in Q1, Simon Fulton 9.09. 002 off the line for Simon, they are trying to get that perfect reaction time money. 903 breakout for Simon, but Dan Fulton from 35 to number six goes 10-14 on a 10-12. Right, Hans van der Speck. And Warren Watts. Big shout out to Warren Watts actually, uh, and of course Pete Dodd. Uh, Warren stepped up to the plate and uh, Joined in with uh, sponsoring the British Drag Racing Hall of Fame Gala Dinner. So, uh, big thanks to uh, Pete Dodd and uh, Warren Watts. We look forward to having their company at the Hall of Fame Gala Dinner in November. Uh, all the details are on uh, Eurodragster and, of course, the British Drag Racing Hall of Fame website. Big hands is... Uh, Oh no, he's gone in. I think it was just his splitter that uh, broke the beam initially there. So Warren Darling in the 907, hands at 1099. That's a 
9-12 for Warren. 10-82, big break out there for Hans, so no help for either. They stay put. Warren 7, Hans 36. That's, that's nearly two tenths. That's quite impressive, that. Yeah. Ronnie Mercer with Annie for Pop. Ronnie, another one of those that... Uh, hello, Hockenheim. Can we have Super Pro into the lanes, please? Super Pro ET, can we have you into the lanes, please? Annie went to Clastres in France, didn't they? Um, I wonder how he resists not turning the nitrous on, because it must be so much more fun to run a second and a half quicker. Yeah. He, he pretty much saves that just for Atlor Anglia these days, doesn't he, I think? I think he runs it if he gets frustrated with the car not running the numbers um, without nitrous. Yeah. And then you go, oh, I'll run it. Mm -hmm. Ten forty, darling. Ten forty five was the run. Moves from thirty five to number ten. Just doing a little bit of work out there. Um, so, where do we stand at the moment? Let's have a quick look. Nick Mugridge, usual number one qualifier at the moment, with Mason Griffiths number two and Jess Bishop number three. The first of the door cars, Dave Fulton in at number four, Dave Cherritt number five, Dan Fulton number six. Now, at the moment, we've had 37 cars that have put numbers on the boards, uh, but there are another 10 that haven't put runs in yet. So hopefully they'll be in the lanes uh, for this session as well. So tractor just going back on station. Um, lanes absolutely chock-a-block. Uh, Vic Parsons is in the lanes for this one. Obviously missed Q1, so that will be 38. I'm trying to work out who else hasn't put a run in yet, actually, because uh, obviously with a bigger entry... Oh, Bill Wilson hasn't put a run in yet. Uh, Susie McClure. I'm not sure if Neil Watkins put a run in. I know Tom and Amy did. Oh, Carl uh, with a Tesla hasn't uh, run yet. And Pete Dodd hasn't run in Pro ET yet because he ran in uh, in gas. Uh, Ian Dance hasn't run yet with the Beetle Cabria. So, yeah, there's a, there's a few names that are still to come around. Don't forget, day one of four of the European finals. So if you want to find out what's going on, make sure you get hold of the race weekend program. Available from the pod shops on site, three of them here. Uh, two open today, I believe, and then the third one opens up tomorrow. Uh, you've got the main pod shop in the pits. You've got the secondary unit uh, in the catering area, and then the third one just past the live action arena. Uh, five pounds, uh, full colour publication, certainly a collectible item. And uh, a full colour publication, 44 pages, absolutely brilliant. And you need to get hold of one of these. Tells you everything that's going on on site, the rundown of all the classes. Um, report on Street Weekend in there as well. Uh, a full timetable of events, um, subject to change obviously, but the full timetable is in there and everything. So worth checking that out. £5, available from the pod shops on site. And, uh, of course, while I was in the pod shop, uh, the latest uh, FIA merchandise and the Santa Pod merchandise, the Slick Tricks merchandise, it's all in there. And also, like, camping supplies as well. And, of course, you've got the garage out there as well for uh, all your racing supplies as well. So you can get hold of all that. Also, a big shout-out to all of our traders here this weekend. Uh, the European finals is always a busy one for them. Uh, so make sure that you do visit our traders. The main trade area... Line past Nitro FM, uh, all of our traders are set up around there and, of course, behind uh, the spectator grandstands. And let's not forget Blackie Photography here this weekend as well, taking photographs of all the cars that are running. Uh, their studios are next to the pairing lanes. Uh, and it's not open just to the races, but if any spectators want to get a particular photograph of any car, there's various packages available for digital or hard copy print. Uh, so pop round and see Blackett Photography next to the pairing lanes, uh, their studio's down there. Ian will be taking all the shots out there. Paula looks after the studio. 
And uh, we've got the arm. Oh, there's some chocolate here. So, Chris Newsom peaks the tyres. With the Pro Stock MG. That would make a good Pro Stocker. So, current number 26 on the board. He can do a lot better than that. The good thing is everybody's had a run uh, this morning, so they've got a better idea of what it's going to take. As if by magic, an excellent example of a commentator's curse. Eight hundredths of a second breakout. So Liz Malcolm trying for 10.90. She's currently outside the field, not of concern at the moment. Obviously, it's literally Thursday morning. Alfie Ratno, well in at number nine. Dials 905 with the little Toyota Corolla, which was campaigned for many years actually in uh, Supercomp not your traditional car to go Supercomp racing with oops that was peddling that would be Alfie, Alfie. yeah because I don't think we can hear <laughs> well Alfie gets back Bump back one spot because Luke Malcolm goes to number nine with a 1094 and a 1090. <laughs> so if we remember, top ten on Thursday morning was 400 top. So Simon, side by side. Look at this. <laughs> We got dial-ins for them, though. That's the only thing. Yeah, oh, nine seventy-nine for Vic and nine eighty-three for Simon. So Vic hasn't got a number on the board yet. You saw this car about half an hour ago in Supergas. Have you noticed Vic's shift light never goes out? <laughs> Have you not noticed? Never. Oh! Number one, though, for Simon Rickwood. Yeah. 983 with a four. Uh, Vic Parsons just misses number one by two measly thousands of a second. That can't be... That's not a comfy thing as a driver to see the shift light on in your face <laughs> the whole way down, though. Even when he shifts, it doesn't go... Have you noticed? It does not... Watch it next time. It does not go off. Right, Lee Morris and Harley J. Now, Lee Morris, uh, on the bump spot at the moment, I mean, it's going to change around, but he is your number one in the points. Am I wrong? Or at the first event of the year, was he a DNQ? He was not qualified at the first. One of the events, and he won, I think. I think he came in as an alternate. Makes it even more miraculous yeah. he's in the points league. I know five break out there for Harley J. Derby, but Lee Morris moves up. 10 25 on that 10 10, up from 32 to 24. So the dial had adjusted for the Nova Scotia in the Kestrel Lane to 9.48. Ryan Garrett with that incredible looking dart down there. It's good to see the Garrett family back drag racing. So 
Ryan moves up 23 to 13 with that 879. Brett moves up from 34 to 5. A 49 with a 2. A 48. Right, remember I said an 04 Friday, Thursday morning was top 10. It's now top 14. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to shuffle <laughs> around and I'll say uh, 04 won't get you qualified, I don't think, this weekend. Dougie McClure with the slug sess in the Kestrel Lane, 11 6 4. And Jess Bishop. The way we run the events here in the summer as well is fantastic because it's Hot Rod Drags next weekend, National Finals weekend afterwards. So if you want to come for three weeks on the trot, you can. A lot of people do, don't they, Elliot? Oh, Jess, very easy to get the job done. 28. Oh, Dougie breaks out by less than a hundredth. So he stays 24, 11.63 with a five. On that 11.64, darling. So Mr. Spangly Jacket is back down there in the Kestrel Lane. Dave Crowhurst. And he's up against Mark Huxley, who puts... He dialed 9.7 in round one, didn't he? Yeah. Uh, much more like it with a 94, I think, this time round. I think he'd be going for the uh, the reaction time, because he went triple 04 red in uh, Q1. So let's see if he can have another stab. Like that. So currently number 27, Dave currently number 20. to have two cars at home to choose from as well. 28 too quick, 84. Guess what? Too quick. <laughs> it was, you know, this is my fault because I said they're going to have a better idea in this qualifying session of where to dial it yeah. and what to do as well. So Amy Watkins up towards the top of the points table in Pro ET, looking for a big weekend here and in a couple of weeks as well. Seriously, Amy, if you wanted to, could leave the car here for three weekends because we got this weekend... Yeah. Hot Rod Drags, which Nostalgia Superstock, but I don't think the Watkins family run in Nostalgia Superstock at the moment because they're concentrating on Pro ET. One thing that I do want to say very quickly now, uh, I just want to dedicate today's Pro ET commentary to A.D. Randall. Uh, four years ago today, uh, we said goodbye to A.D. I'm very unfortunate. And uh, I've got a feeling he'll be looking down on us this weekend and uh, wishing everybody a good time, but uh, AD still in our thoughts. He would be in his element on a day like today. Oh, yeah, most definitely. Tom Kay up to 20. Yeah, we still miss him. Um, but, yeah, four years ago today, um, a very sad day and day, but uh, hey, never, never forget him. Never forget him. Uh, he, w he brought the word professional to know where he went. Yeah, I loved him. It was, if, you know, uh, if you know what I mean, yeah, it was awesome. It was just what a character. Um, the laughs that we had with him up here. We just <laughs> yeah, we just laugh and remember it. But uh, yeah, top like Cheers, AD. Rest well, mate. Will Clark, 9.99. Um, Will's number 23. Ollie's not in at the moment with the Camaro. Problems for Will Clark. 294. That, uh, we'll move Aussie up a little bit. To number 14. That might well be around about the bump by the end of it all. That's a really nice idea, mate. What you just said. I think a lot of people appreciate that. Me included. Uh, John Bean, Darren Huxley. John's number 18 at, at the moment. Kestrel Lane. Right, Rod Rippin's been in touch. He's got his three lads uh, halfway up on the banking. Uh, Reese, Kieran and Brandon. Uh, very good morning to you. Where are you? Give us a wave to show us that you are listening. I think they're up there some about halfway on the banking there. Mid-track on the bank they are. So, uh, good morning to you. And morning, Rob, of course. Nine seventy four for John Bean. And Aaron Huxley goes 11.61. John moves up one spot. 
And uh, Darren moves from 33 to 26. So another car for sale. If you fancy joining the masses in Pro ET next year, go and have a word with Stevie Gates. That immaculate looking duster. Looking for 9 to 57. He's 31 at the moment. Tom Watkins in Doris, the Charger. He's number 34. It's going to be some big names not qualified in this field. Well, since Tom's car's added the wheelie bars, it's no fun anymore. I'm just kidding, they did it for a reason. 924, 957 for Stevie Gates is your new number one qualifier. One thousandth of a second away from being perfect. I think you can say, you can have a rest for the next couple of days you're qualified. So you'll be all right. <laughs> they won't rest. No. The car's up for sale. They want to advertise it. So on uh, the well, there we go. The number yeah. one car in uh, in Pro at the moment is for sale. However, Mr. Qualifying is coming up next. Dave Rudd, nine seventy for the Cobra. Kestrel side of the track against Paul Marston. Is that Mr. Gibbons? I see down there on the start line helping out. Indeed, it is. I think. Eight ninety eight, nine seventy two. Dave Rudd goes to number ten. Uh, Paul Marston obviously breaks out. Okay, Dave Chair at the director of Tenger, last car in Pro ET. So this is the way it's shaping up at the moment. Uh, let's have a look. Number 15 is right. There we go. Number 15 on Thursday morning is 04. There you go. Well, there's, six, well, there's an easy one to look. 0500. So that's so half top 16. Yeah. Uh, the bump spot is rather soft at the moment. 0.28, but that's going to change. Dave Cherrick, currently number 8. Now number Ooh. 7. That's, a, that's still mad, isn't it? That moved one spot. Yeah. You bracket raced, obviously, Colin, occasionally. How hard is it to get that close? Well, for me, it's not impossible because I'm useless. <laughs> OK, I'll ask another person. Ask Chris, somebody that how knows. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> right question, wrong that person. That was a great link, that was a great link. <laughs> also, right, great question, wrong person. I think that's what it was. Chris Parker, welcome back to the tower. Thank you very much. Thanks very much indeed, Becky, for letting you for letting him off. Letting thank him you out. for thank you for, for bringing me and that stuff. You know, she's still in charge very much. So. <laughs> that's good to know. That yeah. is good to know. So, um, yeah, how hard is it to to? I mean, the good thing about the next few days, even though it's hot, it's going to be consistent. Yeah, I would think so. You would yeah. hope so. Um, so. The weather's looking fairly consistent, but there is a high coming in, so it might actually go up a little bit. I love the way you say that, like this isn't high already. No, yeah, I know, but there is a high that is coming across the country, so it may get higher, yeah. Yeah, the, the density altitude might go up a yeah. little bit. Colin Morris, wrong Bartlett. Uh, Junior Dragster, please, into the lanes. Junior Dragster into the pairing lanes. Colin Morris. With a double 07 on the tree. Ron Bartlett goes 838 for the number eight spot. Colin Morris. Breaks out by a hundredth of a second. So, Lee Huxley made it back from the top end. Obviously, someone went again. And Tom Atkinson up next. Tom Atkinson, I think his number two is indeed in Pro ET points. But, uh, Chris, again, this is a question I really want to ask you. Um, two rounds of the championship left. And Alan Dibwell has got nearly a 1,000 points lead. Yeah, and that's going to be hard to make back. Well, is it? I mean, it's not unassailable, but it's a really big that's ask. That's a big isn't ask. It? Yeah. It's but, a and really there's big only ask. one. There's only one or two cars that can do that as well. Um, yeah. 
Well, actually, Tom Atkinson and Matt Peters, uh, I'd say from there downwards, it's really going to be a yeah. mountain, isn't it? Yeah, he's, uh, he's pulled out a big lead in the championship. Which in something this competitive is almost impossible to do. Uh, Tom looking for 844. Oh, 844 with the one, your new number one qualifier. Other side of the racetrack as well, though. Lee Huxley, 893 with the one on an 892. Only good enough for number five. Not a surprise, obviously. Not a no. surprise. That's how it works. <laughs> I mean, it's always nerve jangling at the end of the season, but if you've got a thousand, I say at the end of the season, we've still got two events to go. So yeah. if Alan did well, well, he's already qualified quite well, but yeah. you know, if he doesn't go that far in eliminations tomorrow and Tom wins, but Tom's got to go a lot further than, yeah. basically, he's got to go a lot further than Alan the next two race weekends yeah. to I mean, have he, a he, shout at making he, it he's up. Got, he's, well, he's got to go further than him this race meeting. Yeah. And then he's got to, he's got to also hope for a minimum of 17 cars at the next event because that's going to make the difference because they're, they're the amount of points because you know, there's an extra hundred, there's an extra 100 points because there'll be an extra round that makes as sense. soon as you get 17 cars So, Kieran Ashley and Pete Brown. 8.43 for Pete, up to number 14. And uh, 9.48 for Kieran Ashley, clicked it off early. Another absolutely stellar 50 foot for Kieran. So Colin just married Miller, honest, in the Slick Tricks lane. Does he stop or does he just drive through, do you think? Not entirely sure. Bear in mind where he lives. <laughs> he may have just taken a photograph of a sign. But yeah, I think he might. We shall see. Um, so 760 is beautiful. Bright. Well, I mean, if you're going to go for a honeymoon, this is the place to do it, obviously. Yeah. I think Colin will be saying for at least two weeks, maybe even three. I don't know if he's doing the national finals or not, but he'll be here next week for the Hot Rod Drag yeah. as well in Outlaw Anglia. Um, 760 the number in the slick tricks lane I think that's just one kit on there yeah I think that's, that's uh, not a lot of nitrous just married yeah even though that's it, you know well it's probably quite a lot of nitrous really but not by well, not, the usual standards not by Colin's normal standards no. uh, Daniel Giles Kestrel lane 743 Colin didn't actually went to Hockenheim uh, to run in Super Bowl. didn't qualify unfortunately uh, it was a qualified 16 car field, I think it was. Yeah. Uh, and he didn't get in the show. They have substantially less qualifying runs than we do as well, so that may have something to do with it. Nailing down your setup is never an easy thing, but doing it with less runs is even harder. Yeah. And on a track you don't know as well. That's the most boring launch I've ever seen Colin do. 741, 771 though, 182 for Colin. Boring it was not, past the top end. Sometimes. Sometimes straight and safe is a way forward. Daniel Giles stays number six. Uh, by virtue of a breakout, a couple of hundred seconds. Cut through hundreds of a second. And Colin moved up to 14. Say two drags as it look. Relatively the same. They're both quite similar. Yeah, they've got suspension. They've got big blocks in them. Two yeah. forty each inch wheelbase ish, and both got uh, monostruts on the bank. Yeah. So this is your points leader. This is Alan Dibwell. Uh, a strong weekend. Now, uh, really, will take the prospect off in two weeks' time at the national finals. Yeah, really will. He's already qualified well at number eight. Probably going to be a lot higher than that by the end of it, but we'll see. Against Joe Kellett. 
Must be really weird uh, for Joe driving this now because obviously it's throttle stop to an 890, which is what it runs in Supercom, obviously. Yeah. He's used to running much quicker than that now, isn't he? Much quicker. Yeah, but I mean, he's still running after 64. As soon as, you know, the stop starts easing its way back in, yeah. it, start, it starts to feel the same, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah I was going to say the closing so, speed is probably the yeah. same, isn't it? You're, you're not losing that many mile an hour from the top end. Actually, it clicks back in at 3.30, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. 60. Oh, 7.69 with an 8. Alan did well, only moves up two spots, would you believe? 8.92 for Joe, stays put at number 7. Good to see the gearbox is still working in that car as well. Very much so. After its uh, problems at Arkham Light. It's got to the point where it's almost self-removing. So, Pete Walters. With his immaculately turned out machine in the Slick Tricks Lane. Didn't make the run earlier on today. This will be his first time. Uh, against Matt Peters, running number three. Qualified number three at the moment. We've had 27 cars down the track. We've still got a bunch more to go. So, 7.60 is Pete's dial. 763 for Matt Peters. They can use each other. Kind of. It's pacemaker. It can be useful. Is it any harder running a like a blown alky combination like that than it is riding running a big one? I would say yes. It, it seems like it should be more work, isn't it? From it? everything that I've seen, I mean I've not done it, but I would I would say yes, there's it's a little bit although the blower overcomes the problems with the weather, the window for it for jetting and stuff is smaller than it is on the big lot. Right. Naturally aspirate or in, injected car, so you've you know yeah. But the thing is they've run, run virtually the same ETs as well. Not that that matters in bracket racing. Well, too quick, too slow. A um, couple of hundreds too quick for Matt Peters and uh, more than a tenth off in the other lane. Not that that's a particularly a bad thing. Gets him qualified. So Jack Williams with the supercharged Nova. What a badass looking car that is. It looks really, really good. 7.74 is uh, actually the number he ran earlier today. That's his dial in. Going up against uh, Callum Swinchat. It's nice to see a Nova here because you know you got the stats and they're like everybody's got one. And here there's just not that many about. There's, there's like, becoming more. I like, like coming here the last and there's couple not. Of years there's become more. I like coming and here. And I do like them. Yeah. They are good. Uh, I like coming here and it's not full of Camaros. That's a good thing. Yeah, thanks for that. Yeah. <laughs> and racing, yes, I have obviously. I have racing. still got it. <laughs> Good looking run both sides. Predictably Jack's out in front with the 780 and an 895. Callum goes to 9, Jack goes to 11. There's lots of cars that, uh, shapes of cars that lend themselves to race cars. This is another two of them. Thomas Haas with the Valiant. Imagine running a Mopar garage, living in Switzerland, driving yeah. Valiant. Yeah. I j yeah. Well, I've just, I've just, well, I've just been on my summer holiday to Austria. Okay, they're neighbours, but my God, what a place to live! I, in a heartbeat, if I could, it's just <laughs> gorgeous. 
And what I kept, you know, I kept, I kept, I kept driving Kelly mad and kept driving my wife mad because I kept saying, look, these valleys need a drag strip in them, right? You imagine the <laughs> noise, right? This valley is perfectly flat. There's a nice flat bit of the bomb. It would just be fabulous. An Austrian Bristol. Yeah. Everywhere you go. You got it. Mark Bailey as well. Returning Mark Bailey. Great to see him back. Thomas with a... a well, Thomas actually moves up to number 11. Uh, Mark Bailey in at number 9 off the trailer too. Not often you see a burnout like that from a dragster. <laughs> It was significant, right? It was. <laughs> I think significant, especially with the way that um, track prep and everything goes these days. It's, it's very significant, that was. It is, because, you know, you, you, you forget. You know, no breaks. You're, you're just trying to get them big things at the back to spin. It's got to be fun. But I also think there's a lot of horsepower in that car. Looking at it, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a, that's a full-on American top dragster, which, yeah, in case you don't know, run in the low sixes. Yeah. I think that's pretty much what that is, isn't it? Uh, in the Slick Tricks lane, 7.17. Yeah, um, I just had a look at the cubes. 765 cubic inches uh, yeah. of normally aspirated power. Bear in mind, the 500 cubic inch Pro Stocker runs 650s. There we go. Uh, against AC Bell, 871. That's going a long way around. And still is. 7, 19 for Fabian Dubois, up to number 8. Only a hundredth of a second off. I love the way he did that. It wandered over to the wall. <laughs> wandered over to the wall and he thought, I like it here, I'll stay here the rest of the way. Didn't bring, he never brought it back to the middle. Just kept going in the straight line. Says a lot for the track, doesn't it? Says a huge amount about the track. One of the things that the, uh, particularly that the Aussie uh, The Aussies were impressed about this place was a couple of things. First of all, the air, although yeah. maybe not this weekend, but the air was, is normally way better than what they run. Um, and um, the fact that the track is guardrail to guardrail, yeah, there really isn't. I think there's that, there's that ball patch just past the Christmas tree, but with no rubber on it but if you're over there you're in big trouble already anyway yeah. so you know it, it really does make a difference because you can keep it nailed I mean all the way there's still a group and, it, and once you're outside of it the car the car does push that, you know that we, I'm not saying that that doesn't do that but outside of the groove it's nice to know there's still plenty of grip and you have a little bit more leeway than you maybe have if you, what, if you basically yeah. it's up to you as opposed to um, the wall making the decision for you yeah. or, or basically that so uh, Dave Russell super gas please into the lanes super gas into the pairing lanes please for Q2 Dave Russell Kestrel lane 899 6.90 for Patrick Dubois again 781 cubes in that car 692 203 miles an hour up to the number 9 spot Dave Russell 902 up to number 11 yeah, I find as well the, the fact that the track is effectively I mean if you're getting close to the wall close to the centre line I've seen uh, loads of runs on this track especially especially on this racetrack where cars do get out they move around they, that's yeah. just what they do yeah. the, trying to force so much horsepower through such a you know through a short wheel based car uh, especially pro mods is they do get out of shape they do get over towards the wall they do get over towards the centre line but they keep going and keep it nailed it's like when yeah. Wayne Nicholson ran his first 5.8 if that was on an, any other race well not any other racetrack but a racetrack that wasn't prepped like this then he'd have had to let go because he'd have had to let go of it because yeah. it got way out of the, the normal groove but here, he managed to keep it nailed, and he would have lost his best run ever. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a it's a very very good thing. Yeah, I mean, you you know, I've seen plenty of US tracks where the groove is the groove, and once you're outside of it, yeah, you, couple if, of foot either way, and you've you, had it. Yeah, if you don't lift, you've got a real problem. Yeah, it's places like it's it's, it's a bit bizarre like that, isn't it? Because I always remember 
Uh, the Motorplex, which I'm sure you've been yeah, doing I have as well. Yeah. Um, that's one of the most famous tracks for only having, like, Literally. straight down the middle of the lane. Yep. Or you've had it, sort of thing. Yep. And it doesn't, it seems to not matter what they do with it. The groove stirs the groove. Yeah. 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 It's, it's definitely, they're not, they're not, not prepping it any less. So, Bob Dole, Mark Corsell. 34 for Mark, goes to 12. Where did that come from? 8.54. I don't think they're too over the ups. Yeah, I know, it's fabulous. 8.54, 1.57 for Bob Doyle. That's ridiculous. Well done. <laughs> and it looked real clean and then didn't even notice it was doing anything special, but it was. Uh, undramatic, you know. Yeah. Undramatic. Well, undramatic is always best, isn't it? So, Scott Hauser with a bang tidy car. 7.34 is the doll. For that car this time round against, first time ever here at Sands Pod, Angel Camero from Spain. I hope I said yeah. your name right, sir. He's been here. He's done more miles than anyone this year. Uh, he lives in Spain. Uh, he's got a race at home, uh, Circuit to Catalonia, in a couple of weeks' time. Yep. He's been to Hockenheim, Clastres, Tiep, and now here. Yeah, he seems to be very busy. Um, he licensed at Frank Ollie's a couple of years ago, um, and, and that was that's my knowledge of him from him licensing with Frank. Well, the car so is I've a, kept an eye on what he's been doing. The car's a full-on American-built yeah. uh, top sportsman car. See, there you go. He's way over towards the wall, and he kept going. Yeah, and the car's not pushing hard left. So, Angel moves up to number 13 with the 788 and the 785. He's got Hauser though, up to 12. <laughs> Someone <laughs> needs to tell our friend from Norway there is no burnout contest. This Actually, no, don't tell him. No, there is a burnout <laughs> contest. Do that again. All weekend. Keep going. That's Bjorn Holtberg from Norway with the, uh, the Chevy Wagon water car. What a car to go racing with as well in the Kestrel Lane. Supercross, Super Pro, excuse me, has grown immensely around Europe, hasn't it? Immensely. Yeah, it has, and, and you know, it's nice to see it grow because it is as this sort of price bracket of racing goes. Super Pro is really accessible to anybody, so yeah, it kind of it draws in lots of. I mean, it's great as well because if you've got a Super Gump car and you fancy going. Heads up, well not heads up racing, but if you fancy going, uh, sorry, non-throttle stop racing, yep. you can do it. Can't yep. you? So anyway, um, Bjorn Holtberg in the 57 wagon in the Kestrel lane. Look at that car. 895 against Darren Burke. That did not look well for Darren. Um, let the clutch out. I don't think that'll be an 895 for Bjorn either. It won't. Oh, it's nine flat actually, not bad. 150. Very, very undramatic, unlike the other lane, unfortunately. Yeah, Darren turned really hard left as well, as it jumped. So Bjorn actually does move up one spot to number 17 with that one. Uh, Darren Pert actually improves because he's uh, to number 28, would you believe, with that one? Because he didn't break out. Right, we're on with Junior Dragster, Chris. Top man, nice thank to you very much indeed, so. Ross, if I can yeah, find yeah. out some news. It's great to see you here. Thank you very much. Take care of that Louis White skin, sir. Uh, yes, I shall try. <laughs> but you know what happens. We, 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 we can see you because Beck will be following around with a spray tan thing going, no, 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 no. Well fat. <laughs> It'll be well fat everywhere and it still won't work. <laughs> Look after yourself, mate. Thank see you, you very soon. much. See you later. Junior Drags to Q2. That was really enjoyable. I had a time down on the start line then watching what Super Pro. I thought that was great. So I've uh, been meaning to do that for a while, quite a while. Colin has a break from watching racing for a living to watching, watching racing, racing without talking. <laughs> <laughs> but no, good to see Chris up here as well. So we will hear from him as the weekend progresses, as we get ready for Junior Dragster Q2. All right, Freddie Taylor, currently number three. Tom Peters, currently number 17. Oh, Freddie goes red on that one, but uh, Tom Peters going to move up from number 17 with that into number eight. So nicely done there for Tom.
Uh, so the order is really going to shuffle about now. At the moment, 26 cars have put qualifying runs in. That was in Q1. We still have a few more to come. All right, Neve DV and Harry Peters, your next pair. Neve, brilliant in Q1. Oh, Harry's just been pushed back there, so a uh, slight issue of him. So I hope we get that sorted. So, Neve, fantastic. 018 in Q1. Don't forget the juniors qualify on reaction times, not on speed or ET. Oh, so we're 06 red this time. So she can stay at number five for the time being. All right, your next pair then. Daniel Weir and Ted Sullivan. Ted, a little bit too keen to get the job done there with 06 red, but Dan Weir, the right side. That's 05. Well, that slots him in at number 10. Heidi Cassisi. And who else would she like to line up with? And Harley Cosell. Uh, can we please have Top Speed Automotive Street Eliminator into the pairing lanes, please? Street Eliminator, can we have you back into the lanes, please? Well, fair to say, Ada is having a great year. She's number three in the national championship points at the moment for Lucas Oils. Uh, she's currently number 26 qualified, but she'll move on up. And she will with that one, but Harley Corsell, an 0-3-1. That'll do him a bunch of good. That puts him in at number eight. And Ada moves up from 26 to 17. All right, Liam McDonald and Eva Davis. Uh, Liam went red in uh, Q1. But plenty of opportunities to... Uh, we will not the uh, qualified order here. He's number 27. Eva is currently 13. Expect both of these to change. Ah, right. There's me putting out a call out for people to go and see the two-seater dragster team uh, for available runs. And uh, they've had a bit of a... <laughs> <laughs> well, put it this way, there is only one spot available for Friday left. Now everything else is sold out. So they have one spot remaining for tomorrow in the two-seater dragster. Everything else is sold out. So pop over and see the team, and if you're quick enough, you could nap that last spot. Well, I told you Liam was going to move up, and he certainly has. He's moved to number four with that one, an 017. Nicely done. Eva Davis is going to move up as well, and she moves up from 13 to 11 with an 039. But Liam, the big mover there, 17, sorry, 27 to 4. Ellie Mae Brown and Ethan Cabrera uh, from Spain. Or Cabrera's. To check on the pronunciation on that one. So Ellie currently number 16. Ethan Cup number 22. Right, an 035 for Ellie May. He's going to move her up from 16. Lofty heights of number 10. Ethan moves up as well, 22 to 18. Well, it's 067 to get on the front page now of our timing screen, which is basically the top 16 out of 32. 
Mackenzie Love. Very nice. Q1 run from him. He's at number two. Max Taylor, number 23. Mackenzie Love doing quite well in the national championship actually. He finished fifth last year. He's currently number six in the points this year. Uh, but with uh, a number two qualifying spot, very nice at the moment. It was 004. Should certainly keep him in the top half of the field. He goes red this time with a 004 red. And if you averaged them out, that'd be perfect. Uh, Max Taylor, an 059. He was number 23. He's now number 14. All right, the Cooper brothers, once again, lining up side by side. Kai Cooper, Jake Cooper. So he's just uh, showing Jake the way to go. And Andy Fensum. Looking after Kai. Currently number eight, Jake 28. Well, oh, he saw Jake visibly move first there, put a cherry on the tree, but how about Kai? He was number eight. He's moving on up to number four. An 010 light there. Nicely done. All right, Jack Taylor, Emmy Crundwell. Jack currently number 18. Emmy, great first run from her. Number six. I'm going to say this order will keep shuffling around. 28 cars have currently put qualifiers in. Jack just had a little bit too keen there, but an 009 for Emmy. She was already number six, had a really good run there, but she moves up to number four. So that's four of the juniors with double O light so far. And then the next four are on 01. This is only Q2. They get nine goes at this, possibly ten. That's right, I need to check how many, but it's low. qualifiers for the juniors. Mad. I'll be looking forward to seeing this. This is Lena Wall from Germany with the junior funny car. Super cool that. Uh, going alongside Richard Wilcox with the uh, the firefighter racing juniors dragster. Lena slots in at number 20. Uh, a little bit too quick there for Richard. Uh, left with a cherry on the tree. He stays number 16. All right, Daniel Todd with the Dragon Slayer. And that's Grace Smith with the Boost Monkey Junior Baxter.
Grace currently number 17, Daniel 23. It's a pair. Bryce moves up from 17 to 14. Daniel moves up from 23 to 18. All right, it's the Redshaw boys up next. Damien and Harry. Damien didn't get the full pass in last time. The, uh, although he left the line, uh, the car went about 100 foot and decided it wasn't going to go any further. So, uh, fingers crossed, gets a full run in this time. Both away very nicely indeed. Harry with an 035. Yeah, it's going to move him up a couple of spots there. He was 13. Oh, I thought, uh, ah, no, we haven't got uh, a result that Damien wanted at all. Pretty much the same as the last run. Uh, Dragster is uh, stopped around about 200 foot out there. So Harry moves up from 13 to 10. And, uh, well, Damien stays number 24. Right, well, we only had one of the Bartlett girls. spot at the moment and that's obviously Lara but Jacqueline would like to take that spot away she's currently number 23 so Lara had a double 03 in Q1 she's held on to that number one spot so far so the slick tricks racing junior dragsters the pair of them oh. 016 for Jacqueline. That's certainly going to move her up from number 23. Going to put her into the number six spot. Uh, Lara with a point two. She's already got that number one spot at the moment. So the Bartlett girls. Lara number one, Jacqueline number six. All right, Teddy Howe. He's in the uh, Castro Lane. And that's Frankie Kent. Nice to see. Uh, Kent Racing Dynasty continue here. And nicely done, Frankie. So Frankie slots in at 24. Teddy moves up from one, uh, from 26 to 25. All right, Luke Mugridge, number nine qualifier at the moment, number two in the points chase. Seven red, so we're going to stay at number nine for the time being. Yeah, 
So that, I believe, is a wrap for Junior Dragster for Q2. So looking at that, you've got four of them with double O's, and the next five are on O1. So tough and tough and crowd indeed. Right, we move on to Super Gas. First pair going to be Andy Dibley with the uh, the Magic Rat Camaro. As you tune into the live feed at home, got a good view of Dibs as he comes underneath the tower to line up in the burner box in the Kestrel beer lane. Coverage is a glorious day here. It's a glorious day everywhere. Going alongside Mark White with the uh, FX Vega. Yeah, everybody was a bit all over the place in the first qualifying session. Yeah. <clears throat> Hopefully, this will be a little more on it. Yeah, problems off the line again for Mark White. But he'll get there. He has done plenty of times. So, Wayne Hiscock, uh, number 12, just missed the number earlier on. Wayne lifted at the usual point, but unfortunately, Probably because of the tailwind, it sort of breezed him across the finish line a little bit too quick. Uh, taking on Stefan Raffeltraff with that superb supercharged Nova. Wayne well, Hitchcock is out in front, he's now going to slow down. Stefan will catch him up and they'll go over the line roughly together. There we go. So somewhere in... Basically Wayne's somewhere in the middle of that. <laughs> 50 mile an hour difference between those two at the strike then. <laughs> Mad. Tim Moore, Vic Parsons, your next pair. Tim went 10.05. Vic, 10.24. Both well capable of going deep into the nines. Just spot the number plate on Vic's car like that. American style. He says, I'll race you. <laughs> uh, Vic, very, very happy with that car. Um, amazing transformation from the, the Williams boys in OCS paint. Damn killer job on the engine. And uh, car is awesome. And Vic doing very, very well indeed. Uh, making finals and, uh, yeah, just having a real, real good time. Runner-up at Dragstalger in the Stalger Superstock. Problems for Tim, unfortunately. So, going to be Vic on his own for this one. It's taking a little bit too long, unfortunately. <laughs> 986. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> you can hear when he lifted, but you're going to have to lift it a little bit earlier nearly got it right so this must be is this his first attempt at Supergas it's Supergas yeah. yeah I thought so yeah he's done Pro ET and Nostalgia Superstock and now he's having a little dabble in Supergas <laughs> so 20 142 there for Tim didn't really leave the line that no. time did it Okay, Dave Fulton. The Nova. I must admit, I'd like to see the Nova all weekend. That's a little business, that car. Uh, so does this one as well. Jasmine Tunstall. Yeah, it's obviously Jazzy in gas, and then it'll be Richard in comp. Isn't drag racing great? Two people can chair a car in different classes and... 
I do. Oh, three lights are there. GTs are important at the moment. Nine ninety-eight, nine ninety-four. Jasmine goes up to Dave five. No, Stu Stu Doiny. Next to look for that nine ninety number we went ten zero. Actually both these went ten zero two earlier on. Now Mark just broke out by a bunch in Pro E T. Oh, one a pair. <laughs> Standard They're proper good. <laughs> Mark's way out in front. Not now. Look at that. 95, 94. Three for Stu. Four for Mark. Well, the difference at the stripe, I know it's not racing, but zero, zero, 005. <laughs> not a lot. Uh, that, was a, that would have been a cracking race if that was eliminations, that's for sure. Do you know what? The one thing that we have that they don't in the States is they do have that amazing finish line camera shot mm. here. Um, and well, it's just it's it, it, the, the amount of times people like repost stuff and, and yeah. show that just to show how close it is it must be so difficult yeah. to judge a finish line well Barney and Box Lane have just been phenomenal the way they've uh, approached the coverage of drag racing here with the with the camera work and a lot of it's remote camera work let's mm. not forget that uh, absolutely brilliant but this weekend obviously we got uh, Josie and that well, there's more. There's three of them down there today. No, there two. Uh, you know, walkabout cameras, cameras in the uh, no man's land up there. There's one in the pits as well, isn't yeah. there? Yeah, actually. One of the fixed ones. And the camera is manned, actually. Up on the, right. uh, yeah, so uh, proper full on coverage of what plane. Oh, look at that for Andy Arizon. Try and get around that for number one. 9.90 with a 1. They will. They will. I'm sure someone will have a good <laughs> go. Have a go yeah. at it, yeah. But Andy Harrison, what a run. No, just going on to box lane one more time. Um, let's not forget, it's free for everybody to watch. You got it. Absolutely brilliant. Right, we move on to Street Eliminator. Nick Hale and Rob Carter, your first pair in this session. See if Rob Carter can take it all the way through this time. Look at that thing go. Nice fella. If he keeps on it, I think he's clicked it, has he? No. no he definitely he, didn't. Yeah, he's clicked it to an 818. <laughs> <laughs> 169 miles an hour. I yeah. think that is a new personal best. Uh, Nick Howell with a 10.70. Slowly, slowly nudging the sevens. You can tell there's a tail wing because you can't see a damn thing most of the time. <laughs> yeah, it's not much of one, but it's enough. It's still quite a breeze, though. If you look at the windmills, they're, they're, uh, I was quite surprised how breezy it was mm. this morning. Not it's a bad it thing. It makes it beautiful out there, doesn't it? That's lovely. We, if you can get in the shade, big if. Um, yeah, the breeze just helps it a bit. I just, mean, help, I, just really makes the pod face come on as well, <laughs> doesn't it? it does. You know what? You know what? Obviously, you know where I live. I live on the coast, don't yeah. the south coast. One of the windiest places in the UK. We've had no air yeah. for like the last four or five days. It's just not moved. Elliot Day, Rob Slater, two eight second cars here. Both went eight eighty something. Both capable of a lot more. Is Elliot pedalling? Yeah, <laughs> I, I think, think he, he is, was, actually. actually. A lot quicker, 60 foot. Almost exactly where they were before. Uh, 81 and an 85. Earlier on, they went an 81 and 86. 881 and 886, that is. Bigger speed for Rob Slater. 166 miles an hour. Well, Tony Higgs posted on Facebook to say that was a great first run. Obviously, what he was looking for. Mm. Um, he was still half of one of the best Street and Night finals I've seen for a long, oh, long time. Oh, the one Mac. That the was national finals fabulous, last year. that was. In the dark. Oh, yeah, you're right. I agree. Talk about going after it. Well, he's not going to be making this run, unfortunately. There is uh, the marshals have spotted something on the start line after the burnout for Tony Higgs. I better safe than sorry. 
Al Williamson is one of those that hasn't got an ET yet because he got pushed back in round one of qualifying. I would actually be very surprised if all these cars make every qualifying session because there's five sessions today and it's hot out there. <laughs> Not your average pickup truck. Although it's average for Santa Fe. Well, he gets qualified. 11.62, 111. All right, next up, Ricky Hale and James Murray. No, I think we're going to do send Ricky on the way, and then uh, James will, uh, will appear in the Kestrel Lane. Gears, I think. Sounds like it. 11.23. Still goes 11.23.105. All right, here is James Murray then. Somewhere. Achieved his... Uh, Ambition with this car dipped it into the nines earlier on this year. It's just a terrific achievement, oh, isn't it? Awesome. If you imagine, if you remember from like 30, 40 years ago, what it took to get a car in the nines, they were the quickest door cars. Yeah. Oh, just went deep there. Yeah, it's going to trickle through. Yeah, just go through the motions, I think, on that one. 13, 18, 104. Love the roof. Yeah. Something about a black vinyl top. Great it? texture. <laughs> that sounds quite creepy, but yeah, it's got a great texture to it. You know what I mean? It's one less bit to polish. Yeah. Funny, I mean, polish. Um, I actually use uh, shoe polish on, on mine. Oh. <laughs> it worked really well. I could sleep well tonight now, I think. Yeah. Well, no, because they've got my <laughs> side going a little bit off colour, so I thought we needed to freshen it up. Did I say tonight? I meant in a minute. Oh, right, Keeps OK. <laughs> <laughs> right, good luck, Vicky. That's looking good. That's looking very good. It was an 881, it's an 872 now. Look at the speed, 170. That's coming around nicely. Yeah, that when that car, they turn that car up on the start line, once the 60 foot starts ticking downwards. So yeah, that's what I was saying about making all the sessions. Andy Bond is the last car. No Mark Sheridan or Mark Todd, actually. This session is markless. So Andy Bond is already and still will be number one qualifier because he's his last car. Went 7.35, 202. Slightly slower to 60 that time. Almost exactly the same all the way through, really. <laughs> uh, have you ever considered Bracker racing that car, sir? That would be pretty good, yeah. <laughs> Uh, a 35 and a 36, number one qualified two times in a row, and 203 miles an hour instead of 202 that time. Yeah, I think what knocked the 60 foot down a bit was he, uh, he did actually deep stage. stage. Yeah. Yeah, you got it. So we've got a bit of track prep to do. So uh, all being well, we'll hand back to Nitro FM just for a couple of moments. We've got a comp eliminator in the lanes. Super comp are getting ready to go as well, not too far away. It's a beautiful, beautiful day to be at a racetrack, especially your favourite one here in the UK.
behind 70 for Dave Rudd. Good run off. Now, Susie McClure licensed yesterday. She's probably screaming her head off now. She's now going, I want more, I want more. And here come the shoots. 799, 167 for Paul Brown and Alison Andrew. That is the flattest launch I've ever seen for Ron. Yeah, 001 for Lee, off the line. 8.33 and 8.94. That is the flattest, most tame launch I've ever seen. Yeah. Seven forty two for Daniel. Number two at the moment, Jack Brewster rolls it through with a eight ninety four, one twenty five the car. Made that characteristic. That was a lot harder launch. My goodness me for Kieran. That really was. That's going to be a lot quicker than 792. Well, a bit quicker. Yeah, 786. Look at the 60 foot, 111. Yeah. Well, but he didn't run the speed. The team. at 3.30 for Colin. And then 8.40 at 162. Uh, 8.94 for Callum. On an 85, that'll be number seven. Let's hope he has a fun time and brings friends. Thomas goes 8.19, tenth per second off. Bjorn goes 8.94, and he's currently number six. Good looking run for the door car. 696 at 203 miles an hour. They don't look too upset with breaking out. Oh, both of them broke out. He's going to be a threat in 760 next year. On rails, look at that. 69 and 74 for Jack. Yeah. Uh, Alan goes to number five off the trailer. Ah, that's a really good point. We don't have our Super Pro. We will have it. Right, let's see if that 737 is a good shout or if he misses it. It's or missed it by a couple of hundreds, actually. So Jeff will scratch his head and go. Yeah. Numerous occasions. No right, boost off no the boost start line. line no. <laughs> So, Bob, 899 the target, 970. No nitrous. Yeah. So, that there's enough of a buffer. Lots of shake for Darren Pitt off the start line. Matt Peters is long gone to oh, 763 with a nine. Well, even with all that tie shake as well, Darren Pitt still broke out. 793 at 170. One second, 60 foot. Oh, he's your number one qualifier. Took it off his teammate. <laughs> so Nick goes number one, and then his teammate, Matt Peters, number two. That was unbelievable. Uh, 996. First of all. Yeah, but Stu is still two in the points. That's what I mean. Yeah. And we're back with Comfort with a new car to hit. A few cars in the session, I think. First one. 10.02. And 10.20. So, Wayne Hiscock. Wayne also this year. I'm just kidding. He's enthusiastic. It's a good thing. 
So Wayne will click it now, trickle over. Earlier on today, taking on Spencer Tram, who is very, very close. It's really close. There's only 40 points in it, not even round. Uh, between Spence Nick Wi and Nick Williams at the top. It really is between those two for the Comp Eliminator Points Championship. Now, the hot weather is going to affect uh, Spence's car probably more than anyone else's because he has no power adder at all. 11.24, still a pretty good run. Start with anyway. And uh, 12.51 for Chris Todd, 110. That car is normally nudging towards the eights. So, Rob Smallworth with the Dirty Dog, 55. Had a really good run, looking run going earlier on today. Backed out of it quite a way before the finish line. Again, I love the look of this car. Very Scandinavian style scoop with the Perspex shaker scoop on top of there. Does look the business. They always did. Can you believe Freddy used to have one of those on the truck when he ran nitrous? So, Rob and the team, I'll say the team, uh, Stan Atkin down there, and Paula too. Rob actually helps them out when they run their car. I think it's been almost a year to the day since we saw uh, Stan and Paula for the last time with the Mustang. The car is actually for sale. Not this one, Stan and Paul's car. Very, very quick turbo Mustang. If you fancy you go, um, as you're going really quick and fast, go and have a word with him. So, Rob Smallworth with the uh, the super modified designation. For Comp Eliminator 799 is his index. And by index, uh, it's not a dial in. Based on the size of the engine, the car has to be a certain weight. Tune it, run as quick as you can. Rob going for a big wander just before the finish line again. 775, 173. Another step in the right direction. Really wandering around in the back half quite a bit though. Okay, that comp eliminator session was three cars, I think. We're on to super comp now. Uh, it's going to be the Hudson boys, no relation, believe it or not. Uh, Steve and Paul. Paul hasn't put in a run yet. He's got the car in Slick Tricks lane. Yeah, a lot of missing cars from sessions. Again, when the, uh, when the weather is quite hot like this, these cars, a lot of these cars, don't have a cooling system on them. So on a really hot day, um, building a bit of heat's not a bad thing. Uh, but days like this build a lot of heat and they do take a while to cool down between, between sessions. And if people skip sessions, that makes the gap between them even shorter. Here a throttle stop going on there. I think that would be Paul's. 888 just missed. 200 is too quick. 905 for Steve Hudson. Paul Hudson does actually get a qualified number on the board. 
Uh, I think we've got something like uh, 12 or 13 cars uh, for Super Comp. We've only got six that are putting runs so far today. So Fabian Duar with the fabulous front engine slingshot dragster. Going to be next. See the crew squirting the uh, injectors with a little petrol to get it going. This car's another one of those that's well capable of going quicker than... the 890 number. Now, if this look of car is your thing, one week from now, well, just over a week, actually, uh, next Friday is the start of the uh, Hot Rod Drags here at Santa Claus Raceway. A whole bunch of nostalgia cars. Uh, we've got Outlaw Wranglers, Supercharged Outlaws, loads in attendance for that event. It's always a fun highlight of the calendar. Can't guarantee the weather's going to be quite as warm with this, but it does actually look pretty good for, you know, a while now. I beg your pardon, it's Clement Dubois, not Fabian. Pretty close, actually. 883, 131. Sounded like it needed to shift gear, but didn't, obviously. I think we're actually just collecting cars in the lanes. I think it's going to be uh, Super Gas up next. It is super gas up next. We uh, we're out of super comp cars for that session. So yeah, um, it looks like super gas. Well, that'd be probably T actually. You think so? Yeah. Oh, of course it is. Yeah, because um, it's the start of Q3. Yeah. I beg it, it's all right. It's because um, Mark White's car sitting at the front. But obviously, um, if Dan's driving it, yeah, that'll be why. But no one's in there at the moment. It is you. Yeah. <laughs> How could I miss you? Sorry, mate. Apologies. Oh, I saw, you know, I saw uh, Chalky last night, yeah. but so good to see Dan Page racing this weekend. Um, we will talk about that a bit more tomorrow. Um, but, uh, yeah, saving, saving what I, I want to say about that tomorrow, basically. Uh, but, no, it's uh, really good that uh, Chalky has uh, allowed Dan to run the car this weekend. First time it's ever double-classed, I think, actually. I can't remember it ever doing it. Yeah, John Turner over there with the cuter as well. So, yeah, it looks like Pro ET uh, qualifying session number three. Every time I do this, though, I know what I'm about to do, and I shouldn't do it, but I'm just looking at the clock and then looking where we are. But, um, yeah, doing well. Doing very we well. We were going to have a vote last night in the pits. <laughs> this is right. This is really bizarre. And hear me out on this one. Our racing schedule starts at nine in the morning. Mm hmm and finishes around about eight in the evening, roughly, yeah? Uh, yeah. We thought it would be a good idea to start racing at 9.30 last night and finish at eight o'clock this morning. Weather-wise, perfect. That would have been perfect. Yeah. Everybody would be running at night, and uh, the weather would have been brilliant. It would have been so good to do that, but obviously we couldn't. But, uh, yeah, that idea was bounced around a few people. Did you yeah, ask? Yeah, we like that. <laughs> Did you ask? 
No. Okay. <laughs> but no, we you know, do have. <laughs> it would have been just one of those nights. Um, I think we should sleep in the day and uh, race at night this weekend because the conditions would just be phenomenal, especially with the new shutdown area lights as well. Uh, you've got those to see. Uh, they are awesome. Absolutely awesome. What, actual big lights or yeah. the, the LEDs? Down, they're, 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 oh, the the LEDs. It, yeah. um, but no, the, uh, if you look, if you can see down the shutdown area, if you see the lamp oh, posts yeah. all the way down, they've got the new lights that are on the same as the, uh, the track lights. So it's Fantastic. like right all the way down. I saw them lit at, uh, I think it was the day before the Greenlight Nationals. They had them on. They were just testing them. And it's like, whoa, <laughs> really, really good. Yeah, awesome job. That's the other thing. Oh, there's new speakers behind the uh, the grandstands now. Okay. So literally, we are heard everywhere. Sorry, everybody. Apologies. Um, so we can warn people of flying T-shirts. That's ex that's the only thing that's for. Yeah. Okay. Especially for you. <laughs> I'm not the one. I'm not the one that does it anymore. That's the, that's the point. It's down, not me. It's down the man now. But uh, but if you've got a feeling it could be a little bit busy this weekend. Right. I thought we're done with Supercomp. We're not quite. We've got one more car, which is Leah Kelly. And then I think you're right, I think it will be Pro ETQ number three. Cool. So yeah, not far, well, one car away from starting our third yeah. qualifying session of the day. <coughs> so Leah, where's number one on the car? Yeah. National champ in the Super Comp last year. For many, many years, she just watched and helped her brother Joe, who's out front, race this car. Well, not this car, and Junior Dragster as well. And then, um, not quite sure about how it came about her having a go in the car, but they thought they'd put the throttle stop on it and give her a go at 890 racing, and she's absolutely killed it since day one. Six. How about number one now, though? <laughs> yeah, with, a, with an 893, a little bit off pace. Look at the speed, though. 175 miles an hour on an 890. Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. So, yeah, it will be. We've picked up 45 mile an hour at the second half. Wow. Well, it did have the throttle stop on. Yeah, well, yes, obviously, third. yeah. Right, the bun fight that is Pro ET. Whoa, bring it on. So for Modjustang and of course all the other contingency sponsors of Pro ET, this is session number three, and kicking things off, it will be the FX Vega and the Firebird. It's going to be Dan Page, Dan Fulton. Right, let's have a look at the darlings then. Dan Page. 990, which, no surprise there, is the super gas number. Uh, Dan Fulton looking for a 1015. Dan currently not in the show, he's at number 35, that can change very quickly indeed, Dan Fulton is number 9.
stays put at number nine. Greenfish Barracuda of John Turner, currently in the number 24 spot. He dials 9.35 for this one. And it's Alfie Ratton with the Corolla. 9.05 dialed in for him. Two breakout, a little bit too quick. John Turner moves up a couple of spots there. 9.43 out of 35. He's at number 21 at the moment. Murray Mills in the altered. Darling in 10.58. And that's Simon Fulton down there with the Blitz Creek Falcon. 9.03 for this one. Going to get there first with a 9.08. Moves up one spot, 19 to 18, but it is a breakout for Marie, just over four hundredths. So no movement from her, she stays put. Good old nitrous purge there from the dart. Ryan Garrett, a darling of 8.77. He's got the track to himself for this one. An 880, nicely done, Ryan. 15 to 11. <laughs> right, Chris Newsom and Simon Innes, your next pair. 55 dial in for Chris Simon 1064. Now Simon is number oh, 952 break out there for Chris just a little bit too quick for Simon Innes though 1065 on that 64 moves up from 30 to number seven. Next pair then, Paul Marston and Dave Rudd. Got to say big thanks to Josie and Fox Lane. I've got a bigger monitor now. I can see everything that's going on. That's really good. Okay, the dial-ins. Paul Marston, 897. Dave Rudd, 974. Eight ninety six with an eight. Oh, Paul Master breaks out by just that much, and pretty much by the same margin. Dave Rudd breaks out. Both, we're talking thousands break out, not even a hundredth. Right, John Darimple with the full tilt. Willis nine and ninety two is his target, going alongside Laura Bainton. Ten forty two for her.
Laura currently number 27. John currently number 35. Nice move. 35 to 18 there for John. Laura Bainter moves up as well. She goes 49 on that 42 up to number 22. All right, Liz Malcolm and Brett Featherston, your next pair. Liz looking for that 1094, Brett a 948. Right, so Brett's going to get there first. Gets a 946, a little bit too quick there. And Liz also a little bit too quick, 1092 with a 4 and a 1094. So they're going to stay put. Ronnie Mercer, Simon Rickwood, Simon number two at the moment. Awesome qualifying from him so far. Uh, Ronnie currently number 19. Break out there for Simon Rickwood, just that a little bit too quick, but we're talking hundreds again. Uh, 10.53 there for Ronnie. All right, Jess Bishop, Mason Griffiths, the two dragsters. Jess, number five. Mason, one place head at number four. Tough, tough crowd, this bunch. As I say, uh, we will have a bump spot in uh, Prairie T. And at the moment, we are 0.17 down page holding on to that. And then anybody below number 32. Going to be a little bit nervous, especially as we get later into the qualifying rounds. This is only Q3. Plenty more sessions to come. 9.31 for Jess. 9.07 for Mason. There, a couple of hundred to the right side, but no improvements. Right, Warren Watts and John Bean, your next pair. Warren with that Camaro, sticking with the 907 dial-in. Uh, John Bean with a shotgun Mustang, 973. Warren currently number 13, John number 21. Both away well, zero lights a pair. Doesn't really affect their ETs in uh, quality, but it's good to get some good reaction times under your belt. 913 for Warren, 972 with a seven. Breakout by less than a hundred there for John B. Uh, getting some good consistency with the Mustang, so good news there. Stevie Gage, your number one qualifier, and the car is up for sale. They've got uh, a new ride lined up uh, for next season, but this one's got to go before they can race the other one. Going alongside Harley J. Darby with that awesome pickup. 909, darling, for Harley, and it's a 956 this time for Stevie Gates. Stevie Gates going even quicker this time. Right, 
right, Darren Huxley with the rice burner. That Nissan looking for 11.57. And it's Dave Crowhurst with the Camaro, 9.30. Going to be Dave for the strike first with a 929 with a six. Oh, 11.62 for Darren. He moves up from 29 to 18. But Dave Crowhurst almost hit the nail on the head there. 929 with a six on a 930 darling. Very, very close indeed. Amy Watkins and Doug McClure. Well, fair to say, Doug isn't the car isn't launching like it normally does. I mean, bearing in mind this car went one best wheelie at uh, Dragstalgia, but the uh, car seems a little bit tamer this weekend. Going alongside Amy Watkins with that Firebird, 11.64. In fact, people have dialed their cars back a little bit. Quite warm to run quick. The air is uh, probably not a lot of it. Very, very warm out there as well. Nine sixty-two with the breakout there for Amy Watkins, and Doug does the same. Eleven fifty-five, he breaks out on that eleven sixty, darling. All right, got Mark Huxley, Tom K. Well, I think Mark is struggling a little bit this weekend, and I want to say struggling. Uh, he's he's trying to get the consistency in the car. The darlings are adjusted each run to try and suss the car out but when he gets it he will well and truly be on it bear in mind this is only Q3 still got another two qualifiers after this today and then he got tomorrow and Saturday qualified Tom K currently number 27 he's looking for a 10.17 on this one 996F mark goes up from 33 to 28, but it's a breakout for Tom K. A little bit too quick there for him. 10.13. All right, got a pair of uh, what we affectionately call junior contractors. You got uh, Nick Mugridge and Will Clark. Um, Nick doing very well. Number three. Will currently number 30. Uh, problem there for Will, unfortunately, but uh, no issues there for Nick Mugridge. 10.20 is the target, 10.14 was the run. A little bit too quick for him. He stays three, and Will just coasting towards the stripe now. And, uh, yeah, the 19.24, not the run he was looking for. Right, Neil Watkins uh, to get a number on the board and to add another car to the qualified order. So, uh, no number yet for Neil. Ozzy Brown is the driver in the other lane with the Camaro. Ozzy looking for a Watkins 0 0 1 on the tree. But it's all about the ETs. Let's see what they got there. Aussie breakout 1087. Neil Watkins, how about that? His first run 1136 with a zero, straight in at number six. If he'd have taken the 001 off his uh, <laughs> off the ET, that would pretty much bang on. Right, Tom Watkins with Doris, the uh, charger there. Currently number 36. Uh, recent addition, obviously, to Doris these days uh, is the wheelie bar on the back. Uh, 
fair to say that uh, Doris has reached for the sky a few times recently, so uh, they gave in and uh, wheelie bar on the back now for the charger. 910 the dial in. Now they've done that, the car probably will never wheelie again, but it's a good flat launch. 02 light. 910 the target. 917 the run moves up from 36 to 25. Back in the days of Super Street, these two were matched up pretty much every single time. Lee Morris with the Green with Envy, Jack with E-Type, and Dave Cherritt with the Dark Revenger, the Model A van. 10-10 is the dial-in for Lee, 9-78 for Dave. Dave is one of those that's in the uh, top end of the pit area. As uh, was here last weekend, just put the trailer in position. He's not moving it for a month. He's uh, competing next weekend at the Hot Rod Drags, and he's here, of course, the national finals as well. Maybe quite a few people will be uh, leaving their stuff here for three weeks. Well, Lee Morris, currently number 34, needs to get in the show. He is your points leader, Terry T. And uh, 10.32 on that one. He's still not in, actually. Dave Trent breaks out with a 73. Just got Vic Parsons over there. I'm not sure if uh, he's got an issue or, or what. Oh, the window net. Mind you, Vic's one of these guys that's uh, doing a lot of hot lapping this weekend. He's running in super gas and he is running in Pro ET. But that uh, Plymouth Belvedere just looking absolutely gorgeous at the moment. Uh, Super Pro ET line up in the lanes as well uh, for their third qualifying session. And unsurprisingly, there's a few umbrellas appearing in the uh, pairing lanes. That's trying to put the drivers in the shade so they don't uh, overhook, overcook. Uh, especially uh, in the dragsters as well. Obviously, the door cars have got roofs to. Uh, <laughs> supposedly reflect the sunlight, but uh, not in the dragsters. That's Vic ready to go. Well on late. Good to have a crewman that uh, knows what he's doing there. So uh, well done to Lee. So here comes Vic Parsons then. Uh, beautiful Plymouth Belvedere. Uh, Going to be the last car, I think, in Pro ET for this session. Uh, Vic. doing the burn out there. Well, we haven't got a dial in for Vic. Yeah, they might panic to uh, 
get it down to the start line. I don't think the dial in on the back window. So 976 then the dial in for Vic. Uh, but uh, now being pushed back. So we get uh, the opportunity to have Super Pro. Chris, what's it like out there, mate? It's rather warm. <laughs> rather warm. <laughs> rather, yeah, warm. rather warm. <laughs> um, I, I, I was just sat talking to Ron Bartlett, and he said that the Anglia is properly hot inside. Yeah. Um, having no problems keeping the car cool, we'll just keeping Ron cool. Well, um, um, Tom Atkinson said he's going to duck out the next two qualifiers because he said he's, he's a little bit hot in the car. He's qualified well. And, uh, yeah, so he's going to chill out for a little well, while. Don't when, blame him. When I got to the next pit, um, oh, that's Nick God, um, he... Uh, he was just looking for the cooler to put his cool suit on. Oh. So that tells you he doesn't do that very often. But he has a he has a Domex suit that, that has pockets for ice in it. Yeah, Nick's Nick's Domex underwear has pockets for ice packs in it. So he was just going to find his ice packs. So Super Pro round. Number three, then, Ron Barlett and uh, Daniel Giles, your first pair. Yeah, Ron's actually dialing 789 this time, so I can only presume he's, dis he's given in to um, turn the nitrous on again. Well, Ron didn't have to give in. Okay. Uh, his crew chief had to give in. There was a bit of a, a what did we do, <laughs> and Ron was doing the we do, and yeah. Fair enough. So. Well, the, the thing is that the, uh, the driver's the one that has the fun bit. Yeah. Definitely. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, Ron will say they've, they've done a little bit of work on suspension again. Um, so they wanted to run it without nitrous early on today, see what, well, it, see where they were with it. But it went dead. I mean, that was the yeah. It was yeah. perfect. But Absolutely. he says, you know, he needs a little bit of leeway in that to put the nitrous on in the first place so he knows it will still go straight. It is a bit of an animal with the nitrous on from the start line. Um, kind of changes was, everything. Yeah, he was quite, you know. He said it gets his attention when he's uh, got the badge on. Good. So. That's the idea. Yeah. Against Daniel Giles, 7.40. I think if Ron breaks out, I don't think they're going to care. Oh. Ron's not going to care anyway. It, it's noticeably quicker. Yes. It really, even though it's only a few tenths, 7.40 and then 7.94. Daniel Giles goes to number two. Uh, Ron slot, well, stays at number 19. Well, yeah, Ron, Ron said to me he, want, he wants to run the nitrous mainly this weekend because it's the first time I've had a following win in the last few events. Right. So he, he, wants, he wants that Anglia record, you know. I get it. Yeah, that Anglia record is sat there waiting for him. And he's, uh, yeah. Where is it? Where is it currently? It's 787, seven, is it? Or so? uh, Ish. I think it's a bit lower than that. 78 something. I know yeah. Paul Dale ran a couple of 78s the other weekend. Yeah. Um, again. I get a funny feeling it's an 85, but I, you know. Well, he's close, yeah. but uh, anything starting with a 7.7, seven, seven, it's, it's done. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what he wants. I think we accidentally started this, didn't we? Yeah. A few events ago, wondering, yeah. how, wondering how quick <laughs> uh, the quickest and anglier had gone. Anyway, uh, Paul Brown, that's right, Paul Brown, Pete Brown, even. Um, 8.43, that was a new PB for them earlier on today in qualifying. Didn't count, because he broke out by a mile. Uh, take it on Bjorn Holmberg. Sorry, Holtberg, I beg your pardon, sorry. Uh, from up there in Sandyfield, Norway. Beautiful part of the world. Uh, Norway's very, very much like the UK. It's a wonderful place, beautiful place. Just needs a roof a lot of the time. Most of the time, you know what I mean. <laughs> they've, had, they've had the same sort of summer we have. So this is probably, uh, probably better than Benidorm at the moment for them. So 8.43 for the digger. 838, too quick again, and 895 at 152. Breakouts both lanes. So, Colin Miller with the flying Pfeiffer. Occasionally comes and joins us for Super Pro. This is the last, uh, these, the, these next two weekends are Colin's last of the season. Uh, and he loves to make the most of it while obviously the sun's shining. And while he's got the opportunity to do it as well, really. Um, 
it's a long old trip down from Scotland and he does it with a smile on his face every time never seems not to smile does he no I'm good he's just a I mean even when he even when he busts it he still enjoys himself uh, it's what it's all about though making the most of summer he does 760 8.93 with Mr Huxley in the slick tricks lane have you any idea what they've actually done to Lee's car to make it go that much quicker as well? Is it just a bigger engine? In I, think, I, think? I think that 630 cubic inches that'll is probably, probably it part then, of yeah. It. <laughs> yeah, that's a fairly large. What have you done to it? Yeah. It? Very, very stable launch for Colin. Not often you say that. And no wiggle. And a 771 up. 183 miles an hour. Yes, yeah, nudging in the right direction. 895 for Lee. He's taking six. Got the save. 21. Okay, we continue then, and it is. Alan did well on the verge uh, of his first championship, fair to say. He's having a phenomenal season this year. He's qualified number seven at the moment. Uh, he dialed 7.69. He ran 7.69 with an eight earlier on, but uh, he's now just trying to just move on up that qualified all just a little bit more. Going alongside Jack Williams with that awesome Nova. 774 is the darling. Uh, he runs it in 760 heads up, but now he's here for more track time and he's here trying to get it all done in a Super Pro ET. Starting at 774. Oh, a little bit of a wiggle off the line. And these two are on it. 767 breakout for Allen. And Jack goes 780. Well, really good runs indeed. But uh, Jack really, really getting the job done. Nicely done. Mark Bailey with the Barracuda coming up, going alongside Nick Good, your former boss, eh, Chris? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Nick Good with the, the cool say one. Never called him cool in the past, but, you know. <laughs> Oh, I know what you mean. <laughs> so, your old boss, Nick Good, out there? You ever fancy having a go in the blown car? Is that his and his alone? Oh, that's very much his. Very much his. Okay, fair enough. That's that question answered. I, I, ne I never asked. Yeah, but running six eighties, it man, it's fun. Man, oh, yeah, cars, I'm fun. sure. I, I never ever forget. Funny enough, seeing most of his old crew guys down there on the start line, hanging out, uh, watching the race in the pro Dutch team. Uh, Robert Houston. I never forget. I interviewed Robert years ago, years and years and years ago, and we were doing a segment for TV. And I said, "Why do you like it? What what is it about? You know, why have you chosen supercharged cars instead of nitrous cars or turbo cars or whatever?" And I'm going to take the swear word out, but he said just the noise yeah 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 i get that it's it's a thing of beauty it really is although i quite like i, like, I quite like that pro charger thing too you know they're similar but uh, so, you know, mm, yeah i'm quite liking that at the moment the flat hood idea is pretty good how the hell they get them in front of the the, the engines on top dragsters i still don't quite know but anyway <laughs> 681 goes 684 for nick good stays three mark bailey 15 Eight seven two breaks out by two hundredths of a second. Yeah, how do they fit pro chargers in front of? It's the car's a bit longer in the middle, isn't it? It's, it's the only way. I, to do I know, it. obviously, you've got to be. You've got to make it a bit longer. But there ain't going to be much room for it. No, anything, there's not, is there? No, there's not a lot of room. But they do, you know, they do make very specific mounting kits to do that thing on a dragster, so that it fits between the rails. And all that. Since it became a thing, I mean that's you know if I was if I if I had the money to go top dragster every weekend you know yeah. great but 
It looks like a fun way to go fast, and um, well, it's just as cutthroat as every other kind of racket racing, isn't it? Yeah. Well, it's 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 like it's very much like going bracket racing on the top math knocker, mm. you know. Which kind of it is. There's plenty of that yeah. going on in this class already. Yeah. So Kieran Ashley, and uh, he's down there in the slick tricks lane. We've already oh. sussed out that this car leaves much harder than it did before. But it's not running the mile an hour it did before, so it's going to be quite possibly a gearing change. Uh, going up against Pete Walters. I shall ask the question. I'll be honest, I think that's got to be what it is. It, look, it leaves like a bandit now. It never did before. No. It used to really, really just chug off the line. And then... Uh, well, well, not quite as quick off the line that time, now I said it. Anyway, Pete's long gone, looking for 760, go, 772. Kieran is out the throttle way before the finish line that time round. It did turn the tyres as well, that Pete. Scott Hauser, Callum Swinchat, two very excellent Purveyors of the art bracket racing. Do you know the only thing that does actually surprise me a lot of the time is that Callum isn't higher up in the points and stuff like that because that car is deadly consistent. Yeah. Uh, around about 880 there or thereabouts, 885. Um, yeah, the dialing this time is 93. That's probably weather related. It's maybe one of them. It's just one of those things. Maybe he's not in the right place in the car to be able to see the top end. Or, you know, he's not, he's not making the points on the rest there, maybe. You know? Because it is, as you said, the car's deadly. He drives really well. Yep. The only but thing, it, the only thing is, which I, I still think is a disadvantage in this type of racing, is that he's towards the slower end of ETs yeah. for the class. Yeah. Which always means al al almost every single race you're going to have, someone's closing in. Yeah. Somebody, so, somebody else is in charge at the top end. Exactly. And, and that's not what you want. Is no. It? no. Uh, however, the other lane, Scott Hauser. Seven thirty-five for Scotty. Thirty-seven and an eighty-six. What did I just say? Normally about an eighty-five. Anyway, uh, breakout unfortunately for Callum. Excellent pairing. So what we love about the European finals is international matchups, and we got those aplenty over the next few days. This is Spain versus France. In fact, they probably don't live a million miles away from each other, actually, because uh, Patrick Jabbar, the whole custom gang team, come down from the Rhone in, uh, down in the Rhone Alps, and uh, Angel Romero from Spain. Seven eight five for the door. Both door cars, idiot. Camaro and 691 with a poncho. Which looks for all the world like it used to be an IHRA Pro Stock car or thereabouts. Mm. It's got a very swoopy body on it. Very swoopy body. Colin's been remodeling the office and uh, deserves a round of applause. Thank you. <laughs> well done. That whole lot's going to go straight on the floor when Martin Hill runs, but it looks great for now. Looks good. <laughs> Giving yourself a job of holding onto all of it. Well done. More screens than you can shake a sticker. Uh, I yeah. have trouble looking at one. So, Angel Marrero is currently number 13. Patrick Dubois is 11. We have a 7.10. Little off pace that time. But Angel Romero is your number three qualifier. No wonder they're overjoyed with that. 7.85 with a 3 on a 7.85. If you're tuning in from Spain, your boy is number 3 qualifier so far in Super Pro. Fantastic effort. Well done. First time we've seen Billy Gain this weekend as well. The car's made its way back to the UK from 
He's little Swedish too. And Dave said to me, 760, 760, 760, all weekend, all day long. That's what they want to do. Well, they've got to get you. They've got to get the hang of it, haven't they? Got to get used to it. I do hope that clock. Well, that class is going to expand. There's going to be more yeah. cars in it. Um, I hope it expands to more events as well. Yeah. Being the other thing, because obviously it was a trial run with. Uh, I think it was three. It's a good. It's a good thing. But what I've got to say is, if we're doing that for dog cars, what we're going to do for drags? <laughs> well, the only the only thing that always the only only thing for me personally, this is my personal opinion, that does sad me a little is it is it takes a few cars out of other classes. So it's yeah. going to take other cars yeah. out of Super Pro. But the big bonus, which way outweighs that, is it brings a load of other cars in that yeah. wouldn't normally that would normally be at home that yeah. wouldn't normally be running. Uh, and creates a fantastic class. And as we know, at the own. moment, it's not running against Super Pro anyway, so that's not a... Yeah, exactly. It's, it's going to be great. Will it be a 760? It's a 775 at 173 to start the weekend. 853. Colin's going to be tempted now just to watch this and not out the window, aren't you? I think. This, this is the way this is going. We just black everything out and end up in a little cool space. Here. Yeah, something like that. That's a very funky monitor. Is that yours? Is that yours? Wow. <laughs> Fantastic. Soon about to be Daryl's if they're not careful. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. So, dual car against Drake. So, that is what is one, again, one of the fabulous things about Super Pro is the matchups. And again, France against Switzerland, Switzerland this time around. Right. Yeah, yeah, it's great, isn't it? Thomas and Natalie Haas have uh, been coming over here for a number of years. They're in Slick Tricks Lane with a Valiant 8.21. Had uh, some pretty good success, actually. I think at the Door Slammers this year, big bracket day one, I think they went to the final, wasn't it? They won it. Won it, beg your yeah, pardon. They won it. And then came back and qualified number one for the, the week. Later. Later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, taking on Fabien Dubois with the Milwaukee Tools Dragster. Um, they do race in France a lot. There's uh, various places they've got around the country. Uh, check out on Facebook the ATD Association Trophy Dragster. In my rubbish French. Um, all around, all around France. And there's a number of events as well that UK racers go over there. Uh, and join in as well because Clastras isn't that far from the ferry. Good looking run. Oh, six thou. Just six thousandths of a second. Thomas Hasso all the way up to number eight. 822 to seven. Number 21. Right, last car in class, I think, before we go to Junior Dragster. Although all I can see is a Junior funny car, just to um, <laughs> screw with you. It's all head of the lane. <laughs> <laughs> so, AC Bell with the Limpy Slug. Uh, am I right in thinking the other car has been sold? His dad's car has been sold. And um, that's why there's only one the of them here racing yeah. this weekend. I mean, I actually had that Cobra for years. Do we say if you talk about... Ashley? No, not, no, no. <laughs> the, not the Cobra. The other other Cobra. The other other Cobra. Oh, the other other Cobra. Was it, other other it was a Barracuda car. they had, wasn't it? Oh, that's well, that what, one. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's what AC Belt started out in. Right. Then he pinched this one. 871 yeah. with a uh. five. Number five. Only moves up one spot. Five thou off being perfect. Because at the main event, they'd swapped cars, didn't they? That, and then, that's the one. And then and the other car was for sale. So. Exactly that. So it will be Junior Directs to Q3. Yeah, I think Colin. we've got the two-seater to go before that, though. Yeah. <coughs> That's just uh, suddenly appeared in the pairing lanes. Mm. I'm not saying a word to you. No. 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 
Hey, Chris, okay, thank you changed. very much indeed for your help, as always. Though it has changed round, it is Junior Dragster. I thought the two-seater was going to jump in there. Just as you said that, the funny car, the, the Junior yeah. funny car roll around the corner. So perfect timing, mate. Just want to say a very big hi and good afternoon to um, Jenny Dale and Matt, who I'm sure are tuned in from work. Well, you are tuned in from work. You just messaged me, so I know you are. Anyway, I uh, hope we don't distract you too much, and we'll, we'll try not to make things sound too exciting. Um, however, they have a have a nasty habit of doing that on their own without us helping, really. All right, Lena Wolf with the uh, Junior Funny Car. Taylor. So both have got qualified numbers. Oh nine two and oh forty four for Lena. That's good out. I think yeah, Lena twenty two to fifteen. Jack drops a spot by virtue of the driver in the other lane. Doing better. Well, it is a tough crowd. It's oh five to get onto the front page, and this is only Q three. I love that shot. The one looking straight down the racetrack. Yeah. You can see. Did you get that moment? Because the one thing that when I started racing, I found really, really weird, although in a dragster, your bum's on the floor. When you look down the track, you can't actually see it. All you can see is heat haze. That's you yeah, get that? Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. I've never been down the track in a door car yet. Hint, hint. Well, I've only <laughs> ever been down the track in a door car. <laughs> ah. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, well, the thing with the dragster as well, it's really weird, is you're looking at everyone's kneecaps. Because you're that, you're, yeah. yeah. Your, your bum's about two inches off the ground. Right, 06 for Ellie May. I don't think that's going to help her, though. And this is Lola Bell's first run. Maybe. Uh, so she gets a number on the board. Just finish school for the day, possibly. That could be it. No, lunch break, and then get back to school this afternoon. <laughs> 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 yeah, what have you been doing in your lunch here? Yeah, right. Yeah, just put in a qualifier at the European finals, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, uh, Neve DV and Jake Cooper. Right, let's see how many you've got. 29 that have put numbers on the boards now. Uh, it's an all-run field. So if it's an all-run field and there's 34 cars, that effectively makes it a 64-car ladder, yeah. isn't it? Uh -huh. Goodness me. Yeah, it certainly does. That's a fair old few rounds. Hang on, have we had that before? Have we ever what, had an all-run field, all-run 64. 64? Yeah. I'm not sure we have. Uh, Might have done. Anyway, Jake Cooper uh, is up to 24. Neve Devi, no help. She went 0-2 red. Yeah, I don't think we... Someone's going to correct me if I'm wrong, because yeah. I normally am, but... Um, I have a feeling we must have done at some point. Yeah, it's must a, have what done. we mean is a, an all-run field where it's a 64-car ladder. ladder yeah. So you've got, normally, to, yeah. you've got to survive six rounds yeah. to, get, to get the trophy instead of five. I can't think of another class that is an all-run field. Because uh, obviously Pro ET, Super Pro, they would have cut-offs. They have a, you know, it has to be 50 cars. Mm. Super gas is on a postcard. <laughs> it's gas and comp from Junior Dragster, but I can't think of another one that no. would be. Maybe other sportsman classes, but not at these events. Yeah, yeah but all run 64, that's what we want to mean. Okay, right, Liam McDonald and uh, Tom Peters. Problem there for Tom, I think. 
Maybe assisted by Super Dave down there on the start line. If you want a man in your corner, Dave is the man for the job. It really is. I think it's just a... If he could unstick himself. <laughs> Uh, 05 for Tom, 0.11 for Liam. And uh, an 05 doesn't move Tom up at all, stays 13. All right, Kai Cooper, Daniel Weir. Daniel hoping to get a number on the board that will stick this time. Seven for Daniel. I don't think that's going to help Kai, is it, though? <laughs> uh, Kai. Uh, no, he, he, he's been razor sharp. He's 010 already, and they went 014. Um, Kai, if he can continue that form in eliminations, he is going to be one to watch out for. Okay, Luke Fulton down on the line with Teddy Howe against Freddie Taylor. The Taylors were one of those at the Silverstone Classic, weren't they, the other weekend? I think. Festival. Festival, sorry. Yeah, it was the Classic, it's just been rebranded, so uh, that was such a good weekend. Uh, it was, um, it opened a few people's eyes and it certainly opened a few people's ears. <laughs> it's uh, meant uh, to do. Drag racing is always brilliant. the most entertaining thing about yeah. any car show. Oh, they both went red, unfortunately. I think Teddy had almost released the brake before we were ready there, and I think that set Freddie off in a funny sort of way. Uh, yeah, so no help for either. I'll never forget a good wooded night when I was there one time. I think it was 19... When I first met you. Was that right? That's right, yeah. First met you at Goodwood. Sorry about I that. I was just a spectator. We still are. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's true. <laughs> that's very true. Yeah, it must be about 20 years ago. It is true. Well, we went in 2003, 2000, sorry, yeah. two, uh, 2002 and 2003. That's First right. year we were on, on the, the cricket, cricket pitch. pitch. Yeah. And the second year we were somewhere down there as well ish. Um, but yeah, they had um, like Andy Robinson doing burnouts with the Stude, uh, Michael Malgram with the Pro Stocker, and Kel Surprise, the drag racing stuff was voted most, most entertaining. entertaining. Yeah. I wonder why. Ray oh. Smith with an 04. Um, now, is it going to move her? 046. No, it doesn't. It keeps the number 16. It's very weird. I mean, you've probably got a few stories to tell as well, but it's always weird. I always find circuit racers' reactions to drag racing just so amusing. So amusing. I think, like, people, like Wayne Norman's one was fantastic, which was. Um, you know, the, the person, someone's, his favourite comment was someone said, what a waste. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, that is beaten by Rob and Pete Brown. Yeah. And uh, he said, this tweed walk past, I find this distasteful. <laughs> <laughs> one of my better ones. That was brilliant. One of my, one of my better ones at the Goodwoods was this bloke walked up to me. Red lights, both sides of the racetrack for Daniel Todd yeah. and Teddy Sullivan. Yeah, this bloke walked up to me at Goodwood. And he said... He's looking at the rear tyres and getting a poke, and he said, are they full of water? And I said, I thought he's going to be winding me up. I said, no. And he said, are you sure? I said, pretty sure. <laughs> and he said, well, what have they got in them then? I went, air. Yeah. And I really did think, honestly, it was like some bloke with a TV camera was going to jump out or something like that. And he went, oh, he said, well, why don't you put water in them? I said, <laughs> <laughs> it was one of those, honestly, it was one of those real give me strength moments. That was, it was great. Another one was, where do you race these? On a racetrack, not on the beach. No. I'm sure I've seen these on the beach. Really sure you haven't. <laughs> anyway, there we go. Probably uh, get confused with sand drag racing. Uh, poss or, you know, you do have some stuff on beaches in Wales. And that, that, but, you know, there are, there are that sort of thing. I, I get it, sort of. But anyway, 
Uh, so, Emily Moore and Damien Redshaw. Emily. Oh, Damien, please just get an A to B in. Well, he's got a reaction time, so he's yeah, actually he's qualified, qualified, isn't he? Yeah, he yeah. wants to get to the other end of the track under power. That's what they really want. That's much better. That's more like it. Almost identical reaction times. 3.08 in both lanes. But the main thing for Chris is, yeah, he's relieved on that one. Well done, gang. Good news. All right, next up then, young Mr. Wilcox. The second generation race is going down this time. I bet that's the most technical thing that Rob Loring has ever crewed on. Yeah. Or not. I'm, not th I'm thinking about the wrong Rob Loring, aren't I? Sorry. Um, <laughs> the Kestrel Lane. That's Eva Davis. That's Nick's little girl. And Andy Wilcox. With his boy Richard on the other lane. Well, Richard's going to move up a few spots here. Maybe three, yeah, 18 to 15, and Eva stays 14. Right, the younger of the Taylor lads. This is. Oh, no. Somebody stopped. Very unusual for Rick to actually stop on track. Well, that's just what you need in this yeah. weather. Well, he went uh, 73 Steve. miles an hour over the 8th and has stopped before the stripe, so uh, couldn't even coast. Mm. So just what you need this weather. Steve Taylor goes for a jog around the back to go and get started. Mm. Got to say a big up for the track crew here, though. It's uh, very, very warm out there. Uh, start line guys especially. Um, bizarrely, it's an easier day for them today because they're not wearing the full balaclavas and all the masks and everything for when the fuel cars come around. They're just going to get even hotter then. Uh, but uh, you will see the, uh, the start line crew uh, swap places quite a lot, actually, as uh, normally they have you know, a certain amount of time. Then they gonna have, need it's to. like a shift swap, isn't it? But I think they're doing that on a much more regular uh, basis tomorrow. I um, one of the things as well being strapped. Have you have you raced when it's really hot? Before? Yeah, yeah. It, it's it is uncomfortable, isn't it? Um, and the whole idea of like five or seven lay fire suits is to keep you safe in mm. fire, which is you know, which is great. Um, but on a really, I mean, I I, ra I ran a couple of times on in re on really really hot days. And when you get strapped in the car, and even if you're under an umbrella, you still sweat like mad. Oh, yeah, it's in just the relentless, the heat, though. And well, the problem, is, the problem is, especially strapped into a dragster, because you've got your arm restraints on and you strapped yourself, if you've got your arm restraints on properly, you can't do anything. Like, if you've got a bead of sweat running down your eye yeah. or your face, you can't reach no, it you because can, no. you can't put your... That's the whole idea. I mean, that's how you're supposed to be. So one day, I had the bright idea of asking my crew. I've got a, I had like a really bad itch. I had a bead of sweat that ran down the side of my eye. And I said, can you do me a favour? Can you scratch it? And I said, I'm not sticking my finger in there. I said, OK, well, go and get something and just do that like that. Mm. So I think they got my, at the end of one of the wrenches, went to put it in my helmet, just poked me in the eye, which is lovely. <laughs> 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 I certainly wasn't worried about the bead of sweat anymore, yeah. let's put it that way. So, um, Just looking at the live stream that yeah. everybody can see at home at the moment, you see the junior dragster being towed off by the quad, and you said about this earlier, yeah. look at that heat haze down there. And that, that, camera's, a good, that camera's a good That's 20 a start foot in the air there. as well. Yeah. Um, if, you lower that down to, if you lower that down to ground level, like where the drivers sit or anything yeah. like that, you seriously, you cannot see the, the, the track sort of just, it just shimmers. You can't really see... Um, where the blackness is, so to speak, and um, the track temperature. Not something, well, it is something we normally have to worry about, but on the other end of the scale in yeah. this country, i.e. it's not warm enough, um, we've got the opposite problem. It's very hot. But it does mean that we can race all day, all four days, and um, God willing, there won't be any weather yeah. interruptions at all. 
I've got to say it again, Box Lane and Harvey, Harvey, the whole gang uh, from Box Lane, Barney and the gang, uh, these images that are being broadcast around the world, free of charge, are just exemplary. Okay. Uh, you don't get this anywhere else, not like this. My, my kids free. have gone to school. Before, with, when they, before they come home, they have like five or ten minutes with something on TV. Yeah. They, they badger the teacher to stick this on before they come home. There's your start live shot, freshly painted by the Bods here at Santa Pod Raceway. Another fresh coat of blue paint. That will be peppered black. Uh, with uh, burnout rubber and tyre rubber and uh, hopefully not too many tyre tracks either. But uh, yeah, the place looking absolutely superb. There you go, straight down the track, looking at the wind turbines. They are rotating, but not by a huge amount. The wind has changed direction a little bit, but it is a glorious day here. Oh, one, two. Well, worth the wait for Max Taylor. Harry Ritchell's not going to improve. Max will. Yeah, he's going to go number six. Nicely done, Max. Just rearranging the tower. Sorry about that. <laughs> that was Colin's knicker elastic you heard snap there, folks. Nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> it was the ratchet strap going, wasn't it? <laughs> it was. That's how, his, that's how his stomach looks that much smaller. Yeah. It's like it's held in and it just let go. <laughs> <laughs> so Jacqueline Bartlett moving swiftly on as yeah, professionally as ever. Thank you. <laughs> no bother. Uh, Jacqueline Bartlett and Emmy Crumwell. Emmy, really, really good earlier. Double O nine. She's going to go some to get any better than that. Uh, Jacqueline, no slouch at an O one six. If you fancy doing what we're talking about, so we we keep talking about reaction time. If you just type into Google. Drag racing reaction time game, whatever it is, you can actually. You used to have to spend a lot of money getting a practice tree. You don't anymore. You can do it on your phone. You can do it on your computer. Whatever. I'll get a practice tree next week. You'll get a practice tree. Yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> but the difference is with your practice tree, you can sit in the car and do it, yeah. can't you? That's the big difference. Yeah. But yeah, it, you do it on your phone, and it isn't that going to be completely yeah. honest. It's not hugely difficult to get it pretty much bang on every time. But when you're sat in the car. It's very, very difficult. No, I found, um, uh, it, you know, when we go and do like presentations like Silverstone and things like that, you have a practice trade, you just get people to join in. And I think it's going to be a brilliant tool for talking things through with people. And uh, I had an offer of one and I just said, yeah, well, I'll have it. We'll, we'll sort it out later on. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I'll get that next weekend. Really happy about that. So Jacqueline Bartlett's taking on Miss. That's not, is it? Not my imagination. Harley Corsell uh, with his good buddy Thomas Kukabert going on the side of Lara Barley, who is your number one qualifier at the moment. That oh, was good. That was good. Both good. But I don't, well, Lara, we know he's not going to move from number one, but is Harley going to move up? No, he doesn't. He already had a 0.31 and now an 0.34. Right, Ethan, currently number 23. Ada, currently number 24. Now, Ada doing really well in the national championship. Uh, she's uh, in the third place at the moment. Super gas, the next class to come round after the juniors. Red light for Ada. And uh, Ethan, 095. Going to stay 23 and 24. Say where they were. 
So, Luke Muggridge and Mackenzie Love. Uh, now, Luke number two in the points and uh, Mackenzie number six coming into this event. But Luke is only number 10 qualifier at the moment. Still good, but Mackenzie number two. Yeah, look, we can get a tower tan. Didn't know you could get one of those, did you? Oh, double O2 red for McKenzie. He was trying so, so hard. But However, how about a double O7 for Luke Mugridge? Only he, number who's up to <laughs> number three. Only, only number only. three with a double O7. <laughs> That's five of them with double O lights now. So far. That's bizarre. We got more racers with double O's than they have O1s. Happy days. Right now, the two seater. <laughs> so, Paul Brown and passenger. Uh, now, I said it was going to be uh, Nathan Freak earlier on, but no, I think this is Nathan. It was Alan Whitbrook or Whitebrook earlier on. <laughs> so, if you fancy riding the two seater dragster, pop round and see the team. They are full up. Uh, for uh, today and Saturday and Sunday at the time of writing there was one spot left on Friday that may have gone now but uh, if you fancy going the back of the two-seater drags to put around and see the team even if they can't get you in this weekend they can possibly get you in at the national finals or whenever they run and uh, everybody that's been in it has said absolutely brilliant car can run into the sevens Knocking on the door of 170 miles an hour. And uh, obviously you get a photograph and a T-shirt and uh, a time certificate. You name it, you get the lot. Looking around once again from Paul, 8 11 at 166 miles an hour there. All right, we can move on now to Super Gas. First up then, Andy Dibley, going alongside Mark White. So the FX Vega taking on the Magic Rat for this one. At the moment, Chalky is number 13, Dibs is number 6. at the stripe is a 994 there for Andy Dibley. Andy Dibley moves up from six to three and Chalky goes 10.05 goes to number 10. John Giles with the Blitzkrieg Falcon uh, currently number two alongside Wayne Hiscock currently number eight two different ways of going super gas racing you'll have Wayne that will set off and then lift towards the stripe and he'll go across around about 100 mile an hour. Uh, John Giles will use a throttle stop and then accelerate hard to the line. He'll cross the line around about 140 odd mile an hour. And the 
Friday being whoever gets the closest. 9.98 there for Wayne Hiscock. 9.92 for John Giles. And a 42 mile an hour difference at the stripe. Your number one qualifier then, Andy Harrison with the brute for Sierra. 9.90 with a one. And he's taking on a Stuart Morris with the Morris boys. Camaro. Both of them with 02 lights, but as per usual, it's all about the ETs. 998 for Stuart, 992 for Andy. All right, Pete Cresswell and Pete Dodd. Pete uh, currently number 12 on a 10.13, Pete on a 10.70, but that was his checkout pass earlier on. A uh, new engine to him installed in the Metamorphosis Camaro. Uh, a few teething issues this morning, but uh, getting the job done now. Pete Feather in the throttle there. Goes 971 breakout. 10 flat there for Pete Cresswell. So he moves up from 12 to 10. Uh, Pete just that little bit too quick, but at least he is too quick. Good news there for Pete. Car starting to come round. Right, we move on to Street Eliminator. Qualifying session number three. Andy Bond in the first pairing this time, alongside Ricky Hale. Andy, number one qualifier at the moment, 7.35, has been over 200 miles an hour already this weekend. Ricky on a 10.72 with the postcode on wheels over there. Andy Bond taking it easy on this one, 9.43 at 1.03. And uh, Ricky just coasting across the line, 15.18 to just 59 miles an hour. All right, Al back with the Howland Hauler. Mercedes of Nick Hale. Well, Al with 11.62 at the moment. We know he can go quicker than that, but just wants everything to fall in his uh, right for him. Uh, got a huge amount of power on there. The car, or truck, I should say, just has a habit of blazing the tyres off the line, but once they get that thing to hook, it's going to fly. Better launch that time for our Williamson. Straight and true, straight down Broadway. What's the end result here? 8.45, 165. Yes, much, much better. It's coming round. Uh, 11.15, 122 there for Nick Hale. But a sigh of relief for Al and the team there. Up from number 12 to number 6. But the truck worked. It didn't blaze the tyres that time. Good, good news.
Right, this should be a quite a match-up if uh, both of these two cars perform as we know they can. Mark Todd with the GTO. And, of course, Tony Higgs with Triggers Room, the Capri. Two seven-second cars here. One's been over 200 mile an hour. The other one, i tell you what, is approaching it. Pretty much side by side all the way. That's an 810 at 184 miles an hour for Tony Higgs. 184. That is flying. 817 at 178 for Mark Todd. But Tony Higgs, uh, the speed. My goodness me. I think, uh, I'll stand corrected. I think that's the fastest he's ever been. I know he's been quicker on ET. But my goodness me, that is really picking up speed at the stripe. 184. All right, next up, Rob Carter with Percy the Passat. Um, no Mark Sheridan again. Uh, Mark Sheridan again for this session. So, last car in the class and currently in the number five spot with an 818. Was on the verge of blowing the tyres off there, but uh, Rob held that well. To an 8.17 at 170. Quickest of the day for Rob so far. That is working rather well now as uh, they pursue even quicker ETs with that car. Coming on very, very nicely indeed. Right, gonna be comp up next. So basically, uh, just to give you a, a rundown there, we've got Comp Eliminator coming up next to be followed by Super Comp. And um, because the day is going pretty well, but it's very warm out there, uh, we are actually gonna give the track crew and everybody a 15 minute breather just to get themselves watered and try and cool everybody down a bit. Um, and it would be a good chance for you spectators just to chill out just for a few moments. As I say, it is very, very warm out there. And uh, bear in mind the track crew have got absolutely no shelter from an unrel unrelenting heat out there. So, uh, yeah, that's what's going to be happening. So we're going to run the next two classes and then there will be a 15-minute break uh, just so that all of our track crew and uh, pretty much everybody else can... Uh, just get themselves uh, refreshed and get a drink of water, etc., etc. So, uh, uh, just giving you a bit of a heads up on that one. Just looking in the lanes, uh, you can see Dan Williams has made it down for his uh, first run in uh, in comp, and a few others, obviously, in the lanes as well. Phil Norman's down there. Uh, the Fiesta Rue is down there as well. Obviously, we've got the, the class that follows that down as well, Super Comp. Uh, they are lining up in the lanes. But you know, we're just gathering cars at the moment. It's only, uh, what, three cars in uh, Comp at the moment. A little bit of uh, sledding out there. Uh, well, sort of a bit of grooming of the track, I should say. Tell you what, Nitro FM 96.2. We have not many throwbacks to them at the moment, but uh, if they can take the airwaves over just for a few moments, uh, we will take it back. We continue commentary here at the European Finals, day one of four. He's enthusiastic, it's a good thing. 
So Wayne will click it now, trickle over. Well, they're both missed. Well, far off. High now. now. Oh, triple O two off the line for Mark. That was almost the money. Oh, and 92. Nice opening run for John Giles. Simon Ford's going, oh, damn, I wish I'd let him. So, Stu Morris is leading the championship. No numbers are available, and uh, yeah, so Pete's, Pete's got it. Uh, this is the checkout pass. Oh, that wasn't really a launch, was it, for that no. car? 97 and a 1070 at 128. Unfortunate crew member down there. No, Vic is in Curry T, just he to run in round one. Ten twenty four, ten thirteen. 13 uh, It looks like Vic clicked it a bit early as well. 110 is not what you'd normally expect. Yeah. This car's been around in super gas for 30 plus years, I think, actually. 960, 138. Uh, maybe you have to uh, adjust it a little bit more. Slowed it down well, just not quite. Because they're always here in Street Eliminator. Try their very, very best. Running in the tens more often than not. 1064, 1072. Tony Higgs, who's had an eventful 2023. Oh, look at Tony off the line. Wow. Rob Carr's making a good stab at it, though, till then. 814, 176, 919, 110. Uh, they were doing a lot of work on uh, Percy last night. Elliot. Oh, just blazed the tyres a little bit there. Had to give the gas a couple of stabs. Well, after all that, everyone giving it a little bit too much of anything in this Still first quarter goes session. Still 881. Yeah. With a pedal. With a pedal. Oh, oh that a tune up run by, looks for it. He's uh, back. <laughs> He's back. <laughs> 790179. Uh, welcome back, Mark Todd. What's he got for us? Bumps it in. A little bit loose on the back end. But that's nice and straight at the strike. 886, 164. Nice that, opener. That was really smooth and uneventful, yeah. and it would, don't they? <laughs> 881, 169 to open the account this weekend for. He only got back from the US Nationals yesterday afternoon and uh, needed to recover a bit. He was here early this morning, but they all needed to uh, get everything set up. So, uh, yeah, first run of the day for Dan. Going alongside Phil Norman with the Beetle. Now, uh, if you lot out there think it's warm today, Dan probably thinks we've got the air conditioning on outside by comparison. Uh, <laughs> Indy, yeah. last, Indy last weekend was murderously hot. Yeah. Uh, it was a lot hotter than this. But the humidity at that yeah. time of year in that, that part of the world is... I, I've been... You've been to here, haven't you? They're, all the tourists are there. Look, Spencer and Louis, they went out as well. Had a real good time. Come on, Beautiful Phil. Beautiful launch there for Dan. Eleven twenty-five Gives him a 10.62. In this wow. weather... For a normally aspirated car, that's fantastic. That is one of the quickest runs that car's ever done. Is that right? Yeah. Well, even, uh, again, these are not the conditions we well, used to. Well, it's normally 10.8, but 10.62. Wow. So let's hope for a nice, good, clean run this time for Chris Todd with Phoebe the Fiesta. Not 
sounding happy at all. Like Sounds that. like firework frenzy going up the track there, doesn't it? It's uh, 11.33, 110. Popping and banging all the way. Chris is a smart guy. He'll get that sussed. Oh, no, right. Matty Matt, Davidson. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. Matty Davidson uh, with the Honda. Now, none of the front-wheel drive gang have been anywhere near what they can run. And we haven't seen Ahmed today, have we? Uh, not yet. No. Uh, we haven't seen Luke either. Well, we have seen Luke walking around, but uh, we haven't seen him on track yet. Good looking back off. Wow, 154 at the stripe, 1040. Yeah, just get the start sorted out. One of the issues that the front wheel drive boys and girls have is they're not used to the start line being quite as grippy as yeah. it is at these events. Yeah, they almost need the wheel speed, really, don't they? Yeah, they do, to an extent. All right, Simon Crowley with the trailer queen. Yeah, nice reverse time, back into the burnout box. the tractor queen as opposed to yeah. the trailer queen. Yeah, well, Simon's heading back to the pits. I'm not quite sure what uh, might happen there. And and that is the end of comp. Yeah, not many cars uh, at all. Well, the thing is, it's kind of a self-perpetuating issue on days like today yeah. when it's really hot, is that the turnarounds are quite quick anyway, but then less and less people run in the rounds because they need to cool their yeah. cars down, which makes each round of racing shorter, which means it, we get through it even yeah, quicker. Yeah. Which right. is why, after this session... Go on. Yeah, a uh, 15 minute um, track break uh, so that uh, everybody can cool down. Yeah, racers, marshals, probably commentators too if we have to. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Steve Field with the Black Pig 2. Legend that is Stu Doiny. Multiple champion in Super Comp and Super Gas. Back with the Roadster. And uh, still mixing it up. I'd say still killing it, to be honest with yeah. you. It's like, um, <laughs> you know, same blow. Different car, same bloke, really. Same bloke, same problems for all the other racers. That's it. The other <laughs> thing as well, though, Stu Morris is right, is leading in Super Gas. Stu's first year back as well. Yeah, it is. is. Oh, 007. <laughs> Off the line for Stu. See if you're going to run and hide with an 8.55. <laughs> uh, Stu Doiny, 9.07. Not quite the number he wanted to run, but the light was bang on. we still got the perfect awards. Available. 50 quid for the perfect light from Kath and Tig and the Bad Habit Racing Team in conjunction, of course, with Eurodragster.com. And the ET, the perfect ET, Andy Hadfield and the Twister Racing Team. In conjunction with Eurodragster, once again, 50 quid this weekend for the first person to run a perfect ET. Leah Kellett with the Dolly Daydream Dragster. She is your number one qualifier at the moment with an 8.93. Like to knock that three off if she could. I still can't get my head around. This is just day one of four. We've got three, what, three more days. This is oh, brilliant. <laughs> be interesting to see how everybody approaches it, knowing. Again, that's one of the reasons why there's a few cars missing in each yeah. session. It's because they know they're going to get all their runs, other than it being quite warm. Yeah.
Throttle stop releases and off Leah goes to 175 mile an hour ish. But it's all about the ET. Oh, 889 with a nine. Oh. It was 175 mile an hour, but 8.8996. Four ten thousands. So if she'd have stayed oh. a microcosm shallower, that would have been, well, yeah. anyway, if Spots and Woods. Oh. It's very impressive to get that, that close, let's face it. Can't miss that message now, can you? <laughs> wow, <laughs> yeah. Uh, can we have Pro ET into the pairing lanes, please? Pro ET into the pairing lanes. This is Steve Hudson going alongside Paul Hudson. As we said before, no relation. Uh, 902 and an 888, I think, so far. Paul Hudson's dragster has a big speed. There we go again. Breakout for both. 86, 87. Okay, folks, 15 minute break. Uh, we have empty lanes only because, only because we're going to give our marshals, all of our track staff, a bit of a rest. I mean, uh, it's hard work sitting up there in a grandstand or on the banking, but imagine what being uh, in a fire suit ready to go is like, or in trousers like yeah. even Dave, uh, or everybody up the top end past the finish line, the whole turnout crew and all of the turnoffs. Uh, we're going to give them a break for a little while, trying to get them to cool down. Not sure exactly sure how they're going to cool down is the only thing. Uh, that's true. Um, yes. Have we got a, got money in petty cash for paddling pool? Uh, no, I think oh. what we should do is to send some cars with air conditioning around them, get everybody to sit in them with the air con on I, top. One of, my, <laughs> one of my abiding memories of Hockenheim was when it, it, it was 41 degrees in 2015. It was horrific. And we were doing inter winners' interviews at the top end. And we sat in the car the whole time until the car came around the corner for me to interview, got out, did the interview, straight back in the car. That'll do. Yeah. Quite enough. Hard work. Right. Uh, Nitro FM. Uh, I can have a proper couple of two or three tunes this time round as we go for a 15 minute break. Uh, Nitro FM are going to take over the airwaves. And we will see you in a bit. I think he's going to... Uh, I think he's going to take number one here. Yeah, you got it. 7.35. Not quite as quick as I thought it was going to be. 202. <laughs> um, and not quite as fast as Mark Sheridan either, actually. But uh, off and on with that beautiful beat. Oh, look at that for Kev Jenkins. Did I say problems? 117.60 foot. That'll be a 7.78. 177 miles an hour. Back in the right direction. Nicely done. Bill Norman starts out his day weekend with a 1375. Well. That's not the 60 foot he was looking for though, I don't think. Well it's certainly not the run that Chris wanted, but Terry moving around his lane goes 913. Hundred, That'll do. 162 miles an hour. New car. Yeah. 
great looking run for Rob. Clicks it before the finish line and still goes 8.20, only 133. Problems for Manny Davidson though, 13.96. Well, Steve taking the long way round to a 9.36, but, uh, yeah, moving around. I did that before, it's because he looks like him. <laughs> uh, against Steve Hudson. 08 lights a pair, and 8.97 plays 9.06, so Richard slightly better on that one. Fabian's car did not shift for a long time then. 886 and 961 for the front engine car. Correct. My, my thoughts are he will stick to this, but we shall see. Cars a 45, gets a 46. Four. Stays number four, though. No movement. Uh, Marie Mill, been on there two years and he'd only just spotted it. Good light, though. 017. about the ETs though, 994, 10.43 breakout for Laura, no help. And uh, John, that's his uh, first score on the board at 9.90. Oh, John Turner off the line, double oh one. That was a clue. And a 9.42. Moves John up from 28 to 16, Simon. Double O two off the line for Simon. They are trying to get that perfect reaction time money. Nine O three breakout for Simon, but Dan Fulton from thirty five to number six goes ten fourteen on a ten. So Warren Donning in the nine O seven hands a ten ninety nine. Nine O seven hands a ten twelve for Warren. 82 big break out there for hands so no help for either they stay put warren seven hands 36. and as if i may Without the Alfie. Alfie? Yeah, because I don't think we can hear it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Alfie gets back, bump back. Yes. Have you noticed Vic's shift light never goes out? <laughs> Have you not noticed? <laughs> oh! Number one, though, for Simon Rickwood. Yeah. 983 with a four. Uh, Vic Parsons just misses number one. Ryan moves up 23 to 13. Well, that's it. Oh, Jess, very easy to get the job done. 28. Oh, Dougie breaks out by less than a hundredth. So he stays 20. It must be so nice to have two cars at home to choose from as well. 28 too quick, 84. Guess what? Too quick. <laughs> it was, you know, this is my fault because I said they're going to have a better. And uh, got a feeling he'll be looking down on us this weekend and uh, wishing everybody a good time. But uh, 80 still in our thoughts. He would be in his element on a day like today. Oh, yeah, most definitely. Tom Kay up to 20. Yeah, we still miss him. Um, but yeah, four years ago. Number 23. Ozzy's not in at the moment. With the Camaro. Problems for Will Clark. 294. That, uh, we'll move Ozzy up a little bit. To number 14. And Morning Rock, of course. Mm -hmm. 
974 for John Bean. And Darren Huxley goes 1161. John moves up one spot. And uh, Darren moves from 33 to 26. Well, since Tom's car's added the wheelie bars, it's no fun anymore. I'm just kidding, they did it for a reason. 924, 957 for Stevie Gates is your new number one qualifier. One thousandth of a second away from being. Perfect. Eight ninety eight, nine seventy two. Dave Rudd goes to number ten. Uh, Paul Marston obviously breaks out. Five zero zero. So that's See, half top the sixteen. Yeah. Uh, the bump spot is rather soft at the moment. Point two eight, but that's going to change. Dave Cherry currently number eight. Now number seven. That's a mess. Still mad, isn't it? Uh, Junior Dragster, please, into the lanes. Junior Dragster into the pairing lanes. Colin Morris with a double 07 on the tree. Ron Bartlett goes 838 for the number eight spot. Colin Morris. Yeah, he's uh, he's pulled out a big lead in the championship. Which in something this competitive is almost impossible to do. Uh, Tom looking break 44. Oh, 844 with the one, your new number one qualifier. Other side of the racetrack as well, though. Lee Huxley, 893 with the one on an 892. Only good enough for number. <laughs> so, Kieran Ashley and Pete Brown. 843 for Pete, up to number 14. on a track you don't know as well. That's the most boring launch I've ever seen Colin do. <laughs> 741, 771 though. 182 for Colin. Boring it was not. Fast the top end. Sometimes... It's probably the yeah. same, isn't it? You're, you're not losing that many mile an hour from the top end. Actually, it clicks back in at 330, doesn't yeah. it? About 60. Oh, 769 with an 8. Alan did well only moves up two spots, would you believe? 892 for Joe stays put at number seven. Not that that matters in bracket racing. They can run both sides. Predictably, Jack's out in front with the 780 and an 895. Callum goes to nine. Jack goes to 11. Right. Thomas with a 821.
Now, Susie McClure licensed yesterday. She's probably screaming her head off now. She's now going, I want more, I want more. And here come the shoots. 799, 167 for Paul Brown and Alison Andrew. That is the flattest launch I've ever seen for Ron. Yeah, 001 for Lee. Off the line. 8.33 and 8.94. That is the flattest, most tame launch I've ever seen yeah. for Ron. Seven forty two for Daniel. Number two at the moment, Jack Brewster rolls it through with a eight ninety four, one twenty five the car. Made that characteristic. That was a lot harder launch. My goodness me for Kieran. That really was. That's gonna be a lot quicker than seven ninety two. Well, a bit quicker. Yeah, seven ninety six sixty foot, one eleven. Yeah. Well, but it didn't run the speed of team. Well, wiggle at 3.30 for Colin. And then 8.40 at 162. Uh, 8.94 for Callum. On an 85, that'll be number seven. Let's hope he has a fun time and brings friends. Thomas goes 8.19, tenth per second off. Bjorn goes 8.94, and he's currently number six. Okay, one, so hope... Oh, isn't that? It's 10 or 15 minutes, they're going to be back to where they were. Good very, run for the very door warm car. day out there. 6.96 at 203 miles an hour. They don't look too upset with weight. So we're on with Pro ETQ number four. We've got this one and one more to go. Yeah. Boy, it's warm, isn't it? <laughs> I haven't noticed. I've been too busy sweating. <laughs> sweating for England. So Marie Mills. God, I'll mean, I tell you what, you wouldn't want to be working, doing a clutch on a fuel car in this weather, would you? And that's what they do in the States all the time. Like oh, this. no. Deary me. Simon Fulton in the other lane with the Blitzkrieg Falcon. So we're looking for 10.50. Simon, 9.90. Trying to dial the car in for gas at the same time. Oh, 71.987. No movements. Well, those of you tuning into the live stream, welcome back. And uh, Susie McClure finally makes her debut in uh, Pro ET. And Dougie taking time out. So Dougie not running in this session. So it will be Susie in this one. So, so he just got a license yesterday, yeah? Yes. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, she was at testing the car earlier in the year, taking on Daniel Fulton. Perfect time as well to wish someone a happy birthday. Yeah, Chloe Wilkins, the former driver of this car. Many, many happy returns indeed to Chloe. And uh, I know she's uh, here this weekend. Uh, happy birthday. So Dan Fulton darling in a 10.19. Uh, Susie, a 11.19. Oh, 10.30 uh, for Dan, no help for him, he's going to stay number 11. And Susie coasting through with a 14.29 at 92. So she's 37 at the moment. I've got a number on the board. Chris Newsom and Mason Griffiths. 
you know what? Looking at that shot of Mason Griffiths there, those uh, eye strips across the top of visors become more and more important as the yes. day goes on, don't they? So 953, 906, Mason's currently number four. Chris isn't in. He is now 953 with a nine will be your new number six qualifier. Mason just four hundredths of a second off. No improvement for him, but well done from Chris to Chris Newsom. See how tight things are gonna be. I was gonna say we've got one more session today after this. Dave Fulton, Harley J. Derby. Go on, go. Right, uh, Paul Brown's message in uh, from the two-seater team. Uh, they are now fully booked for the weekend. Uh, they're currently in the lanes, ready with another passenger, but they are now fully booked for the weekend. Harley J. Derby with the pickup. 9.19. That is significantly dialed back, actually. It is. Uh, day four, 9.47. Fifty-two thirty-one. No one moves. All right, Dave Crowhurst, Dan Page, your next pair. Uh, Dave's on the bump at the moment. Dan, four places behind him. As I say, it is early days. Day one of four. That's how early it is. Could it be what, day one of ten? <laughs> That'd be great. Do you know what? It's, this, this reminds me always of going to somewhere like, like when we used to go to Mantorf in the summer. We could never get there early enough and leave late enough. We just wanted to soak it all in for as long as possible. And the great thing about it is it's such a great escape from the outside world because yeah. you don't have to do anything else, think about anything else. Wonderful. So Dan Page off the line first. That looks a bit more like it. Thirty-three and ten twenty-seven. Still a little way off for Dan and Chalk with the Vega. Dave Crowhurst though moves up to number twenty-one with that one, so it makes him a safer. Say. Well, the wind turbines are doing a pathetic effort of trying to rotate at the moment. But, it was because uh, the wind stopped. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that breeze that we had, which was quite nice. Ain't now. Yeah. No. Simon Rickward, Kestrel Lane, 983. I think the original number one qualifier, Nick Mugridge, who's now down to number three. 10 15. Ninety-three and a ten fifteen with an eight for Nick Muggeridge doesn't improve. Well they are two and three, so <laughs> the only places I can go is one and two. <laughs> Dead on with an eight doesn't improve. All right, Dave Rudd, Ryan Garrett. Thirteen and fourteen at the moment on the qualified order. Excellent match up again. So Mr. Qualifying himself, Dave Rudd is currently number thirteen. See if he can run that 972 this time. It's like Ryan's having a lot of fun again with the dart. 93 and. That 997 for Dave Rudd. 72. Pretty sure. I'm dialing 97 he ran, yeah. Yeah, that's somewhat off his usual pace, actually. That's because I called him Mr. Qualifying. That's what's done it. <laughs> so, Brett Featherson and Darren Huxley. Good looking run for Brett. He's currently number eight. Stays number eight. Darren stays 20. So 
Yeah, knocking on the door. 30 degrees out there at the moment. As it will be every day till Tandor. next week. Yeah. <laughs> so, Paul Marston and Warren Watts. Pretty evenly matched, actually, on the track. 895 for Grumpy's Dodge. Oh, this is the run where Warren goes 907, because he'd been on 907 all day long. He's uh, taking it to 911 this time. Uh, let's see. Double O one for Mr. Marston. Head Master Marston. Nine flat and a nine thirty one. Paul Marston doesn't move. So John Bean and Simon Innis, your next pair. Nine seventy-two for John Bean. He's currently number twenty-six. Simon Innes is uh, probably safe at number nine, but they'll try and get safer. <laughs> We're oh so close to already having the top ten double O. Nine seventy-seven for John Bean stays twenty-six. Simon Innes with the ten seventy-eight under seventy-five stays at. Number nine, no improvement. I don't think anyone's hardly improved this session. John Dalrymple with the door car. Or the door Willis. And Liz Malcolm with the little Ford Crossflow in the dragster. Ten flat for John Dalrymple. Goes up to number 12. Bumps Liz back one spot. Liz goes 11 flat. Well done to John. I was just saying that not many people have improved. It doesn't mean someone hasn't. Tom K with the black belt and Ronnie Mercer with Annie the Anglia. Ronnie Mercer, number 24 at the moment. Uh, Tom Kay's actually on the bump. He's 32 right now. Let's check out where that is. Let's have a look. Um, so Tom Kay is 0 0.10 off his dialing. Loads of room for improvement there. So anything starting with a 10-1. We'll move him off the bump. He doesn't move. Nor does Ronnie. One more session today, a couple tomorrow. Right, very quick call out actually before the next pair. Rob Slater from Street Eliminator has been in touch. Has anybody got a MIG welder on site, please? Uh, they broke our front clip mount brackets. They need one, so that's Rob and Trudy Slater in Street Eliminator pits after a MIG welder. All right, Mark Huxley did message me to say two of the rarest Corollas you'll ever see, and they match up together for this one. One looking distinctly smaller than the other, which is bizarre, isn't uh, it? Yeah. Considering they were probably the same size. I think it's an illusion, actually. Uh, oh, no, actually, I would have said Marks is fractionally smaller. Narrower. If you look at the window size as well. Yeah. So Alfie looking for a 901. Gets a 905, a 994, and a 987. Uh, well, they both move up, actually. Alfie up to 17 from 19. And Lee, sorry, a mark from 33 up to 28. Brilliant camera work allows you to see pretty much what Lee Morris sees at the moment with the Jaguar E-Type. Uh, Don't quite go for a ride. <laughs> in the passenger seat, yeah, there we go. I like it. 
Uh, Alongside Will Clark, who's been nowhere near his usual form, he's not in the top 32 Oh, well, neither yet. of them are. Wow, neither. Yeah, but Lee Morris is used to that. He wins the event when that happens. Yeah. for Will. Goes 10.02 on a 10 flat, but Lee Morris still not qualified. He's still 36. Points leader not qualified. He did that earlier in the year, though, didn't he? Yeah. Not duly worried at the moment. This is only Q4 of nine. <laughs> All right. Next up, Dave Cherritt, Aussie Brown. Both in the show at the moment. Dave number 10, Aussie number 21. Let's have a look. See... Uh, 04 to 20. Field spread at the moment is 08. So both these two quite safely in. Der Der Dave a lot more safe than Aussie currently. 79 and a 91. They stay put. Charger of Tom Watkins up next. Uh, currently in the number 30 spot. That was a 9-10. Been some kind of change going with this car because it does not leave. Look. No, it doesn't. Like it used to. Sorry. It does leave hard, but it doesn't leave quite like it used to. Result was a 9-34, 147 miles there. So he's going to stay number 30. So, Dill's going to have a hard job to improve. Can Amy improve? She does, I think. Yeah, all the way up to number eight for Amy Watkins. That is the end of Pro ET qualifying. And the screen's moved before I can move to. <laughs> right, it's two-seater dragster time. Paul Brown, obviously, is your driver. And the passenger is Mike Halsey from Essex, a regular visitor to Santa Pod. Um, he used a 50th birthday. Santa Pod voucher got for his for a present. Now we go in the two-seater dragster. But as I say, uh, all of the passenger slots for the two-seater dragster are now taken for the weekend. But uh, fancy having a go in the future? Go and have a word with the team, and uh, they'll explain it all to you. There's our passenger, big thumbs up. Might not push your head back, put the visor down and uh, get uh, double value for your lunch. Possibly even with a bit of breakfast thrown in as well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I did once do that. Nice. Yeah, you didn't want to see it. <laughs> <laughs> with the crash helmet on, yeah. it can't be yeah. great. No, well, I had to... I had to yeah, oh, that, that makes it perfectly in the, okay. In the then. balaclava on. <laughs> but look, luckily I had the spare balaclava. So Paul Brown is swinging to the distance with an 804 at 166 miles an hour. 
Well, we do have a chat with Alice and Andrew's had that passenger drive first pass this morning. Absolutely loved it. Don't think she'll be doing right. it again. Really? But uh, she's got the, the, the slip. You know, they, they give you the certificate. She's yeah. got that on the wall in the, uh, the hygiene area. And uh, the T-shirt and the actual timing slip itself. Very happy to be. And really a big cool smile. So, obviously. Yeah, a big smile. So, Super Pro Q4. Four. It is four, isn't it? I think. Oh. Uh, Joe Kelly and Colin <laughs> So Joe looking for 890, Colin uh, 864. I guess we better explain what Joe's doing again because I, I did have somebody asked me the, to ask the question while I was in the pits. So I we uh, explain for everyone so, here. Go on. So they're, they're running the car still in Super Comp Trim um, because it does have an advantage of being... If they, if they dial 890, it will very often be the slower car in terms of ET. Yep. But it will probably be the quicker car in many cases at the top end. Faster. Faster car. Yeah. yeah. So it will... It should create an advantage in rest. So even though the car in the other lane will be quicker, it won't necessarily be faster at the, at the finish line. Yes. So the closing speed won't be anything like. 8.65 for the Morris boys. That will take them up to number eight breakout for Joe Kellett. 8.88 with a five. So he gets all the advantage of leaving first. However. Leaving second. Yeah, leaving first. Yeah, all the advantage of, the advantage of leaving the first. Yeah. yeah. But the advantage of probably coming back on a lot of cars at the top end. So Bjorn Holtberg still having his own personal burnout contest and we're not going to stop him. <laughs> yeah, so in many cases, Joe will leave the line first, somebody else will pass him, and then he'll catch him back at the top end. And have control. Fun way to race. Yeah. Up against Mrs. Brown's boys, the real Mrs. Brown's boys, not the stuff you see on TV. That was the polite version. Um, it's Pete in there this weekend. 8.39. They went 8.34 earlier today, which I think was their personal best. The more I see slingshots doing this, you know, the more I, I have a... Yeah. <laughs> you like the idea of it? I don't, I, I don't like the idea of sitting there. Yeah. Quite. But I, I, I do like the idea of... Yeah. The engine in front, and just, you know. I love the idea of just looking between two ingesting stacks or having a blow yeah. sat in your face. I yeah. like that. I do like yeah, that yeah. bit. As long as it's sat looking at you in the face as opposed to in your face. So our friend from Norway going to try and run 899. He's currently number 19 on the charts. Pete Brown, 23. 38 with a one. Just misses. However... Bjorn Holberg goes up to number eight, just a hundredth of a second off. And a low hundredth at that. Very good. I think so, it's 14 thousand. Colin Miller. Uh, currently number 22, he's been in the 7.7 seven so far. Going to try and uh, tickle it into the 760s, which will become a more and more popular number if your car has doors on. Uh, taking on AC Bell. With the, uh, the very successful Pontiac. That one. Car that looks for all the world like it was a pro stocker, I'm pretty sure it was. I still haven't got around to asking which one. Yeah, I don't know quite where it it was from Scandinavia. Nice straight looking run for Colin. 764. Chipping away at that magic 760 number. That takes him to the number 17 spot. A breakout for AC Bell. The not very limpy slug broke out by three. <laughs> Tenths of a second. Not three seconds, three tenths of a second. Basically, that's as good as half an hour in bracket racing, isn't it, really? Yeah. Mm, it is. Well, a couple of hundreds is half an hour in bracket racing. In racing, you'd have been looking. You didn't know. Yeah, you didn't know. 
that's that's way quicker than that car normally goes. Yeah. Anyway, we have Callum Swinchat next, the King's Topolino. Even though that that car's probably newer than the one in the other lane, would you believe? Just the style is older. Uh, taking on the Tiger Tina of Darren Pear. <laughs> 7.80 with the nitrous switched on in the Slick Tricks line. Softer, straighter launch for Darren Pear at that time. And a 794 at 175 is his reward. 897 for Callum. Stays 20. Darren actually moves up to the number 25 spot with that one. So the car in the Slick Tricks lane is the twin to the car that you used to drive and won a championship yes. with in yeah. Super Pro. Am it, I right in thinking with it's the, the twin, engine in it? It's the twin chassis, but it's the engine that I won the championship with. Cool. Yeah. So in the non-creepiest way possible, there's a bit of you in that car. There's a bit of that way. <laughs> Try not to leave bits behind as I can go. Taking on Mark Bailey with the uh, the big Barracuda. Just over a second difference between the two of them. 8.72 and 8.62. So Matt Peters is number six. Mark Bailey at the moment. Minutes 19. Matt is predicted to be long gone to a 63 with a 9. That's not going to help. Mark Bailey with an 876 on a 72. Four hundredths off and he stays put at number 19. Mm. Tough crowd already. Halfway through day one. Matt there less, less than 200 off and can't yeah. better his sixth. That is what it is, isn't it? we're in the middle of day one. So, Pete Walters, uh, room for improvement there. He's 24. Alan Dibwell, only, only, number 11, which for him, he's still very good, just not quite as good. Now, the advantage of qualifying a bit lower down, provided you're in the top 16, is you get a lower seeded car in round one. Well, you want to be in the... You, you're looking at how the points work out. That's, that's how you've got... And it's the only way you can do it. You can do the... the can, I get, can I hit those top four or five and be in those points? Mm. Or can I not quite think I can get there and actually be better off and, Racing make, the, somebody, and yeah. make the round win in round one. Very even numbers on the board is what they're looking for. 69 with a 5 and 75 with a 0. Pete Walters actually moves up to number 17. Alan did well. Guess what? 200 of a second off stays put. Number 11. He's still going to be kidder on race day. So, a wonderful international flavour for the biggest race, biggest European race we have here at Santa Pod. Angel Romero from Spain with the car that looks for all the world, like a Pro Mod. Um, 
in the Kestrel Lane 785. He is your current number three qualifier. Uh, taking on Fabien Dubois for the Custom Gang. Sponsored by Milwaukee from the Rhone Alps. 718 for Fabian. Yeah, with the car that looks everything like a top tractor. It is possibly good it is. <laughs> and one of the two American race car chassis that they own. Yeah, I think both these cars built in the US actually. Yeah. Well, they both go red by 03. Uh, it looks like Mr. Dewar's out the throttle. 785 with a two. Angel Romero backs up. He's 785 <laughs> with a three from earlier, but Stay does not three. move. Stays number three. Certainly making that long trip from Spain worthwhile. Again, if you're watching it from Spain. Again, if you're watching him from Spain, uh, it's so great to have Angel here. And um, please leave us a mention in the comments, even in Spanish if you like. That's the whole idea of European drag racing is uh, it's international and it's a lot of fun. And this one is Great Britain against France. Google Translate wax wonders. <laughs> Sometimes it gets it slightly wrong, though, but yes, I agree. That's, that's part of the fun. Hey, look, Google Translate saved my life owning a Japanese <laughs> imported car. I now know where every silly little sticker is around it, <laughs> if you know what I mean. It's great. So anything pops up on the dashboard and I go, uh, <laughs> I, can just, um, I can just point my phone at it with Google Translate and, hey, presto, I know the car's telling me not to reverse over that thing I'm reversing over or whatever it might be. Does that happen often? It's happened. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing is, is when the Japanese lady talks to me, I haven't got that, I've no clue that. No. Uh, da, 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 no. Whatever that is. I just say, when the kids are in the car, I just say, that's, that's look, she's actually phoned in from Japan to tell you to be quiet. Pack it in. <laughs> right. 741 and 692 for the door car. Uh, Daniel Giles is currently number two, hundredth of a second off. No, thousandth of a second off, sorry. Not a hundredth. Patrick's car does not look like it's running as cleanly as it did earlier today. That won't be a 692. There we go. 731. Still 201 miles an hour. Look at that for Daniel Giles. 741.9 on a 741. And stop me if you heard this before. Does not improve. And he was 001 red. Good, we have super gas into the lanes, please. Q4. Super gas, please, into the bearing lanes. Q4. Thank you. So, Jack Brewster with the just mustard. So Jack Brewster going to be dialing, I think, around about 770. Slick Tricks Lane, 8.30 for the young, handsome, and owes me a beer, Mark Russell. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, 770 is what he's looking for. Sorry, Michael. Mark, back, back from a very good weekend at Hockenheim as well. Apart from the final, but I mean, it, what the, the car was taking, a, it, it was heading for the wall. And, and I felt really sorry for him because he knew he was going to have to lift at some point. But great weekend for them. Well, getting all the way to the final as well is always a good thing. Yeah. 
No, he does an amazing driving job in the final, so. Well, Mark is long gone. 870 at 152, that's odd. Uh, Jack Brewster, 1118, the car back to its old yeah. wicked ways of pulling left. <laughs> so, Billy Gain, been out racing in Scandinavia, ran two uh, Pro Street events in the class, sorry, of Pro Street. Uh, one at Drag Revival at Mantle Park, still one of my favourite racetracks on the planet. And uh, one at Tiep Arena. I don't think it's just yours. I think, yes. I think there's a thing there. I think we all love Mantle. It's where it is. It's how many memories it brings back. Yep. First, first foreign drag race I ever went to in 1985 was at Mantle Park. And uh, yeah, it's it, it's an amazing place. It's nicely laid out. It's got some lovely places up the road. In fact, I remember te yeah, I remember mentioning to you, and we ended up in the same restaurant in Berg, which is yeah, by the yeah, because you you mentioned the, the, mentioned the, the, it. There's yeah. this restaurant at Berg. So yeah, it's lovely. We all turned up together. It's by it's <laughs> on the, it's on the Gotter Canal, and it's where the uh, where the locks are. And it's fan fantastic to sit there, have your dinner, and watch people struggle getting their boats up the locks. Yep. Scott Hauser, 740, 7.76 that time for Billy Gain. Uh, stays 13 for Scott and stays 26 for Billy. Anyway, yeah. yeah uh, Billy had a great time out there. He did, did really well. quite clearly. And unlike me, he probably... <laughs> what I find highly amusing, and in a, great, in a really good way as well, is that Billy and, and, and like Ron Bartlett as well, they've been running their cars just nice and steadily, not running it too hard, running in the low eights there or thereabouts, very consistently bracket racing, perfectly happy to do it. Yeah. And then a new class comes along where they can run a bit quicker and they put the nitrous on it and go, ooh, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> That's well, more fun. That was the conversation I had with Ron earlier. Yeah. That, that, ooh, he likes that. And, and now we don't know how much he likes not running with the nitrous and that that's the problem it seems a little bit it's one of those pandora's box things once yeah. you've done it it's it, somewhat sedate it, he says yeah it's very much the same as you know if you run an alky car you run a nitro car it's kind of like mm, that, that's kind of it really so thomas has 822 darling slowed up considerably not for bob doyle though at an 850 823 and a 920 for bob where did that go Probably as confused as we are. Um, so, Thomas Hass stays 10. Bob Doyle stays 27. So 920 for Bob Doyle was, was as slow as the, as the 850 was fast. Before, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, Chris, thank you very much as always. No problem. And uh, thank you for taking your time to uh, go and talk to people as well. Uh, Especially in one. trousers. That's um, I Yeah, I, I need shorts now. It's, it's time for shorts. I expect... Well, maybe not. Um, well, yeah, nobody <laughs> wants to see, really. I'll tell you what, the best thing you can do is go find some shade and send everybody messages on WhatsApp or Facebook uh, so you don't have to go anywhere. That's, That's probably a good idea. Right, street eliminator, see please, later. into the lanes. OK, it is. Ah, it's Collins. Sorry, I pinched yours, mate. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Judy Dragster into the pairing lanes, please. Sorry, not Judy Dragster. They're in, the, they're in the lanes. They're on the track now. Uh, street eliminator, sorry. It's actually cooler outside than it is in here in the sun. Really? Yeah. It's, it's really warm in there. It's just because of where the sun's got to, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, just relentless heat. Well, it's all right. Can we petition the race director to finish by 2 p.m. every day so we don't get too hot? I don't no, think it's going to work. the race director to start at 9.30 p.m. <laughs> Uh, no help for those two there. Grace Smith and Daniel Todd, they stay 18 and 19. They already have better reaction times than the numbers you see on the boards. Yeah, qualifying again based on reaction time. This is getting rather rotten now because there's another one down here. Hey, I think that came off up. I don't know. It's quite got there then. Oh well. 
Oh, hang on, I'm, I'm just going to commentate from this end for some time. <laughs> right, Lena Wolf with the uh, the funny car, and Richard Wolf with the drag star. Uh, is Richard double? Uh, do you know that's really bizarre, isn't it? Well, we don't know yet because it's FIM bikes tomorrow. I, I, do you know that's really bizarre because the, the the cars are running today, yeah. but the bikes don't run till Friday. Yeah, because the bikes are FIM, uh, not ACU, and obviously Junior Dragster is national championship. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but it's a school day. So what do and, you do? Well, yeah, that's it. <laughs> so number 17, uh, 16, 17 at the moment. Well, that's what I'm thinking about. It's the only downside to junior bike compared to junior dragster this weekend. Junior bike only get four qualifiers yeah. because they're part of uh, UEM or FIM. Um, but the junior dragsters get nine. And an extra day of school. That, right. That'll be me. That'd be dragsters <laughs> done for me. That would. Dragsters all day long. Oh, one for Richard Wilcox. That's better. Will it be top ten? I think it will. Yeah, slots in at number eight there. Uh, funny car stays at number 17. Next pair. Ellie May. Max Taylor. Well, Max tried to push it a little bit too much, so went red by only double 04, but Ellie May gets an 05. Uh, she's already number 13, though. Had already done an 03, so no improvement there. I think I'm just going to move my seat up to this end of the tower, if that's all right with you. I've got a screen. I've got a chair. I'll be fine. Yeah, but you've also got the back-to-air conditioning unit, which is... Uh... <laughs> Which is not that cool at the moment. No, it's not. It's so hot. <laughs> Simon's actually got a fan down there. That's not helping. <laughs> it's not helping it much. <laughs> okay. Then, uh, Frank. Well, everybody outside really feeling the heat today. And yeah, we're, we're not moaning. The first day of four of it. Yeah. So, uh, Ethan Kuberus and Frankie Kent. I don't want to say it quite like this, but this is kind of like the end of summer, isn't it? This, this weekend, the next few days and into next week, kind of it really. We're still going to get some warm days but nothing like this. So, Ethan. I keep trying to look over there. I forget I've got a screen. Uh, Ethan is number 22. Frankie doesn't actually have a time on the board at the moment. That's going to help Ethan as well with an 03. Yeah, up to 13, and Frankie uh, qualifies for his first event at number 25 so far. Harry Peters and Freddie Taylor. Harry, number 30, Freddie, number 4. Both go red, unfortunately. Yeah, Freddie was a bit closer, but a bit closer doesn't make any difference. As long as it's red, it don't count. So, Neve Devi, who's doing great so far today. Currently number 11 at a point uh, a zero one eight light. Uh, Jack Taylor's number 21. It takes an 03 or better to get in the top 16. Again, I keep saying the same thing so far.
It's a good option, mate. Trust me. Yeah. Uh, so an 03 red for Neve Devi that time round. Jack Taylor goes uh, zero 06. Oh, moves him up one spot. Actually, he's number 20. So Daniel Ware, who is not yet qualified. Taking on Kai Cooper. Emphasis on yes, I'm sure he will be shortly. Somebody's stuck on the yeah, racetrack just up the top need end. To move that one out of the way. They are a long way away, but just in case, it's better to be always way, way, way better, especially with this sport, to be safe than sorry. That's right, the quad has come from the top end. Oh no, sorry, it's a bike. <laughs> Pushing that through uh, the exit now. Well, they can restart and go again, or they can just uh, hang on for a moment and tag on to the end of the session, whatever they feel um, is right to do. The trouble is, is they don't have any cooling on these engines, so on a hot day they warm up. Well, you know how quickly you warm up, and an engine that has combustion and all the other stuff yeah. going on warms up very, very quickly indeed. Yeah, top end is clear. Looks like they're just going to move them forward and fire them up again. I can't imagine the tyres would have cooled down much, or the engines for that matter. So, Tom Peters, number 17, Liam is 10 at the moment. Uh, if he, want to defend, he wants to defend his uh, number one position, going to need to do a little bit better than that. Well, that was a point one oh. I think he deep, deep staged which threw him a little bit. Uh, real nice one, though, for Tom Peters. That moves him up to number nine. Bumps Liam down one spot. So, Mackenzie Love with the man Max Dragster in the Kestrel Lane against Jake Cooper this time round.
05 and an 04 red for Jake. McKenzie will not move. He was already number three with below four. Okay, bandit number one. In one of, if not his last year in Junior Dragster, it's Harley Coulsell. Just up the road in Tamworth. Not far away from Evesham. Sorry, Banbury, beg your pardon. Uh, Eva Davis. Eva went red by 0 1. Harley went green by 0 3, but that will not help. I don't think. No, it doesn't. He stays in at 14. Eva stays 18. Such a tough, tough crowd in uh, Junior Dragster. Just having a look at these numbers here. The top six have double O lights, uh, the next six have O1 lights. The top 16 covered by 0 3 5 at the moment. But that will change. Okay, Teddy Sullivan and one young lady that does need to uh, to move up a bit if she wants a shout of uh, being with the shot of the championship in a couple of weeks' time at the national finals is Ada Cassisi in the cherry bomb. It's really nice to be able to say that though, because Ada's not been in junior drags to that long. She's not that old compared to some of the others. Unfortunately, she goes red by 05, and Teddy goes red by 06. That's what qualifying's for. Lots of practice. Harry Redshaw and uh, Emmy Cromwell. Emmy's qualified six at the minute. Another one of those double O kids at double O nine. Uh, Harry not on the front page. I think he's had no three light. He needs an O two or better to move up. Oh five 5 for Emmy, that's not going to improve. Neither is Harry as well with a point one five. Still got one more shot at it today. So, Lola Bell Kent, brother Frankie, getting his feet wet in junior dragster. He is qualified at the moment. Uh, Lola Bell in the Slick Tricks lane, taking on Lara Bartlett, who's number two right now. It's going to take a pretty much perfect... Reaction time to better the 003 of your number one, current number one qualifier, Kai Cooper. So, an 03 for Lara. Uh, Lola Bell taking a bit of a nap on the start line with a 0.3.
So, Emily Moore and Damien Redshaw are your next pair. They're number, they're in the 20s. 23 for Damien, 29 for Emily. Well, hmm. No help for either. Emily with a 1.35 reaction time and Damien left on her by over a second. However, his was 0.25, so no help either. Okay, Teddy Howe. And Jacqueline Bartlett this time. So Jacqueline currently number 10 and she's already had an 016. Uh, Teddy currently number 27, but they're all going to qualify. That was an only. Oh, look just. at Teddy, 004, puts him to number four spot. Get in there. Matt, very, very happy indeed. Teddy Howe goes to number four. I love that. 004 in your number four. Yeah. <laughs> well done, Teddy. Uh, that was quite a close red in the other lane. It was no two. Right, so the top seven now have kind of double O lights. Fantastic. But no one anywhere has had a triple O yet. That's what the 50 quid is for, to try and entice people to cut that light. Means everyone's off donuts today. That's, That's what it, it is. yeah. <laughs> Gotta say a big thanks to Kath and Tig with uh, the Bad Habit team for sponsoring the Perfect Light Award in conjunction obviously with Eurodragster.com and Andy Hadfield, the Twister team. Very kind sponsors of the Perfect ET Award. That was a 0 08 light that time. Again, unfortunately, no help at all. So we're on to Supergas Q4. So, yeah, it's Wayne Hiscock and uh, Stu Morris. Again, a, a real uh, big shout-out to Stu Morris, who's been out of the driver's seat for around about 10 years, I think, is it? Is that right? It's Long been time. a while. Long while. Um, Colin would not vacate it. <laughs> and he's jumped back in this year and not missed a... Well, they're leading the points. Is that what you need to know? Yeah. Well, they were former junior dragster racers, the Morris boys. Qualified number eight at the moment in Supergas. Wayne Hiscock, number nine. They're both fully running the nines. Just want to shave off a few thou now. That's a big throttle stop, that one. Wayne's got to slow down a lot. Oh, wait. To number two with that one. 990, 991 at 95, 99 miles an hour. <laughs> that speed does not go with that ET, no. is what we're laughing at. 10 flat, 147. Uh, for the Morris Boys Camaro, but Wayne Hiscock up to number two. Pete Creswell, Dan Fulton up next. Sorry, Dave Fulton. Looks like uh, the Nova will be hanging around. I would have thought so. Do you know the only thing wrong with today was you haven't called him Don't Lift Dave all day? No, we're saving that. We're saving that, yeah. <laughs> That's a good point. One. Pete Creswell up from 10 to 3 with that one. And Dave eight up to number 5. Everybody properly on it in this session. They are. Let's see what uh, Mark Huxley can do. I do like the new... He was very happy with his new front wheels, and they do look the bees bits, definitely. Yeah. 
The Can Do 2, which is a tribute to his dad's original race car. Is that from the 80s? I think it is. with the seven stays number nine nice session for super gas we move on to top speed automotive street eliminator well we didn't see all of the cars uh, in class that time round no, that took four minutes to run uh, super gas through them <laughs> I think it might be the same for uh, street eliminator yeah. this time round so it's going to be Percy the Passat who is knocking on the door of Rob Carter's first ever seven second run would it be this time out see if he's turned it up uh he's in the kestrel lane taking on ricky hale with the family pickup well wow, rob carter's actually locked a few hundreds off of the et by deep staging it's still a really quick run 826 at 168 and a real nice 10.47, the crew look overjoyed with yeah, that one. Yeah, that is a cracking run there for Ricky. Uh, one of his quickest, I think, 10.47. Yeah, is that a quickest one for Ricky? Yeah, it is. Oh, well done, Ricky. Check the speed as well. 133 miles an hour. Wow. In three and a half tonne. Is, is it about three and a half tonnes, I think? It's pushing that, A lot, yeah. yes. There we go. Yeah, try and push it around the pits and you realise how heavy that is. Uh, uh, right, James Murray and Elliot Day. Well, just seeing what Ricky did. Uh, got not a breath of wind out there. The flags are trying to move. The, the turbines are giving up. You notice there's clouds over there that could give us a bit of shade, but the wind's blowing the other way. Yeah. If there's no wheel spin for Elliot, this could well be a mid-eight-second run. That was absolutely perfect. What's coming up on the board? 870, 151 with the shoot out as well. The that was more like it. 1115 at 127 for James Murray. And like Colin said, James, please don't paint it. Yeah, yeah don't you dare. Don't paint it like Andy. Uh, Andy Bond hasn't painted his, has he? And this looks fantastic. So there we go. <laughs> <laughs> So it is the Cresta with Joe Stevens. Now, this looks like the sort of size of car Joe should be in, if you know what I yeah. mean. Not one that's just slightly bigger than him. Oh, I've just looked over my shoulder. You know when you, you do that and you go... Oh! Things that make you go... Whoa! Oh, I did an arrow for, <laughs> for Nick. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh. 10.49 for Joe Stevens and a, a 12 set. Sorry, that was really funny. He went to move, put it back on his step and a boot popped open and he left. That was fantastic. Comedy, uh, comedy street cars, whatever next. Yeah. No, no improvements for those two. Uh, well, this is a matchup for the ages, isn't it? Mark Todd, Andy Bond. Funny enough, actually, when Andy Bond started in Street Eliminator with this car, it was Mark Todd that helped him a lot. Yes. Uh, with it, Andy unfortunately had a nasty incident with the wall. Spent a bit of time out, rebuilt it, and he's come back quicker and better than absolutely ever. And um, he was probably looking forward to the day where he could go really go head to head with Mark Todd. Well, as of now, he's the big dog, and Mark Todd is the one that's got to yeah. do the catching up. But Mark Todd's plenty capable. I love oh, that. Look. That was a wasted qualifying run, but he still stood on it again. Mark Todd's going to get there first. Oh, no, he's not. I beg your pardon. 7.42 at 202 miles an hour and a 7.58 at 190 chipping away at it for Mark Todd. Got to say about Mark as well, this is his first event back for a long while with that yeah. car. Um, he was quicker than Andy Bond to every increment apart from the most important one, the back half. Right, so that's Street Eliminator for this session done. It's uh, Comp up next. <laughs> You're just fighting a losing battle, aren't we? <laughs> I think so. Uh, 
Comp Eliminator, qualifying session number four. Uh, not expecting all the cars down, but uh, certainly got Mr. Boost down here with a Civic. And of course, the Fraudster. So, if Matt Davison can get off the start line, that's always the key thing with front-wheel drive cars. They absolutely run like bandits through the top end. But getting off the line is always the, the tricky part. So, just letting the burnout smoke and everything out of the fraudster. And uh, obviously checking wheelie bar height as well. Kev already has put a 7.78 in. Uh, Matt at the moment, 10.40. So we'd like to lop a second off that. Maybe a bit more. They both got four cylinder turbo engines, isn't it? 775 there for Kev. Finds a little improvement. Stays number five. Matt goes 976, 156. Good improvement on the ET by about half a second. Uh, stays number six. All right, the mayor himself. Terry Newton. Hasn't Terry Newton just recently dipped into the eights as well? Yes, he has. Fantastic stuff. He's such a nice bloke, so likeable, oh. so enjoyable. Uh, he's finding racing in comp very, very enjoyable indeed at the big events. Uh, and we're very happy to have all of them, uh, um, especially Terry as well. He's a lovely guy. Um, so 920 is the index for front wheel drive cars. An eight second run would be great about now. Once again, not the launch that Chris Todd was looking for. Terry Newton is long gone with the van. Crawls across the finish line though to a 10.02 at only 109 miles an hour. Ten fifty six at 148 though for Chris. We know he's been faster, but it wasn't popping and banging as much as it was earlier. So uh, he's starting to get the tune up worked out. But then a 188 60 foot tells a story. So Simon Crowley is one of those that hasn't actually got time on the board yet, I don't think. Correct. Yeah, uh, he did come down, but then uh, headed off back to the pit. So uh, hopefully this time round he'll get one in. All the crew are staying in the tow car with the air conditioning on the left of shoot pinning. <laughs> <laughs> They're not, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, Ian's actually giving it to him. Because <laughs> there's no one else around to hand it to. So, good luck to Simon Crowley. Once again, been making, uh, been chipping away. He's been getting quicker and quicker in the nines. not on this run. Well, he's going to get an ET. Yeah, 22 seconds. So I think he's going to make the first exit. Well, it went over the finish line at 47 miles an hour. You hope that would have him. Yeah, yeah he's uh, making there. the turn off. Good news. Well done, Simon. Right, dirty door just being pushed out there for Rob Smallworth. Yeah, problems by the looks of it, unfortunately. Yeah. And I don't think got anybody else down in the lanes for comp for this session. I do love that style of body as well. That 55 body is uh, um, immortalised by Charles Carpenter in the US. 
And then that actual car, the car that Charles Carpenter ran, was bought over here by Henry Houston, if you remember. I do, uh, yeah. Very, very similar to that. And now we're so lucky to have uh, a 1955 Chevy, it will be a blown one, which is a good thing too. Um, in pro mod. So this is going to be Super Comp 890, which I presume is the last class in this session. Yep. Before we go back into Pro ET, we will run everything through one more time. And it will be barbecue time. Although what's what's a barbecue? Well, oh yeah, you're off them, aren't you? <laughs> it's probably because you're on them for so long. You're oh off no. them now. Oh you did used to do a barbecue tour. It wasn't my imagination. No, I did. Yeah. You did, yeah. yeah. There's some amazing chefs in the pits. There you go. Um, it always Especially used the Harrisons. I love, always love going to see the Harrisons for a barbecue. They're such a lovely family. It used to, it used to amuse me greatly. But every day... Especially the first year we started 15 years ago. <laughs> Every day, I said, oh, how are you doing? What are you up to last night? And it was, it was a list of <laughs> puppy <Yeah. laughs> It was, it was, honestly. And, uh, I, you know, I, I've always said it. And over the years, um, the Harrisons really were awesome. It was just a regular stop off. And there was no way I could leave there without Ron, uh, Rod Harrison saying, oh, come on, Cole, join us. And it was, it was so good. Oh, one red this time for Stu Doiny. O2 oh, the right side for Steve, but it's all about those 890s. 893 and a 901. Steve Hudson moves up from three to two. Stu stays four. I've just remembered who we haven't seen. Roadster, Martin Kerbishley. No, he's not here this weekend. Ah. Uh, um, yeah, we were... Uh, Martin, if you tuned in, mate, uh, send us a message, because I was really hoping you were going to be here this weekend. I'm unsure as to why not. Um, but uh, all the best wishes to everybody down there in, uh, in the far west country, I should say. Uh, Penzance, Cornwall area. Nearly the Caribbean, as we'll call it. <laughs> Probably is <laughs> the weekend. <laughs> it? So, Leah Kellett, only just missed by a measly thowl, I think, earlier. Four ten thousand. It was that close. I was going to say something really silly, learn like a breath of wind could change that, but there's no, not even a breath of wind now. Yeah. So, Richard Tunstall with the Jammy Dodger. Currently in the number three spot. Leah, as we know, number one. These two actually are one and two in the points. I know Leah's got a good lead, but Richard is uh, the current number two spot in the championship. I love the way the engine notes come together at the top end. 892 and a 96. Uh, Richard Tunstall stays three. Leah stays number one. Right. Uh, I think it's going to be Pro ET up next. Well, they're on the run door. I'm not sure everyone's strapped in yet. Though. That's no, weird, um, I think they're gathering cars at the moment because uh, we have just shot ahead of the schedule. Uh, reason being, there's not everybody's taking all the allotted runs this afternoon. Um, so, a moment ago, we were one minute. Mm -hmm. uh, we're now 20 minutes ahead. <laughs> it's just, just like this is the way it happened. But, uh, yeah, so uh, obviously the turnaround times uh, are uh, getting a bit uh, quicker. But this is the last qualifying session of the day. Q5 uh, for all of our sports and races. So... Uh, I just want to say as well quickly, a huge thank you to our, uh, one of our Swedish guys down there on the start line. Thank you for standing there sweating your ass off in a suit all day. And obviously to all of our guys as well. Walking around in a fire suit today, getting strapped in a car doesn't sound like much fun no. because you can get out. But those guys have been strapped, uh, have been dressed like that all day long. All day long. So, yeah, we're gathering cars for Pro ET. We'll give you to Nitro FM for uh, probably only about five minutes or so, and then we'll be on with the last um, 
session of the day. Oh, as if. Now we always joke that the best way to get racing going again when we have a delay, especially like a rain delay or a track delay, is to hand it to Nitro FM. A proof in point. Well, this is a super comp car, uh, so it's still in the, in session for them because Pro ET aren't ready yet. So right. this is just a, a one car run. I think what they did was they just gave him a bit of extra time because yeah. we are so you know so far ahead. He was probably here at the right time for the run he was supposed to be making. Anyway, this is Clement Dubois. Going to be the last car, I think, for Supercomp. And then it will be over to Nitro M properly after this one. <laughs> That's like high gear only, doesn't it? 523. Okay, now we'll give it over to Nitro FM 96.2 as uh, the tractor appears. Just do a little bit of track grooming. And uh, we will take it back with the last qualifying session of the day here at the European Finals. Day one of four. And it's a warm one.
Is Elliot peddling? <laughs> yeah, I, I think, think he, he is, was, actually. actually. Not really 60, but... Almost exactly where they were before. Uh, 81. <laughs> Not your average pickup truck. Although it's average for Santa Fe. Well, he gets qualified. 62, 111. Yeah, going to trickle through. Yeah, just go through the motions, I think, on that one. 13, 18, 104. Oh, right, Keeps OK. <laughs> <laughs> right, good luck, Vicky. That's looking good. That's looking very good. It was an 881. It's an 872 now. Look at the speed, 170. That's coming around nicely. Yeah, that when that they turned that car slightly slower to 60 that time. Almost exactly the same all the way through, really. <laughs> uh, have you ever considered bracket racing that car, sir? That would be pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> Now, the hot weather is going to affect uh, Spence's car probably more than anyone else's because he has no power adder at all. 11.24, this is a pretty good run. Start with anyway. Rob going for a big wander just before the finish line again. 7.75, 1.73. Another step in the right direction. Really wandering around in the back half quite a bit, though. That makes the gap between them even shorter. Eight eighty-eight just missed. Two hundred was too quick. Nine oh five for Steve Hudson. Paul Hudson does actually get a qualified number on the board. Uh, I think we've got something like... Uh, He's already number six. How about that? Five, that can change very quickly indeed, Dan. Fulton is number nine.
Oh, 952. Eight ninety six with an eight. Oh, Paul Master breaks up. I just that. Okay, thank you ever so much indeed to Nitro FM ninety six point two for filling that little gap for us uh, as we collected race cars in the lanes. We are now getting ready for the final qualifying session of the day for our sports and races. This is Q five. We have Pro ET. and the first pair out is that lovely little FX Vega. Not driven by Chalky. There he is. He's outside the car looking in. The driver is none other than John Giles. Going alongside one and only Mr. Simon Paul. At the moment, oh no, sorry, not sorry, sorry, sorry. It's uh, John Giles, it's uh, Dan Page. Sorry, John Giles is the other driver of the Blitz Creek. Oh, yeah. <laughs> totally the wrong way around. Anyway, so Dan Page of the way go. goes 10 14, moves up from 37 to 33. Simon Fulton stays put 10 16. Musical chairs with the race cars, and uh, totally got myself confused there. Apologies to Dan. Next pair, Darren Huxley, Dave Prohurst. Darren looking for an 11.62 with that rice burner Nissan. 9.28, the number of choice for Dave Crowhurst with the Camaro. They are 22 and 24 respectively. So it is a tough crowd out there. <laughs> Crowhurst 934, it's going to stay at number 24. And a breakout, a little bit too quick there for Darren, 56 on a 62. Marie Mills with that lovely little auto taking on John Turner with the Greenfish Barracuda. Marie, 1060. John Turner, 942. Now, John is on the bump at the moment. Marie, two places behind. John Turner on the bump spot, I expected him to be a DQ. I love you, John. You know that. He loves you too. <laughs> you know that. <laughs> Just not outwardly, ever. Yeah, yeah I know that. So, John Turner, 9.40 breakout, though, no movement. Marie goes 10.79 on that 60. No help for her either. Pull the shoot just through the finish line. John, what do you think you're driving a pro mod? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Simon Innes, Kestrel Lane, and uh, Vic Parsons. So, Vic has obviously got to come up with a strategy. He's doing pretty well so far uh, for Super Gas. The other thing as well is, is it's a different Christmas tree, isn't it? Yeah, it's a pro tree and a That's sports tree. That's the other tree, thing yeah. to deal with. How, do you know how they do that? Or they just get used to it, I guess. I have no idea. It's not easy. It's not an easy I've thing to do. I've never done on a pro, never run on a pro tree, so I don't know. Yeah. I've never run on a sportsman tree, but... Well, he gets himself qualified now from 39 to 28. A breakout for Simon Innes. That's a big breakout, actually. 71 on a 76. Amy Watkins and Daniel Fulton. I had the pleasure of bumping into Dan the other week when I mistakenly thought he was um, Dave. But <laughs> <laughs> what, you survived? I went and said sorry to the wrong bloke, so it was perfect. I yeah. should do that again. Anyway, no, he said... Because I said you're doing well, he said. Well, I'd like to do a lot better, but I'm trying really hard. But it's just so difficult because everyone's so good, so so good. All right, the bump is 074 at the moment. They're both well inside that. Break 61. Out a bit no, far off that yeah. time for Daniel. <laughs> All right, Chris Newsom, 9.53 dialing with the MG. 
And that's Laura Bainton with the Capri. 10.45. Paul's never going to see that car again, is he? Well, not the inside of it, anyway. <laughs> yeah, you can always <laughs> watch, watch it drive away from him all the time. So, Chris is well qualified at number six. Laura could do herself a favour. She runs in the 10 fours. Oh, that yeah. work. Look at that. Chris Newsom stays six. Laura, only number 17. Two hundredths of a second off. Pick your full pop. Doug McClure and Ronnie Mercer. I love, I, I'm sure that's a, uh, a comedy gesture. Dougie's actually got a splitter on the front of the car. Did you notice? <laughs> didn't notice. You have to ask him when you see him. Yeah. I couldn't read what it says, but I don't think it's serious, shall we say. Right. <laughs> yeah, what a splitter is, is that they uh, leave the start line with the front, uh, front wheels when they break the beams. But when they go through the finish line, it's normally the nose of the car that actually breaks the beam because of the t rear tyres grow and the angle of everything. So they're allowed a certain amount of overhang from the centre line of the front wheels. And that's what he's done. Ronnie's got bored with running tens. Goes 905 with a six. Right numbers, wrong way around. Doug McClure, no help for him. 11.65 and a 54. You can tell when Ronnie's bored, can't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've had enough of this behaving yeah. rubbish. But the car's more consistent on gas. The thing is, I mean, nitrous is not cheap stuff, and it depends how much they go through as well yeah. every single run. Oh, look, we're going to take a ride with Dave Rudd. How cool is that? <laughs> Just chuck the camera in the car, quick. You know, before he notices, chuck the camera in the car. We'll have a great view. You go and fetch it later. Um, John Dalrymple, 14. Dave Rudd, 16. Yeah, John's actually taken the name off the window now. Because <laughs> of the spelling was like... Uh, quite funny, though. So, the full tilt and the Banzai Cobra. What have they got for us? 82. And a 10 flat. Dave's car is not his normal consistent qualifying self at the moment. That's only because he's normally that good. John the Rimple was uh, two hundredths exactly off his dial-in and uh, no movement from 14th. Either someone's having the barbecue of the year or we have um, a fuel car fired up in the pits over there. That's probably a barbecue that today. Paul Marston, Warren Watts. Similar performance as well, nine flat for Paul. Warren with a 9.11. Pete Dodd's made it down into the lanes. Good news. Has he not run in Pro ET yet? Uh, yeah, he has. Uh, but <laughs> trying to get... Well, basically get the car sorted. Oh, look at that. 8.9999. Check out the other oh. lane. Warren Watts, 9.12 and a 9.11 goes up to number... 12. One ten thousandth of a second breakout. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I bet there's even more digits after that, but 8.9999. Ridiculous. <laughs> that was, well. Oh, so close. Oh, so close. You can't get closer than that. All right, Alfie Ratton, Mason Griffiths. 903 for Alfie. 910 for Mason. Warren went up on the. Uh, I think he just flicked the bowl backwards. Yeah, restage him. Right, so Mason wants that 910 gets. 912. Uh, but he's already number four. So uh, he'll stay. But right, Alfie Ratton then with Mijuli. 017 light. Very nicely done. A good racer is Alfie. But let's have a look at the ET. 904 and a 903 moves up from 20 to 14. Right, 
Lee Morris still not qualified. And uh, neither is Tom Kay at the moment. Uh, so Lee, number 38. Tom, number 36. This is your national championship points leader. Doesn't want to be leaving day one, not qualified. But uh, a lot of experience there, Willie. Knows how to win races. Knows the how dialing, to win championships. Sorry, sorry, mate. Uh, the dialing's a bit off as well, because he normally dials in the nines, doesn't he? Yeah. 25 is a bit of an unusual number. Uh, Tom Kay's not qualified either. So it's... Uh, yeah, but there's two... Yeah. I mean, Lee normally is 10, 10, 10, 12. Yeah. Could be something to do with the heat today, though. Needn't have worried. Lee Morris up from 38 to 15 with that 10, 26 with a 9. Tom Kay, though, no improvement for him. 10, 20, 10, 22 on a 10, 10. He's 12 hundredths off. He's still not qualified. He's way off. <laughs> we know I'm it's... I'm uh, joking. Let's have a look at the, uh, the bump now. 073. So on the bump is uh, ah. Tom Watkins, not qualified, Harley J, John Turner, Dan Page, Marine Mills, Dougie McClure, Susan McClure, Hans Van der Speck. But up to 29 is 05, and one of those is down there, John Bean. Yeah, go alongside the man who shares the next pit space in the pits with him, Brett Featherstone. Break out for Brett. 77 for John. Yeah, John moves up 29 to 19. So, 0 2 gets you in the top 20 now. Look at that great camera shot there of the Ladadu Camaro of Aussie Brown. Going on so to the other yellow Camaro, Pete Dodd. So Pete Darling in nine flat, Aussie ten eighty six. I think Pete's neck braces up, so uh, or his hands device or whatever. Yeah, we his hands device. So obviously, if you've got harnesses, you have to have a hands device now. So Aussie on a buy run ten eighty six. Now she'll be probably zero five off if she's twenty four. 96 on 86, no help. Tenth of a second off. So is it crew for hire with Bob Molden this weekend? Is that yes, the, uh, yeah, he's crewing for uh, for Pete, obviously. That's better. So is this a new engine for this weekend? Is this no, the first this is a new, new engine altogether. 925, 147. Nice. He's not in, though, but... Oh, no, but, uh, but, you know, it's just getting the car sorted now, but that's good. Uh, having fun with the uh, the jetting on the car more than anything else. Um, but uh, you think one big block is the same as another, but there's a lot of uh, <laughs> shuffling bits around and bending bits to get it in. Excellent matchup. There's two junior comp dragsters. Nick Margridge against Will Clark. Oh, Nick number three, Will 16. Look at that. <laughs> yeah. 01 and 02 on the tree. Once again, Will, Will Clark does not make it to the finish line, unfortunately. Nick Muggridge breaks out. All right, next up then, Dave Cher with the Dark Revenger. And it's Mark Huxley with the Can Do 2 Reborn Toyota Corolla. Both in the show at the moment, but Mark Huxley wants to move up for number 31, that's for sure. And, uh, well, Dave safely in at number 11. Oh, 
996 with eight. Mark Huxley, 31 to 15 with that one. Nice move. And Dave Cherry stays number 11. Goes 980 on a 79. Okay. So that's Pro ET done for the day, actually. Yeah. It's barbecue time for them. Nice. We move on to. Uh, Tom Atkinson has uh, decided to put the race suit back on and get into the pressure cooker that is the Cortina Estate. Hopefully he's managed to chill down for a while. It's and the beard, uh, mate. It's the beard. It's central <laughs> heating. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Parker, back in the tower. Joking aside, anyway, anyone that's got a beard, on a day like today, it must be a mare. Normally, yeah, I'm glad to shave mine off before I go here. <laughs> and your hair, yeah? Oh, that as well. Oh, okay. Fine. <laughs> no, um, I'm, still, I'm still looking a bit crusty. But it's the same It's the same having longer hair or shorter hair, isn't it? It's got to be the same sort of thing. So, Tom Atkinson with the Cortina. And Callum. With the Altered. Callum looking for 890, 845, Tom. Eight fifty-two and a ninety-three. Uh, Callum does actually move up a few spots. That gets him up to seventeen. So the Brown boys, Pete doing the driving this weekend. Rob's very. Um, Grateful for that, I should think. Is that an 831 dialing I can see down there? That is. That is their quickest dialing ever. Uh, taking on points leader at the moment. Alan did well. So what do you think's uh, gone on with Alan this year, Chris? I mean, is it? he's always been good. Is it just the right place, right time kind of thing with this year? Everything's just fallen into place, do you think? I think so. I mean, when he came back, the last year I was racing, um, he told me he was going to teach me how to race. <laughs> um, and then sadly, I had, I had problems with the car a bit that year. Um, and it seems now it's just, it's sort of taken just a while for him to get back into his stride. And I, I, I don't think it's Alan, I think he, he just had a few car problems that weren't, he wasn't getting to grips with, and now he has. And now the car's absolutely perfect. He feels like he can do what he needs to do with it. So, I think it's, it's one of those things where everything's just come together. Looking for 768, goes 69 with a 1 and 841. Tenth of a second off for Rob Brown. Alan did well still, I think. Pete Brown says 4. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's been a bit of a, well, barring any major changes, it's been a bit of a runaway, which is unusual yeah. in a class like this, isn't it? Yeah. And it's not like we've had like lots of rain shortened events or everything. Every event we've completed. Yes, there's not been any short event. Okay, two drags. There's Kieran Ashley, Joe Kelly. Two very different ways of going about quarter mile racing. Uh, one with a big block and a throttle stop. The other one with a big turbo. And I think the last time I remember anybody sort of running away with anything to that extent was, I think, 2015, was it? Our friend with the... Uh, the large personality. The large Mr. Goff. <laughs> the large personality. personality. Yeah, he's got one of them. He's got one of them. Yeah, he, uh, Simon did, I mean, that year, he won the national championship and he didn't go to Shirky. He only competed here and still won the national championship. So that's quite a runaway, really, when you, you know. It takes some doing because. Yeah. It you, does, well, yeah. you, First of all, you don't get all the all round points to start with. Yeah. So. Right, so Kieran Ashley, 784, leaving the line a lot harder than it has been. Well, that was earlier today. Joe Kellett will leave hard and then come on strong at the top end. Yeah, Kieran 116 to 60. Eight nine two at 173 for Joe Kellett. 
Uh, stays put at number 12, Kieran Ashley clicked it off way before the finish line, actually, hence the 887 number. It's interesting, you know, we're saying Kieran is launching harder than it ever has. But the car looks way more violent than 116 to 60 foot. Certainly picking up a lot. Yeah. So, so far, this is the most longest distance matchup between two competitors. We just need to get our friend from Norway paired up with our good friend from Spain down there, and that'll be it forever, I think, really. I'm not so entirely sure you're going to get a longer distance matchup than that. People that are driven here, at least, anyway. Uh, Colin Miller from up there in Scotland against uh, Angel Romero from Spain. Angel has run two 785s in a row. I'll give you a guess what he's dialed at the moment. Do you know, he's still only number five. Um, he's dialed a 785 again. Uh, Colin Miller's dialed a 760. Could be quite a good race between these two, actually. Seven five zero, and yeah. guess what? If there was a prize for consistency, that boy would get it. He's run seven eight five six, seven eight five three, seven eight five four, all on his last three qualifying runs, which is unbelievably hard to do with any car, let alone a door car. That's impressive. That's really impressive. And look, you know, looking at Colin then as well. I, I, you know, I think we knew Colin was going. That car has never run that straight. Colin just ran the straightest run I've ever seen that car make. Well, it's also calm off the start line because yeah. they've just taken a bit taken a bit out of it. It's uh, doing really well. 183 miles an hour as well for Colin Miller. I bet that was fun. But well done to our friends from Spain. That's excellent work. Three 785s in a row. Still gets him. Still only gets him the number five spot. So, Stu Morris this time round. Oh, Colin, beg, beg your pardon, sorry. Uh, taking on Daniel Giles. Going to be a uh, big ask for either of these two to improve. Stuart's looking for 8.65. Daniel, last time out, I think he went 7.41 with a 9 and didn't improve. And once again, he's number 4. And they've put 41 on the car again. Well, Daniel will get there first with a 7.41 with a... That is just incredible consistency. Uh, Breakout by 5,000 for Colin Morris. But yeah, I think Daniel Giles and Angelo Moreira are in the class of their own today, actually. Yeah. I think I mean, that's three runs for each of them on the money. You know, you look at how consistent Daniel's been and you know, he can't, he couldn't have dialed any closer. The only way you're going to dial closer than that is to actually dial the number up and lift. And lift a little Because bit. if the cars are that consistent... <laughs> yeah, but you don't want to change anything if no, it's so good, I, I, it's, it's a, but it's a really hard decision to make. Do you, do you bank on the car being that consistent that you know exactly when it's going to run and it's going to run a high 41? And a high 41 is no good to you, so you have to make it run a 42. I think the only way to do it really in qualifying that would be the plan. Maybe not so eliminate. I think 7,000 eliminations probably. Oh, yeah, you, 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 it wouldn't matter to you because you would be racing the top end anyway. But so in qualifying, you you know, if you know it's going to run a, seven, a, a 41 high, you've got to dial 42. And, and so, man on a mission to break out this time is Ron Bartlett with the little Anglia. <laughs> Mark Bailey, 874. It's really funny, he just picks the front wheels up in the middle and puts them down over there. 794 again for Ron, 171. And an 874 with a 5 for Mark Bailey makes it number two. Yeah, Mark Bailey goes to the number two spot, 874 with a 5. 
Angel Romero's got to be pretty sick right now. He's run on his number every time, and he's only number six qualifier. <laughs> Welcome to the UK, sir. Enjoy your stay. So, Lee Huxley. I'm joking, of course. He's got every chance of going a long way in eliminations. Those extra points are nice, though. Oh, yeah. They're tempting. <laughs> So, Joe Stevens with the uh, supercharged Blamange. Dahl's the slowest number I've seen for some time. They must be having problems with something. 8.99. It's normally the 8.7s or so, isn't it? Yeah. Think. Yeah, it usually runs quicker than that, certainly. An 8. Oh, yeah, an 8.95 for Lee, and Lee is some way out in front at the moment. 98 and a 908 for Joe, not too bad. Uh, Joe stays 17, Lee stays number eight. Well, we've got lots of cuts. You know what, Super Rose One Class, we've had a majority of cars coming down for each time. And it's been quite short on turnaround time today, because, you know, I mean, I know we've. we've had a couple of little breaks, but it's been a good hour at least, or an hour and a half maybe. But in this weather, yeah, you, that's the problem. You're trying to get rid of heat, you know. The thing is that, how, I mean, how, how do you, how do you get rid of heat? There's no real way of doing fans, it. Fans, big fans. Is that it? Yeah, big fans. Well, they're just turbocharged. Well, I mean, we, you know, we, you know, we trans cooler on, on there and, and run a radiator on. So, on the, Matt's so car if the if the uh, okay, okay, educate me more. So if the engine doesn't have a chance to cool down, yep. what issue does that cause? As Apart from overheat, you don't want it to have heat. But no. If it still but doesn't have heat, what does it you, change? As you build heat, you're, you're going to come to the start line hotter every time. Yep. And there's a, there's a point where it's, it's one, it's, t it's either slow down. Yeah. But we always used to find, we used to run the car quite cool. Um, the car would actually speed up if it got a bit hotter than we wanted to which right. is actually probably a bit worse. I mean, I, I know what we used to do in terms of, I want to stage the car at this temperature. So if you have, have you got a temperature gauge in the car? Yes. Right, so uh, for both, shorter tra trans and, and um, engine. Maybe a shorter routine then to try and yes. stage at the yeah, same yeah. time. Is that what you, yeah. you tend to do? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'd control it on how I was backing up from the van. And I'd try to control what the other driver was doing. Makes perfect sense. Mark going for a look at the centre line. You, all the time you're trying to sell it to the other guy. Your new number one qualifier, Matt Peters. 7.62 with a 1. And right behind him, Mr Mark Corsell with an 8.30 with a 4. Do you know something? Our Spanish friend's never going to come here again. He's run <laughs> right on his number, 7.853, and he's number 7. I know I keep mentioning that, but he's done an outstanding thing, which he's run dead on. He has done an outstanding thing. He's run dead on three times in a row, yeah. and he's still only number seven. Yeah. You look how close Matt has been uh, consistently as well. Matt's been really on the money. Dare That's I say it's the car on the team? No, I, I, I think they know what they're doing. I, you know, and they don't know what it. they're doing. Yeah, they proved it many times. AC Bell down there with Olympi Slug. It was not such Olympi Slug like I said before. Uh, with an 871 dial in, it went in the 840s. You heard that right, 840s. In the slick tricks lane. Uh, Pete Walters. They've actually backed the dial in up a little to a 774. You're doing that next year. Yeah, is it happening? Okay. Uh, no, I, that's, that's why I'm asking. <laughs> 79 and an eight. See what I mean? Three tenths of a second again for AC Bell. The car ran pretty much what it did before. They just didn't change the dial. Yeah. 
And a 79 and 74 of Pete Waters keeps him stuck at number 20. Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, 500 and number 20. Not bad. So, Scott Hauser, who's been, again, incredibly close to the perfect number. He's only number 17. Sorry, I didn't mean to laugh. But if things were to finish like it is, he'd have the number one qualifying round one, and it wouldn't be him. Yeah. That's the really, yeah. that's the staggering part. Yeah. You know, multi-time Super Pro champion Scott Hauser in round one would be the slower qualified car against the number one. Yeah. Unreal. Uh, and actually, at the moment, that would be, that'd be Matt Peters. Uh, taking on your old governor, Nick Good. So at the moment, Nick is number three. That was his run off the trader earlier today, I think. Uh, Scott, 740 this time. <laughs> 86 and 41 for Scott. That'll help a lot. Scott Hauser up to number 11. Point one two of a second off, and he's up to number 11. Let's have a quick squiz at the order. Where are we? Uh, so, top 10, Alan did well, point one one. Top 20, Pete Walters, zero four. Uh, and it does tail off somewhat because uh, we do have 32 cars entered for 32 car field, and any time it's kind of like that, it's not quite as tight but it still makes for excellent racing. I mean, you've still got Ron Bartlett, only 0.5 off, and he's number 22, so it's still incredibly, incredibly tight. So, Thomas Haas from Switzerland. We're waiting for the dial-in for Mr. Dubois. There we go, 6.92. That's Patrick down there with, for Milwaukee 2's, the Pontiac GXP. Dubois family instrumental in the French ATD Championship. Interesting that Thomas has backed the number down again. Just another hundred. It's been going that way all day. Yeah. Isn't it? 7.04 this time for Patrick. Still 202 miles an hour. A24 though. A24 though for Thomas, right on the money actually. As in, right on the money. But still number 12. But still number 12. Right, last pair of cars I think for Super Pro. say last pair it's a car Fabien Dubois for the custom gang there's three cars they run out of their one trailer it's kind of the way to go racing to be honest with you I'm really surprised more teams don't do or well, more people don't team up and do that actually because it's, it's got to be a cost saving thing and effort saving thing and everything else isn't it I would guess sir so. you would think sir so. you would uh, 7.18 but drag races you know yeah. you know we are <laughs> <laughs> so the last run of the day for Super Pro is a 723 on an 18 uh, stays at number 16 there's a lot of people tightened their window I think in that last couple of sessions you could certainly sell uh, especially with the top 10 being the way it is yeah. um, still a couple of cars missing not quite sure who hasn't made a run that was entered but uh, anyway, I shall have a look later. Fantastic. We'll find out in the morning, won't we? Becky, thank you very much, Steve, for lending him to us. Apologies, he's yours again. But there we go. Um, thank you very much, Chris. I shall go and find a cold shower. <laughs> and a pair of shoes. This a pair is of not. Shorts. No, sh 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 good <laughs> luck with that. <laughs> images, images are forming, mate. Go away. Chew. Quiet. Where's the off? Oh, there it is. There's the yeah, off. There. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Chris. Right. I shall see you at the We'll see, do. You, see you in the morning. Thank Thanks you very ever much. so much. Bye. Right, we continue, and it is Junior Dragster with Junior Funny Car as well. Seven, 
So Lena Wolf, the car is called the Little Wolf. That is a uh, Mustang bodied junior funny car. I was going to say, it's actually a little funny car. How many have you got qualified in junior drag at the moment? Like you said, we had 34 entered, we've got 31 that have run, so three are not being naughty and they're still at school. Let's see if we can uh, attempt to suss out who the three are. Well, I know one of them is Chevy Check It. Yep. Because Emma messaged earlier to say they were watching. Although, she, sorry, she was watching. I presume Chev was at school. So, Lena Wolf. Right, we haven't seen Molly Openshaw yet. Okay. Lights in the Castro Lane, a really nice 017 though. Uh, Felina Wolf, that's gonna help move up to number 13 spot. see oh no he's there um no i'm really i don't know <laughs> i'm trying to suss it out but yeah we know we That's haven't seen right. molly yet we haven't seen chevy it will um, become there apparent is, there is one more will become apparent tomorrow morning that was a red that time in the slick tricks lane for daniel weir uh emmy crumwell with a point one eight that's not going to help Okay, Liam McDonald and uh, Harry Peters this time. Dad's number one in Super Pro. Currently, he's number 31 in ah, Junior. Right, okay, Go I on. have spotted the error. Go on. Here, if you look on the entry list. Yeah. Okay. Ah, oh, that'd be why then. There's actually 33, not 34. Yeah, 33. Double O six reaction time for Liam. That's only good and for number five. <laughs> so it's not. It's one of those not funny but is funny type of things, yeah. isn't it? Really. Uh, we got the top eight on Double O lights now. Freddie is number seven. Ethan is currently number seventeen. Two red there for Ethan, really trying to cut the light there. Oh, eight for Freddie, so no help for those two. They say put Freddie seven, Ethan 17. So, Harry Redshaw and Damien uh, matching up together. <laughs> Lovely, isn't it? Uh, I'm not sure if we're going to see Andrew Wilcox uh, in this session. I uh, know when he uh, stopped on track, um, sheared a few teeth off the, the main drive cog. 
Oh. Um, so whether they've managed to get a replacement or not, I don't know. But uh, yeah, put a picture on the social media side of things uh, to show the reason why it uh, wasn't working out for them. So hopefully they can get it fixed. But uh, we can only see a couple of juniors in the lanes at a time because they take lane number one and they line up around the corner. We can't see them all. Right, the Redshaw boys representing Odyssey Battery. Oh, double O two red for Harry. Really trying there. But both under power at the stripe. Good news. Harley Cosell. And who should be in the other lane? Ada Cassisi. Harley currently number 16 qualifier with an 03. And Ada currently number 26. But uh, don't worry about Ada. She's very good on race day. So much so she's number three in the national championship points chase. Ultra lightning quick reflexes there from uh, from Thomas to make sure that uh, Harley was good for the run. Harley started very quick indeed. And it's another 03 one light. Consistent. Bound three ten thousandths of an improvement, but he's not going to move up in position though. Uh, Ada stays 26. All right, next up. Got Daniel Todd with the Dragon Slayer. He is in the Castro Lane. Currently number 24, and uh, 10 places ahead is Neve Devi, the Little Miss Dynamite Junior Dragster, in the Slick Tricks lane. Oh, Pot for red for Neve D, and point one to the right side for Daniel. Stay put. Right, Eva Davis and Emily Moore. Number 30, even number 20 at the moment. session of the day then obviously for our juniors to follow this we'll have super gas three eliminator comp eliminator and super comp and then we are done for today it's not to say we haven't got any more qualifying to come we'll do it all again tomorrow and on saturday and then eliminations day on sunday so 0 0.11 for eva 0 0.38 for emily so they'll stay put, Eva 20, Emily 30. All right, Kai Cooper. Ah, Richard Wilcox has got it fixed. Brilliant job from the team there, the Firefighter Juniors team. Uh, obviously had the spare part in the, uh, in the locker. So well done then to the Firefighter Racing Junior Dragster team. Got it fixed. Well done, lads.
So Kai Cooper, number one qualifier. Richard, currently number 10. Oh, 006 there for Richard. That's going to move him up. He's going to slot in number five now from number 10. Uh, no help for Kai, went red, but he's already in the number one spot. Mackenzie Love and Luke McGridge. Luke currently number seven. Uh, Mackenzie number three. Both of these drivers have had double O lights, so they might as well try and chop the tree down and see if they can pull a perfect light because they've already got double O. It does get to that point, doesn't it? Where it does. If, it totally if, if does. You're if you're nice and safe, use the rest of it as practice, but then that's kind of what it is. Yep. We need to interrogate Matt Seamark, see whether it's warm with a beard in this weather. <laughs> That was pretty close. Yeah. 01 red for Luke, 02 the right side for Mackenzie. But uh, no improvement in position. They were already on double O's, as we know. Uh, Teddy Howe, who's in the number four spot, Jake Cooper, number 27. Yeah, Teddy Howe had a really, really good 004 earlier today. And Kai Cooper's still sitting number one, so. Oh, 04 red for Jake. 0.17 red for Teddy. That's uh, quite a big miss. Yeah. That's all right. That's what it's for. We've got Super Gas and Street Eliminator lurking around there as well. So it's Lola Bell, Kent. Going forward to run. Mum Shelley, Grandad Tony on the start line. So now every member of that family have driven a fuel car. <laughs> Apart from Lola, yet. So now they're 29 and 31 at the moment. But they're all going to qualify, so that's the most important thing. And that's I think better. that's going to shuffle the pack a little bit. Twenty-two for Lola Bell now. Twenty-one for Ted. <laughs> and a little bit of relief as well. Really? Yeah. yeah, something like that. Anyway, well done, time. Okay, Max Taylor, and I think we have the two Slick Tricks cars going to be the last pair. Red light for Max, pretty close, 01 red. But again, close is the same as, well, half an hour, yeah. really. Red light's a red light, unfortunately. And the last pair of cars are going to be the Slick Tricks gang. So Jacqueline in uh, the Castro lane, and it is Lara in the Slick Tricks lane. 
Kathleen number 12, Lara number 2. Was number 1 earlier, but it got pipped. Whoa. Well, they both really tried. Double O two red for Laura Bartlett, and an O one for Jacqueline. Unfortunately, well, Jacqueline's going to move up one spot, I think. No, other way around, wasn't it? Sorry. Uh, yeah, Laura. Double O two red. So that's Junior Dragster done for today. We move on to Tony Morris Carburettors Super Gas. So Tim Moore and Andy Dibley, and once again, uh, a very good afternoon, I think in Florida, maybe it's just still morning, but not by much, uh, to Tony Morris, supporting Supergas in the UK with top line carbs and contingency. So Andy Dibley, the magic rat in the Kestrel Lane, currently number six. Tim Moore hasn't run in the nines yet. Best of 10.05. Dibs has run a best of 94. Oh, oh, oh. Well, uh, a miss and a miss, I think. Andy Dibby. Well, uh, well, you said Tim hasn't been in the nines yet. He get, gets one and stays 11. <laughs> A quick shout out actually for Leanne Crundwell from the uh, from the, the from Teach Racing. Uh, well, the whole of the Teach Racing team just want to say big happy birthday to Leanne Crundwell. So uh, many happy returns indeed. And to anybody celebrating a birthday today, including Chloe Wilkins. I know we mentioned that one earlier. All right, Jasmine Tunstall, Simon Fulton. Nine ninety-four for Simon goes number nine, and Jasmine number seven. Nine eighty-eight breakout. No improvement on that run there. So the man who's judged it pretty much spot on again, considering all he's doing is lifting at the right time. That's Wayne Hiscock doing a great job. However, the man that did a slightly better job in the other lane, Andy Harrison, nine nine zero with a one earlier today. Double O six as well for Andy Harrison. He's going to be tough to get around on Sunday. Nine ninety five does it again. Double O six light nine ninety with a five. Uh, he means business this weekend. He certainly does. You're right, Darrell. He is going to be tough to get around if he continues like that. Me. Uh, nine ninety five. That was in the other lane. But only ninety nine mile an hour. That's what I love about that. <laughs> it's very, very well judged, very well judged. I think I told you, didn't I, years ago, I went to see Sears Point, California, and there was a car in their 790 class called Hair Trigger, and it had run way quicker. It was a blown orchard. And what the guy would do was lift at half track, count to two, and then nail it again, and he'd run 790 at the time. Amazing. Amazing to watch. Well, two protagonists of the class here, Pete Creswell, Stu Doiny. Uh, let's see. 970 for Stu, way off. The 993 for Pete. Already has a 91 in the back. Though. Well, at least it had a zero in the end, but not the one he wins. Yeah. So Paul Marston again after Paul's been Paul's been doing a bit of a Dave Fulton today. He's been oh so close to being number one qualifier, but just the wrong side every time. Yeah, but eight dial for nine flat in Pro ET and go 8.9999. 
I'd love to see that time slip to see what the other digits are, or if it's on the computer. <gasps> cloud! <Find out>. <laughs> <laughs> Excitement, there's a cloud. Sorry about that, yeah. I don't think there are any clouds for cards. Shoot. Not going to make it no, much we cooler. we need a little bit of cover. I just wondered why the racetrack has stopped shining at me, and that was why. 992 oh, for Paul Marston from 18 to number 6 with that one. Nicely done, Mr. Marston. Well, it looks like Vic Parsons is being pushed out of the way. Good afternoon down there. down there, Mr. Gibbons. How you doing? I did say hi to Tony. I hope he's watching in. So, Pete Dodds. Also, how come Pete Dodds chosen? Is it just to sort of break everything in? He's running in super gas as well. I th yeah, I think so. But he wants track time, and that's the only way he's going to get it by double classing this weekend. You see, that engine has been eight, eight. I think it meant eight seventy-nine or eight eight. We've certainly been in the eight eights when uh, Gary Carr had it in the Gold Chevelle. Gary Carr ran it in Supercom. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, did. that's yes, just terrific. Did. Yeah, it's really good. Uh, Gary uh, should be here next weekend for Hot Rod Drags. He's probably going to be here this weekend at some stage, but uh, I know his lads have gone, gone off on holiday. Uh, I was going to say, they, they've flown off to south of Europe somewhere, where it's probably a bit cooler. <laughs> Funny enough, I spoke to one of my clients the other day and said they're going to Croatia. What's the temperature? A lovely 25. Well, that'll do. Yeah. Right, the Dark Revenger of Dave Cherrick, company number 15. Uh, he's on a 10.24 at the moment. The car could go way quicker than 990, but it's still all about judging it. He's another one, but we'll go flat out and then lift towards the stripe. Oh. And didn't lift enough, 976, 129. I've just also noticed something that's really worthy of a mention. I don't think I've ever just seen one photographer out there. Julian from Euro Dragster, you deserve a raise. Definitely. No, not, not a raise of your camera, not, not a raise of your lens, mate. He's the only one out there taking shots of everybody. Look at that. Everybody else. I don't blame him. I used to do that too. It gets really warm out there. But um, Julian, good man. Well done. Pete Dodds. Yeah, I, I just looked up the barrier and thought, hang on, there's no one there. Oh, there's no one over there, apart from, yeah, Julian. So, Vic Parsons. So, Vic Parsons currently in at 16, peak dot 17. Two cars that have definitely got a back off at the top end to run the number. Yeah, but Vic not by much, Pete by a hell of a lot. He's not going to, though. <laughs> well, Vic Parsons goes to number 12 with a very nice 996. That is slowing 113 miles an hour. So look at that. It looks like something out of a sci-fi movie. Look at the screen quickly. <laughs> Isn't it? Look, look, look. You just see a pier. Look. So, like Matthew, I'm going to oh, be Ricky Hale. Look at that. <laughs> As the smoke clears. No, it doesn't. <laughs> Ish. <laughs> so, top speed automotive street eliminator. We've got the street eliminator, comp eliminator, and super comp to go. And then it is beer o'clock. Barbecue o'clock. And moving better clock, mate. Sorry it is, that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, die cast delivery time for me. Is that you? Yeah, is that what it is yeah, as well, yeah? yeah? One's got to do that I used to go that around time. and deliver all the photographs at Rawdon. Yeah. You go around and deliver die cast <laughs> at the end of the day. However, I wasn't working up here at the time. So, Mark Sheridan. I think Mark Sheridan's only put in one run. And he's still number two. Great looking launch from Mark Sheridan. Will this be another low seven? 746 at 200 miles an hour. He went 745 at 204 earlier today. Um, H and Diane are rather happy with that. <laughs> well done. Well, blazing the tyres 
uh, was Ricky Hale that time. But yeah, look, the top top few cars in Street Eliminator. <laughs> Haven't seen Al Mack yet either this no, weekend. No, I don't know if he's here this weekend. Let's have a I'm sure he was entered. I'm sure he was. He's actually number two in the championship and not by much. Yes, he's up. He's entered, by the way. So, Ricky Hale, uh, sorry, beg your pardon. Uh, Nick Hale. Sorry. And Joe Stevens with the Cresta. Joe wondering what it's like to have so much room in the car. Uh, Joe, I really do hope that the, uh, that the Sunbeam is not that badly hurt. Well, we know the engine's okay because it's in here. Uh, without all the extra gubbins, though. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't realise that's what he'd done. I thought he just borrowed the car. No. So, Nick Hale looking for a 10 something. 92 at 124. Yeah, you can just see that's uh, that big carb sticking out the top there. Uh, it used to, well, obviously, you, you'll spot this anyway, but that used to be a four door car. Uh, now a two door. Well, the way, where the driver, the driver effectively. <laughs> with the laid back seating position, the driver effectively sits in the back seat anyway, yeah. don't they? I wonder if that was originally built as a right hand drive car, now a left hooker. Could be. Oh, no. Many questions. That I have no idea with the answers no, to, obviously, yeah, as you can tell. <laughs> uh, Al Williamson and Tony Higgs. Tony, with an absolutely booming speed of 183 miles an hour earlier, would not surprise me if that was the fastest he'd ever been. We think it is. Yeah, Tony's had a bit of a mixed year, shall we say. One of my favourite posts of the year was his wife, where he managed to... I'm not going to put it quite as Jenny did. I'm not going to put it quite as she did, <laughs> but... Um, he managed to destroy two cars in a week. He put the wrong boost map into this one, and he, and he managed to kill the family Range Rover as well. Wow, what a launch for Tony. Lots oh, of yeah. tyre shake, though, unfortunately. Yeah. 181 mile an hour pass there, 8.12. When he stitches the front half to the back half, that's <laughs> going to be lethal. Oh, goodness me, yeah. Well, actually, over the winter, he put bigger turbos on it as well, Have didn't you he? seen the size of them? Yeah, they're massive, aren't they? They're, they're all, I think they're bigger than Pro Mod Legal, those yeah. ones. Uh, also, he, he destroyed the engine. When was it? He managed to rebuild it exceptionally quickly. Yes. With the shortage of parts, that takes some doing. Well, they got sure the, the block arrived literally on a Monday night, Tuesday morning, and then Thursday evening, they were here. Put the engine together. It was that. So he ordered, that did he order quick. a new block from the yeah. States? Did yeah. He? I, I just it was ridiculous I, with 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 the way part shortages and everything are. Yeah. So is it just the bottom end? That yeah, it was. Yeah, because yeah. everything else he had was good. Um, but when you try and put, uh, well, as you say, the wrong map in, and it just dumps all the nitrous in in one go. Something. I think it was a turbo, and it, it was the uh, yeah the, the block. Just like, <laughs> no, I'm not playing this game. All the other components go. Yeah, I'm up for it. I'm up for it. The block said no. Nah, thanks. Finding the weak link. Pigsy style. Yeah. So, if Taurus Smith, with the grown up version of Boost Monkey Racing, this could be a really good race actually. Rob Carter in the other lane with the twin turbo LS in Percy the Passat. That looks like it should have been a four door car as well, that Passat. And the other thing, of course, is that Tony Higgs didn't spend any more money this year that he was planning to, despite the engine. Uh, the unfortunate thing is, Jenny's not getting a new kitchen. <laughs> he yes. didn't spend any more money than he was planning to. Yeah. It was just on something just different. different. Else, yeah. it, yeah. Fair enough, that makes sense. And perfectly reasonable. Two twin turbo cars. Cam Rob Clarter, tick all the sevens. He's been so close. 8.15 again and an 8.55. The speed is higher for Vicky Smith. He's a little more on the ET. Yeah. 
But Rob Carter has got a bracket car there in the eight ones. Look, one sixty nine. Uh, what's Victoria Smith's quickest run in the car? It's I think not it's far than that, that, actually. Yeah. Uh, certainly, uh, I, will, I will double check, but uh, well, I'll put it this way: they want sevens out of it. There's no question about that. Right, somewhere out there is a 57 Chevy and a Cortina Estate. Isn't Dave kind? He doesn't send anyone the bill for that at the end of the day as well. well. You thought he had a can of WD-40 to do the door hinges at the same time, but no, mm. just can't get the staff. So Rob Slater has put in a couple of really nice 8.8 .8 second runs. There's so look much at, more look in Look at the shot on the camera feed. That is beautiful. It's just one of those days, isn't it? Yeah, I'm not sure we can see. <laughs> Full of smoke. Really does walk off the line and takes off that car. James Murray goes 1062, Rob goes 883 at 167. His quickest of the day. Well, the crest is back. Yeah, you can see where it used to be a four door there, now yeah. just a two door. So obviously, if it's a two door, the, the pillar uh, would be further back. I was going to say, the pillars remained in the same place, mm. and the, yeah. the front, the door itself looks tiny yeah. for a two door, doesn't it? So your yeah, number one qualifier, Andy Bond. Currently on a 735 at over 200 miles an hour. What's he got for us to wrap today up with? Street Eliminator. Well, he's still going to be number one at the end of this session. He's backed off that one by the yeah. looks of it. 10.47 at 1.13 for Joe Stevens, just chipping away at it. I've just noticed, Ash Stevens down here. Sorry. Not Ash Stevens. The transit god himself. <laughs> Ash Cooper. Uh, I'm guessing this is a rerun of... Yeah, it is. From the first run in Super Gas of the day, uh, the clocks were incorrect. So they've come back round to rerun yeah. it down. Well, they got a reaction time, and that was all they had. So, Dave Fulton and Stuart Morris. Cracking the reaction times for both of them. It's the ETs. We want 990s. 994, 993. Uh, Dave says put, but Stu moves up 13 to 7. Well, that helps Stuart quite a bit, that one. Yeah. Two classes to go Comp Eliminator and a Super Comp. And I looked into the lanes to see that uh, Nick Williams has finally got the Copo out the trailer and has come down for his first qualifier. Uh, I had a real long chat with Nick yesterday. Um, Fair to say he was a little bit tired having just got off the plane. But uh, just making sure everything was set ready. So uh, Rob Smallworth at the moment, sorry, Carl. Rob Smallworth at the moment is currently a number three qualifier. Uh, that's because, probably because we haven't seen Nick yet, but you know, there's <laughs> still a few more cars to come out. But no, what, I'm, what we're getting to is Rob's having a pretty decent weekend so far. It's yeah. A lot more like it. A lot more like it. I did see uh, Ahmed Jamshed's post uh, on his social media uh, with a fair bit of damage after after yesterday. After testing, okay. yeah. So uh, I don't know if they have a plan to get the car out at all this weekend again. Uh, but um, it's tough racing these cars when you push them sometimes beyond. Nice looking run for Rob Carr, still going for a wander at the top end. 781 at 169. More like it for Chris Todd. 957 at 153. Right, 
next up then, Phil Norman with the Brickfield Autos Beetle. Beautiful looking car. And Spencer Tram. Spencer hasn't got a number on the board yet, so this will be uh, his first timed run. Spencer should go under 11.68. Number two in the national championship points chase as well with the quantum leap number three Camaro. Cool. Yeah. Now Spence hasn't got a number up there for some reason. He has run though, isn't he? He has. Yeah, he has. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I'm not quite sure why he hasn't. That's weird. Gets a 27 though. On the uh, index of 68, puts in number three. And a full normal there, 13.52. So at the moment, your number one qualifier is Dan Williams. Uh, flew with a 10.62 earlier. Ah, from Luke Stevenson, thank you very much indeed. New motor going in Abbott's car tonight, so he will be out to play tomorrow. Thanks, Luke. Wow. So Gordon Darby and the whole squad have been rather busy. Just what you want in weather like this. But there we go. It is what it is. Beautiful launch there for Dan Williams. 02 light. Lovely. And only Julian there to catch it. <laughs> <laughs> 10 61. He moves the goalpost just that a little bit further. That's outstanding, isn't yeah. it, as well? So, one more car to, car to go for comp. Yeah, and it's Nick Williams with the Copo. Phenomenal bit of kit, that car. So, for VP Racing Lubricants, for Williams Brothers Racing, for OCS Paint, and the Williams Brothers Speed Shop, of course. Nick Williams, your championship points leader, has put a run in this weekend. But uh, if all goes well, he's going to be mixing it right at the sharp end of the field. And this is still paradise weather compared to Indy last week. Oh, yeah. So he has an index of nine flat. The car should go eight two, possibly taking an eight one. Let's have a look, see what he's got for us today. Beautiful launch that was planted. Oh, coasts to an eight forty three at one hundred and thirty two. Sorry, I don't know why that was funny, but it was funny. Um, Goes into eight. number two. Yeah. You never know. At this, at this point in the season, it's the side of the ladder thing, isn't it? It is. I think he might have taken one of the blocks out with the shoot, though, because he let the shoot go just before. Yeah, there we go. As if by magic. We have our magic behind the wall game. I uh, just want to say a massive thank you as well while we have a quiet moment. We're just about to go into the last class for the day. Uh, all of the Santa Pod Racers Club, uh, start line, finish line, um, everybody in the shutdown area as well, keeping things running smoothly. And um, Oh, that's what confused us. Uh, that'll be why. He's got two numbers on yeah. there. So and, uh, yeah, thank you very, very much indeed for keeping everything running so smoothly. Everyone in the pits, in the staging lanes, takes a massive team ever. massive team effort to be this good so Supercomp to wrap up our Thursday here on the first day of the 2023 European Finals
So, Rich Tunstall and Warren Watts. Number on the board at the finish line is 8.90. They're all trying to run that. Our good friend Russ Hill has messaged both of us to say hello to each other. Oh, hi. <laughs> Back at the pod for the first time in ages. Uh, so, Russ, uh, very, very good afternoon to you. Well, a couple of months, Russ. I'm sure I saw you early this year. John Turner just messaged me. Uh, I'll be in the pits in about half an hour, three quarters of an hour, mate, so I'll catch up with you this evening. Richard Tunstall goes. 8.90 with a three to take the number one spot there. Nicely done. And uh, 9.18. Number six. Well, he's uh, number two in the points, but just taking the number one qualifier away from the young lady that is number one in the points. Give the golf cart a cheer. Come on, they did fantastically well. And the hood scoop in the front end still on as well. What a bonus. Andrew Wilcox, it was a shared gear in the starter. Ah, sorry, I looked like a gearbox, but yeah, the, that, was, that was a problem. I did that see that, yeah. Dear yeah. wee. Well, if it moves, it can break. So, John Turner with the Greenfish Cuda uh, from down near Maidstone. Steve Field with the Black Pig number two. Runs with a wild bunch, can run low eights with this car. He's one of the uh, has to lift club. Which is why he'll be way out in front, and then all of a sudden, he's got 9.20, for John Turner, 1.42. Uh, 9.20 that time, Steve Field just lifted that little bit early. Thanks to Pete Lane, who's been uh, tuned in all day long, Pete. <laughs> we asked a question about uh, Joe Stevens with a Cresta. They only ever built a Cresta in a four-door, okay. never a two-door version, and it was only ever built right-hand drive. So they've taken it from a four-door right-hand drive to a two-door left-hand drive over its lifetime. Drag wow. races, aren't yeah. It? Thanks, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> I won't read that one out, Thomas. You can you can relay that one tomorrow. Thomas Cook Albert, that was. Right, Steve Hudson, Paul Hudson, the intravenous Ford Model T and the Pension Pot Dragster, which last I pair. believe is the last pair of the day. <laughs> oh, sevens for both of them. But can anybody take that number one away from Richard Tunstall? The answer is no. 8.86 and 8.95. But Paul Hudson moves up from number nine to number four. So it is barbecue o'clock, as Colin said before. Yeah. Uh, before you all move, please put your hands together for the incredibly hard-working Santa Pod Racers Club. Start line, finish line, all the marshals, everybody in the pits, everybody down here have worked their tails off all day to make things run as smoothly as that, and they're going to be doing it again for the next three days in a row. Yeah, we couldn't do it without you folks. Absolutely. Massive, yeah. massive thanks. Uh, Ian Marshall, Chief Starter, thank you ever so much indeed, mate. He's been a busy man as well, going all over Europe, sorting out tracks, and he's back home to sort out his home track. So many thanks indeed to, as you say, all the Santa Pod crew. Uh, you are all legendary. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, we're going to sign off. We're going to raid the pits. As I say, we're going to move um, children's pits around. <laughs> Not in the pits, but... <laughs> yeah, <just laughs> uh, but yeah, so we got a good evening of catching up with races. Obviously, all the pro teams should be here by now, so there's a lot of catching up to do, finding out who's doing what and uh, expectations. But fortunately, a little bit of high level cloud cover, trying to pull that sun down a little bit. Uh, but wherever you end up tonight, have a really, really good evening. Don't forget, it's going to be a warm night, so the pits probably won't go to sleep until gone, mid gone midnight. So people are going to be about for ages. Um, I think that's about it, really. So we're going to hand over to Nitro FM 96.2. And my final shout-out goes to Box Lane Productions, to Barney and to whole team there 
phenomenal coverage this weekend and uh, total respect for what you guys and girls are doing this weekend. So thank you ever so much indeed. For that. We will see you tomorrow. Have a great evening. Nitro FM 96.2. The airwaves are all yours.